Ladies and gentlemen, day two of some sweaty Age of Empires action, and today we're going to be starting with a little Olive Garden action. So myself on the Byzantines, Rock on the Byzantines, uh, Henkra on the Japanese, Nomad on the Japanese, Joan of Arc with Nani Yori, Smeagol on the Japanese, uh, Tron on the Holy Roman Empire, taking it back to the old school. All right, I like that. Respect there. And also Gamer Station on the Japanese. Je I think Japan is probably the more popular so far from what I've seen. I played a couple 1v1s yesterday and um, was mainly running into Japan. Granted, I also played a game of English against Japan, and I found that England seemed to really crush them early on. Um, so certainly some weaknesses in the early game that I was able to see just anecdotally. Time will tell, though. All right, so let's fire it up. Uh, we're on Mega Random, and we're going to be... There's only two Byzantine players, so we're going to have kind of a unique role here. And uh, yeah, let's party, man. So apparently today, somebody made... Uh, <laughs> somebody... Somebody here, I don't know who, uh, made a, uh, a fake lobby. So they made a fake lobby called Terran FFA and baited a bunch of people into joining it. I don't know. God, I hate that shit. Why does that happen? It's like, it's okay. We got to get the same people back in. So please do not rejoin unless you were um, in the previous lobby. Because we got to make sure everybody who was there. Uh, Terran FFA, same people. All right. It's just a weird, it's a weird bug. Sometimes like when you first like fire up the game and make your first lobby, it crashes and then it just doesn't happen again. So um, if somebody could give me a list of who was in the lobby, I don't think Lester was. Same folks as previous lobby Lester. Were you here? I don't know if he was, I don't believe so. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get this fired up. No problem, no problem. We had a crash. Okay, Smeagol's back in here, Rock is back in here, um, and then we just need Nomad, yeah. And, alright, so he was not in here. Yeah, please don't join unless you were one of the people um, in before. Yeah, Nomad was in here. Okay, so let me see if I can find him. Was Gamer Station in here? I don't think so. Um, I don't believe so. Who, who was, uh... Who are we missing from previous lobby? I can't recall off the top of my head. Nomad, Nanny. Yeah, Gamer Station was here. Okay, Gamer Station was here. Um, okay, who wasn't here? Wasn't here. <laughs> Had to restart your game? Come on, Nomad. Let's get it. Let's get you back in here. Who wasn't here? I, I, I feel like was DB here? It might have been DB. It might have been him because the name doesn't look familiar. Uh, Gollum, <laughs> Gollum and Turn fight in the corner again. <laughs> yeah, Gamer Station was in the lobby. Yeah, it, I believe it was DB. We'll we'll try and get him into another game. Yeah, Gamer Station was here. All right. Um, let me get a friend request here. Hopefully, Nomad can reconnect. Age of Empires fires up pretty quick. Uh, private match, and then I think I could just invite him from here. All right, he should be in my friends list. Uh, Bingo was not in the lobby, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I'm answering during the launch of a before I really enjoyed the stream. Hey, I'm glad to hear it, man. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, we're gonna be doing. Uh, I casted a couple one v one games last night as well. I do not believe Bingo was in here. I believe it was Nomad. Come on, Nomad. I believe in you, dude. Fire up that game. Oh, his name's moving. All right, invite to match. We should have it. Map reveal on elimination? Sure, and also we could do observers too. I know that um, that's something here. So I sent him an invite. He accepted the invitation. Should be in the lobby soon. And reveal on elim. Apparently he's getting some sort of a glitch where I need to make it a public lobby or something. I don't know, let me try inviting him again. All right, where is he? Come on, buddy. They can't join until it's public. All right. Uh, Jesse, we're waiting for one person. Yes, please. Okay, I made it public again. <laughs> oh, there's so many requests. I'm being overwhelmed. My old bo my old boomer mind can't handle it. God, is there is there a way to like search your friends list for somebody, or do you have to just manually scroll through all this? M if you can. All right. So looking on the friends list here. 
Trying to see if I can get him. Still looking. You know, on the bright side, it's a little bit of a delay, so it will allow for more people to join. Play the olive oil chome. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna you know take over the world with olive oil. All right. Come on. He's rebooting again. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. So apparently you can't join if it's like private. There's like a weird bug or something. Yeah, we'll get it this time. I think he restarted and went offline. All right, so we'll hang tight. Please don't join unless uh, you were in the game before, which is obviously just Nomad in this case. So hang tight. And it looks like was Rock in here as well? Okay, I don't think so. Um, we, <laughs> let's just change this to do not join. Unless Nomad. Only Nomad joins. There we go. All right. So we've changed the name. Maybe that'll work. Find out today. Question as a frequent observer, why aren't stone wall towers built often? Uh, they're okay. Typically the stone I think is better, um, is better suited for um, other things. Yeah, like maybe building a second TC or, or just saving up to build a keep ultimately because they only shoot spring all towers and also burning oil got nerfed. Um, God, man. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Stop. Stop it. Why are you like this? Why? Come on, Nomad. I believe in you, dude. If these guys can join, so can you. <laughs> Come on. Did we get him again? Oh my god, dude, this guy. He just keeps doing it. Hey, man. I, I can click this X button all day. Wait, why is Super Oxide joining? Uh, is he... Uh, Oxide? Isn't that Nomads? We're good? Wait, so, so he's not joining? So he's not joining? Ah. Well, um, okay, so he left again. The spot's there. Come on, Nomad. I believe in you, dude. Look, if we can't get you in in the next, uh, in the next minute, what we'll do is we'll just have you host the next game. Because I was planning on doing a casted one for the second match. So, we'll see what happens. I believe, dude. I believe. I'm officially, dude. This is just pure suffering, man. Oh my god, why dude? This is so awful. Yes, we finally got him! God, man. We got him. Let's go, baby. We still got it. Alright, let's fire this up. Alright. Here we go, man. Janky lobbies. Even Warcraft 3 lobbies from back in the day are more easier to get together than this. Alright, we're just starting the game. No mercy. Have you seen the Zhushi Great Bombards? No, I haven't. No, I haven't had a chance to play Zhushi's, Zhushi's Legacy. I've never been super interested in playing China, so um, no, I haven't really taken a deep dive onto them yet. Alright, guys. No, we're going to do a casted game next. Yeah, we're going to do a casted game and then maybe at the end after that, depending on how long it goes, we could do a third game uh, or we could also do some uh, 1v1s. Regardless, I do plan on doing a 1v1 stream sometime this week. Uh, also, some big news coming too. We have a, uh, we have some, uh, some. We're making a copy of Total Tavern for Age of Empires, so we're going to be hosting tournaments on there, and eventually we'll try and find a way to add FFA as a format on the website, which would be very fun. <laughs> and then Nomad spawns next to turn. Oh, he'll be fine. Nomad's a very good player, so yeah, he'll he'll be just fine. We played some 1v1s in the uh, early access, which were pretty fun, very strong. All right, so are we the only Olive Garden here? No, there's two. It's Rock and myself. Yeah, pretty stacked FFA. We have a lot of really good players. Um, for sure. No way of assessing who's going to win this. Japan. Uh, looks like we've got four players playing Japan. Yeah, I'm trying to think of their biggest weakness. I, I suppose it's too early to tell. Anyways, with um, Olive Garden, you typically want to open up here um, and just go for uh, the berry bushes first because they give you olive oil, which is cool. And uh, we can just fire up a cistern right here, which is gonna hit that, and also hit the tree line, which is great. Uh, let's build it a little bit more like this way. Yeah, great. Oh, and there's water here. Okay, so uh, surprise, surprise. Let's grab you guys, do this, and uh, get you on the trees. So we have like a little pond behind us. Is it gonna be enough for to justify a dock? Let's see. 
I've already like kind of switched my build order, which is gonna slow me down. Oh uh, yes. Yeah, no deep water, but it's like our own little personal pond here, which is pretty cool. All right, so looking good. It's okay. Is there any deep sea? So it's not like all in on the dock, but certainly good enough to get us a fast start. Yeah, so shout out to Marshall. He's been uh, helping with the website stuff. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we'll uh, be hosting 1v1s at first because it's a, as you know, as you would infer, it's a copy of Total Tavern, so it doesn't have access to the uh, to the FFA format yet. Dude, I'm the king of all Olive Garden, dude. Applebee's better beware. They're going to be usurped here. All right. So the Cistern is hitting all these units. You can see these villagers are irrigated, and uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. Byzantines, I, I don't really know what like the optimal strategy is with them yet. With Japan, it's like Japan can do some really nice eco play with the Kuro storehouse. You just kind of go tier two, defend your farms, and you know, put a little bit of pressure on with some Onubugeisha. Mm. Then you're good. All right, so can we take the sheep? Oh, can we get those? Is it going to actually pull to us? Oh! Oh, yeah, baby, let's go! Oh, my God, that's so troll! Uh, he gave his sheep the move order too early. Oh, I love it, and I just get them all. Oh, I feel bad. He was the other Byzantine player. I just literally took the food right out from under his mouth, dude. Oh, holy shit, I need to get my composure. Oh, that was funny. Oh man, that, that that does feel that does feel a little harsh, right? Oh wow! Oh hello. So some deep sea fish here. So we're gonna go double double. Yeah, all right. So there's a little bit of water. Yeah, I mean that's great. I mean sheep aren't gonna be as important, but still, it's uh it's useful. So we have a dock coming up back here, and we're gonna set up another dock out here. So he's gonna waddle out this way, and let's go drop these sheep off. I know that was that was a very very rough start for him. All right, start on this. You come down here, buddy, and uh, let's drop these sheep off. Good. All right, so let's go see who's in this other corner here. If anybody wants to attack us and get crazy, there are some deep uh, deep sea fish here, or deep lake fish, deep pond fish. Come on, give it to us, precious. It's always the worst waiting for like one drop off. It, it feels it always feels like it takes a little bit longer, you know. All right. Incoming attack from the northeast. Yes, yeah, so it was. It's it's gonna be the war started over the sheep. All right. So how are we doing here? Let's get this, and uh, then you can be here. Let's see who we can find on the south side. Yeah, I mean the sheep aren't like super super important here, but we're gonna we're gonna obviously grab them if we can. And does fishing give you olive oil? I wonder if it does. Somebody on stream said it does yesterday. Um, so I guess I'll have to check in on that in a minute and see. All right, so to the bottom, we got Nomad. Uh, Nomad's playing Japanese, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so he's probably gonna be more defensive. It could be a little, I'm in a, not in a great spot, unfortunately. I'm like in the middle. Um, and though I do have access to water, which is rad, um, I am still a little bit sandwiched here, so. All righty, so let's grab this and do the cistern. We'll get that all set up here. So anybody who's aging up does not have access to water at this point. So um, that's good for us in a way. All right, so let's get you, do this, and um, we could do it like so. Yeah, I like that. And then we'll connect the aqueducts. Looks like there's trade here. All right, let's get some more deep sea fish, cackle all the way to the bank. And keep looking around here, seeing what we can find. We just gotta, you know, survive the pressure, be defensive, all that goodness. And uh, the cistern, uh, we don't have enough to connect it quite yet. It's gonna be 40, so. But even still, it will ir irrigate them and give them a little bit of production efficiency. So it seems there's like little ponds on this map. Nothing too crazy. Um, water being set up here by another player. Uh, does the fish give us. Oh, it does give us olive oil. Alright, that's nice. Because typically with Byzantines, in my opinion, uh, what seems to be a good way to play them is to simply um, build longbows in the uh, feudal age and just defend yourself while you go 2TC or something and just get, get that going. How does fishing produce olive oil? Well, you know, fish oil, right? That's the thing. Uh, you know, people take that as a, a supplement, so could be. Two relics near us, but, you know, we're probably not going to have the fastest castle. Maybe faster than Japan in the corner, though. Um, we need to make sure they're not going to aggress on us early. Usually early aggression in FFA is pretty janky in my experience, but, um, you know. All right. Pull you guys down here. 
Is that up another one of you? We're just going to park you here. Alright, so for the landmark, yeah, let's do the Grand Winery. So we're going to do that like right here, and that should be a safe spot. Alright. The Grand Winery is good. You just surround it with Olive Gardens, and it, it, it also acts as a monastery. So when you hit Castle Age, you can immediately make a monk, which is pretty nice. Alright. Um, everything's looking fine here. Fishing, uh, fishing for, uh, yeah, deep sea fishing is more efficient than shoreline fishing, if you're newer to the game. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, do I want to set up anything here? I don't think so. People are just discovering there's water now. Um, we do see Tron discovering it, so there might not be water. It's a mega random map, so there might not be water on all sides of the map. Yeah, which is, which is fine. Um, we have enough Olive Garden right now. Let's get Wheelbarrow, slap that down. Drop off these sheep. You know, there's a chance we could be compromised on water. Um, you know, I wonder if Nomad's gonna do any like trolley samurai pushing. Let's go see if he's building the township. That's the landmark that uh, gives you the uh, shinobi, which are the assassins. So we're just gonna go straight to a mercenary camp after this. Um, let's grab you guys, turn in, and just go on wood. Keep the sheep close to the base. And uh, we can probably connect the cisterns now soon. Yeah, great. All right, so let's connect those, get level two. That's gonna augment our income here. And yeah, I mean, you know, if there was ever a time to be trolled, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it were here on stream. All right, so we're just gonna kind of scout around, see what's going on. All right, I like it, looking cool. Spiegel has entered the feudal age also, which means he was probably, um, you know, doing his thing here. So we will build this. That is a mercenary camp, and then we want to unlock the Western mercenary contracts. Boats, and boats for the boat god, boats for the boat throne, and keep villagers jumping on gold. That's going to be our priority for now. What landmark? I, I suspect he's going for the Kura storehouse. That's like the safer, more meta one. 100%. Yeah, yeah, he's already got Kura up. Okay, so that's no surprises. Uh, we're going to do Western mercenaries, because getting Streltsy and longbows is just super good. So that is our game plan. And then from there, we could do cataphracts today. Um, that could be kind of fun. Maybe we'll build some cataphracts in the castle age here and see what's going on. But for now, we got the Western Mercs. I haven't really tried Cataphracts yet as a unit, so yeah. Something to explore. All right, so let's get this and looking good. Get the Lumberjacking upgrade. Let's go see who's around the map here and get some vision. Obviously, we know Nomad's in the corner, so we're going to get some Strelbora with our olive oil. And uh, yeah, Strelbora are just a very, very you know safe unit here. Let's get a tower to protect our... Uh, our irrigation network. Cool. And um, from here, we just go fast castle. Because 2TC would be good if we didn't have water. But the fact that we have water basically, you know, gives us a very solid eco. Um, I don't need to build more fishing boats here. So that's good. And obviously, building military tech within irrigation also um, buffs them. So you can see, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be giving you a better rate. So yeah, I do get money for doing damage to villagers, which is pretty savage. All right, let's turn in here and then bring you down to gold. We got the Tower of the Gods coming up. And if anybody tries any funny business on us early, we should be okay. Uh, Nanny Yori is over here. Nanny Yori is playing what? Uh, Joan of Arc. Okay, so Guild Hall in the corner. Uh, that's going to be something that will probably draw a lot of attention here, I suspect. I do indeed suspect. Olive Garden is not quite ready yet. I don't think I've been supply blocked this game either, which is good. It's usually my, my signature play. So tower here will uh, help us against raids and aggression, all that sort of good stuff. And uh, yeah, all's good in the realm, all's calm. Make some more boats. And yeah, I haven't tried the cataphracts. That could be kind of a cool strategy. So now we got the Strelbora. So if anybody tries to get aggressive on us early, we can uh, we can definitely chill. And now we have the age up. All right, so I don't really know what the next age landmarks do. Golden Tower probably is the best one, or the simplest one, I should say. Because it uh, it straight up just gives you, but if we build it back here, and it's a little bit safer, but it's still like pretty visible. Um, yeah, it's also kind of far from the base. I could build my Imperial Landmark elsewhere, so maybe we just do that. All right, so let's get you, do this, come over here, and get the Golden Tower over here. And uh, that is going to give us a pretty good little military kind of option here. And Cataphracts, yeah, I haven't tried them. I've, I've done, been playing with Varangian Guard quite a bit because I just think they're so cool. But the Berserking thing doesn't feel particularly strong, in my opinion. Could be wrong. All right, let's do this. Excellent. Yeah, the Aqueducts are really cool. They're incredibly awesome. And um, what we could do next is we could set this up here. Um, 
I'm trying to think how we would want to do that. Yeah, there's tree line over there in gold, so that'll give us level three. And then we can get another aqueduct here. And uh, do we have enough stone? We do not. All right, so let's grab a couple of you guys. Jump on stone here. And we are way, way heavy duty on this now, but we were pl planning on making cataphract, so it makes sense. All right, so we're gonna do some pushing. Uh, obviously we can start grabbing relics right away from the Grand Winery, which is badass. So the tower is going to be coming up. We're going to be hitting Castle Age here in a second. Um, definitely need a blacksmith also. And we will eventually get this one going as well. All right, so our scout has been hunted. Uh, let's go down the side of the map, see what we can find. Excellent. You guys get back on wood. That's what she said. And let's build some cataphracts and uh, get our mercenaries upgraded to Castle Age and we'll get the winery going and start grabbing these relics. All right, one and one. Let's go down here, secure this other relic, because we don't have any source of infinite gold or anything, so you know, uh, we're gonna we're gonna wanna make sure we're covered in other ways. Yeah, cool. So we're gonna get cataphracts. I know they can get some like cool trampling ability. Um and uh yeah. We'll see how that unfolds. Let's get some uh, spearmen also. Gonna be pretty important, I think. Oh well, Japan doesn't really have mounted units, so maybe we just go for the um yeah, just the spears. Okay, so that's going to be irrigated, which is going to be awesome. Um, we found Yellow's base. Okay, so still scouting a little bit. Let's get some upgrades, and let's get some upgrades here. Yeah, they have a unique upgrade in the bottom, which is the... Yeah, it's for the shields. It increases the armor of the cataphracts. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So much to keep track of with this sieve, you know? It's, uh, it's a lot. Yeah, Numeri, Elite, and uh, Enemy Units. Yeah, it's a trample ability that it comes from the... Uh, from the later ages. All right, let's make some Strelbora. We're guarding the relic. Homeboy's bringing that back, and let's get this. Come down here, and uh, looks like there's a little bit of funny business here. So we're gonna harass uh, Japan's troops here. All right. Nomad's uh, just hit Castle Age. He's gonna be able to respond, obviously, but we just want the relic, really. And then from there, we can go ahead and start setting up some Olive Garden. So if we set it up next to the Grand Winery, we are going to need the olive oil. Okay, so the troopers are on the way here, and let's go ahead and get another mercenary branch as soon as we can. And yes, perfect, that's coming. Let's get spearmen. Okay, so let's go... Yeah, we've more or less scouted most of the map here. I need the relics. Japan already has free relics, so... <laughs> can we get that, please? Thank you. Go drop that in the Grand Winery, which is pretty cool that we have a landmark that just straight up does that. We'll throw in some Varangians. And, uh, yeah, just keep getting upgrades. Perfect, perfect. All right, all is going according to plan. I need to get a wall, probably. Um, on this side, yeah, our scout has finally met its end. So let's get these guys and do a bit of a Grand Wall in the north. Um, it's going to take a lot of stone, but I think it's worth it. Just to kind of secure the northern border so then I can focus my efforts in the south and not worry too much about uh, all this. Okay, Aqueduct level 3 now, and the Olive Garden is nicely irrigated. Let's get a uh, tower here. We can start upgrading on that. Let's do this. Make some more spears. And, uh, yeah, we're going to need to establish some trade shortly. What the hell is this? Where'd, where'd these longbows go? Where'd they even come from? What the hell? Is there... Oh, there's a land crossing here. I must have given them a bad move order. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a little haggard, but it's all good. Alright, so you guys have done your thing. Let's get you down to the gold here. Set up some towers. And we can go to the south and just kind of poke and harry and see what my opponent's made of. Alright, so this wall is being built. And we need a marketplace, which I could have sworn I built. Perfect, I did. So we can cancel this and build some... Uh, this and this. Alright, so we're going to go see what's going on in the south. Just move into the trees. And the supply block curse, I could have sworn I built some houses, but I guess I didn't, so it is what it is. Um, we have our free mercs who are about to pop out. And uh, yeah, upgrades are looking good. I need to get the teardrop shields. Yeah, I need to get that because it gives armor to my cataphracts. Oh, it buffs all my unit types. That's really cool. Okay, let's go down here, set up another tower, and then we can go down here and set up another tower. All right. So you guys jump onto the gold node up north. Outstanding, we got the two relics, and we were able to wrestle those from Japan. Wall's coming up here, the Great Wall in the north should be secure, and uh, let's go see what uh, he's got. Yeah, let's go test the test the waters here. Yeah, make a little mango tower, which is going to be fun. 
Once again, we'll do some raiding. Oh, the trample! Oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. He's taking some big L's right now, for sure. A lot of workers going down here. It's definitely not good for him. All right, so let's do this. Bring you guys down here. Uh, set up some siege workshops in the woods. And we can start thinking about pushing through there. Ah, okay, he's making two layers of walls, but I mean, he's been taking big villager losses every time he pops out to do this. So yeah, the cataphracts have that trample ability, which is pretty rad. Um, on top of that, let's grab you, come down here, set up another tower, and um, we definitely need to just like clear out this corner if we can, because that's uh, that's just prime real estate. Uh, obviously, Imperial Age is coming soon. We can build uh, some siege equipment here, probably just some rams, and go clear this building out. All right. Yeah, he's taking some big villager elves for sure. And let's just keep the mercenaries coming, so we can keep making longbow olive oil mercenaries. Oh, did he finish the walls? It's funny. Okay. All right, so then we come down here. We can build a cistern. We got the spearmen here chilling out. And um, do we have any wood? We don't have any wood at the moment. That's what she said. But let's build a Greek fire ram. Wow, somebody just got Castle Age. Holy shit. I know Henker is a high level player too. There must be some serious conflict going on over there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and expand this. Uh, all seems calm here, although it looks like I might be forced out of the water, which will suck, but it is what it is. Um, let's get the, uh, the emplacement here. So that's going to set back our food hard. Thankfully, we do already just have good food. And let's get the cisterns. Yeah, so much with this sieve. It's pretty fun, though, man. I, I definitely like the Byzantines. All right, so Japan is chilling. We will go ahead and get a trebuchet also. He is super fortified. He's just trying to turtle to late game, and I don't want to let him get late game because Japan is going to be the cackle monster in the late game with all those free relics and stuff. All right, so now we have this emplacement here. Let's build a galley. Um, yeah, galleys won't do particularly well, but it's all good. Now we can kind of just save for Imperial Age and just keep mounting pressure here. Um, we are going to need better wood infrastructure for sure. All right, let's get you guys do this. And trebuchet is out, so let's start knocking down walls, 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 and uh, we can go ahead and head down here. Yes. All right, there we go. So free merch should be coming. We could make some land snakes. Oh, shit, he has an opening over here. I didn't even notice. Okay, that's weird. The pathing on that was a bit odd, wasn't it? Is he Imperial Age? He is. He's already Imperial Age. That's not good. So we probably just need to go imp ourselves. He might be able to just come and kill us if we're not careful. More bills. All right. I mean, his eco's got to suck, though. He's he's hemorrhaging villagers. But regardless, let's uh, see if we can get to imp ourselves. We got the Greek fire. We have the Strelbora. The Strelbora are uh, gonna sit and you know pick things off from across. Look from downtown, baby. Strelbora, <laughs> they're just farming those guys, dude. Oh man, brutal. All right, so let's get these cataphracts in. They can do this. We got the trample. Let's do it. Oh, the trample. They have like a charge order. That's so cool. All right. So just keep farming him, and uh, we'll get the trebuchet in here. If we can break him real quick here, that's going to be pretty fat. All right, Greek fire. Let's get in there and do their thing and uh, keep the old uh, Strelbor mercenaries coming. Yeah, he's just going to lose a lot of units. The cataphracts are going to get in soon. And uh, do we have any more upgrades we want? Yeah, let's get the melee attack upgrade. All right. So we are in the base officially in a second. And now we just need to do as much damage as we possibly can while we go for Imperial. All right, so let's do you guys. We move up and uh, you guys chase down his army here. You guys move into his farm eco and we just do our thing. All right, so then you guys go in houses and uh, all is good in the realm. All right. So the cataphracts are going to fight here. Let's do a charge. Oh, we can do a charge. How cool is that? All right, now we just start hammering his eco down, and uh, that should uh, pretty much just end him here. All right, so yeah. Oh, the cataphracts. So cool. They just butchered those guys, man. Yeah, so he's basically dead. Um, he's he's definitely going to be in the old can here in a second. All right, so let's get uh, the this going here. Look at him. The desperate call for help. 
And um, I mean, I think it's too early for them to like react to that, right? Everyone, everyone's gonna be kind of like, you know, well, yeah, I, we got our own problems, dude. It's not like late game where somebody's like really tyrannical. And uh, cool. So let's go down here, and in the meantime, uh, let's go ahead and set up like this. Uh, boom, and then we want to do this all the way down here if possible. All right, so that's gonna basically give us this corner. And let's go and just kind of keep raiding into the lands. Perfect. We have another trebuchet coming in. It's a good thing we killed them early. Uh, marketplace, do we need to save it? We don't really need to because we have this neutral one. So I'm going to... Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I could save it. We'll see. So we're just going to obviously go for the landmarks. Try and finish them off here. Dude, you see, you got to put some respect on the olive oil's name, dude. What is this? What the hell is this shit? Okay, this is weird. Uh, okay. Red is around. I don't know why Nanny would want to save Nomad. But we do have our cataphracts here. And we're just going to keep uh, pounding through here. Alright. So let's go here, and then you guys can do this. We need to finish him off. You know, he's got he's to go down here. So let's uh, take down all the town centers. Do this, and uh, we're definitely going to need some more military tech now. So let's just uh, get a bunch of these. All right, cool. Why is he trying to save Nomad is my question. Yeah. Nomad's obviously got his last stand. Why save Nomad? He's Japan in corner. Just out of curiosity here. You know, I, 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 there's got to be some tactic to it, unless they're just homies. All right, so spheres, and uh, we got you guys, and yeah, they're like actually teaming up against me here. They must, they must be just be pals or something. I don't know why Red would save him. Well, I guess maybe he doesn't want me to have map control. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And uh, let's make some more farms. Do this. Make some more Olive Garden action. All right. So, is our army still fighting? Yes, it is. Good. And the Great Wall is being built. It is not. Okay. So, we need to go build that. So, unfortunately, we're probably not going to be able to kill him now. I mean, he's very beat up. Um, we're going to delete the market. So, we need to get a uh, handful of villagers to come in. Okay, okay. Let's get you guys down here. Have you build some siege workshops. And then we just spam Ramstein to do host. Man, it sucks. We would have had to kill there if it weren't for red. I wonder why. Yeah, maybe just pre self-preservation. Can we do the charges and escape tool? Uh, it kind of kind of works. It's a little bit janky. But now, you know, he's got Imperial. But yeah, obviously he's going to be very beat up at this point. Okay. Set this up. Get more Olive Gardens going. Because fishing could become precarious. And yeah. Red obviously did get beat up. True. But, um, you know, he saved he saved Blue, and now Blue has a chance against me. Because of the, uh, because of the, uh, let's get some more stables here. In workshops, do we need merc uh, mercenary houses? One, two. Alright, so let's gather up. You guys are doing this. Um, our irrigation is respectable for sure. We just can't let Blue recover, so we gotta move back into the base. And we're trying to wall the south. Let's grab a couple of you guys. He's got to be like empty on gold. He's just like desperate here. So we're going to make some rams. And uh, I think the olive gardens are going well. Let's get food being gathered. You guys up here. And then just attack. Alright, so we should be able to torch this. He's got revolquins and stuff. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead and slap a keep down here to make sure we don't lose ground if he decides to push out. And we got him pinned in pretty damn hard. So we just need to go amp ourselves, I think, now. Because otherwise, we're just going to be fighting with inferior armies against them, which is going to suck. Um, we have time. Let's take our cataphracts, go over here. Looks like Blue's like trying to troll about. I'm not sure what, what his, his goal is here. Um, yeah, but we'll hunt these units down, no problem. All 
Okay, I like that we got some land snakes. We're gonna go hunt this villager down. Um, it looks like he's trying to build a barracks over here to do some trolling. Always good. He should be massively behind, should be, but you never know. And uh, cool, so we could build a cistern here, but I don't think we need to. So just hunt that villager down. Walls are being completed. All right, so we're going to get this guy. Cool. And then for our Imperial Age landmark, what do we have? The Foreign Engineering Company is probably the best one. Um, we probably want to build that kind of close by. So let's get the cistern. Why can we not build it here? Okay, so that looks fine. And then we can do the Foreign Engineering Company next to it. Yeah, our landmarks aren't very well hidden, unfortunately. You know, they're not, it's not the best. But we're about to get Imp, and uh, then we're just going to spam olive oil at him, basically. South has been walled off, so we've got control over that. Those guys have been cleared. Let's just make sure no free gold is being... Ha he, he's, he should be gold-starved in the corner. 100%. Okay. So we got that being built. Let's get some mercenary uh, buildings here. Honestly, the longbows just seem still seem like a really good idea. Okay, so we need to deal with that ASAP. Because that's basically all of his food. That's how he's staying in the game. Okay, and then the knights can ride around. Yes. Go torch that down. Go to the gatehouse here. And the engineering company is finishing, and this as well. Cool. One, two... So the Strelbora are just going to start mowing down these ships. We got to starve them out of the corner. The, the rat in the corner must be punished. After Red's glorious uh, rescue on him. Okay, so we got the keep here. Should be fine. Uh, let's get a mango in placement here. Get some cataphracts. And then you can move up this way and get ready. He might counterattack us here. Alright, so let's get the uh, Nest of Beasts against all of his archers, which is just the coolest thing ever that we could just straight up get Nest of Bees. Uh, we don't have enough for the elite mercenaries at this point. So we will in a second. Alright, gold. How are we doing on gold? A little bit a little bit sparse, but we do have the relics, like I said. Uh, yeah, red? I don't know why Nani Yori is moving in to help Nomad. Yeah, it's very weird. It's very strange. I mean, unless they're just pals. It doesn't, doesn't make too much sense to me. Big Japanese army, which we should be able to take um, after a couple waves. Are you two allied? Red and blue? They might be. This army is just all archers. It's pretty low quality, but my army here isn't great either. Alright, so we have the elite upgrades coming out. Let's get this. Uh, let's get some Strelbora coming out. Yes. So he's just destroying a siege workshop. We're going to lose a fair amount here. We probably want to get our basic horsemen leveled up too. So let's move in. Go lose formation against these. We're going to lose this fight, most likely. But, um... Let's go ahead and just set some walls up here. Do this. The longbows are not elite yet. Oh, but his stuff's not upgraded either. Okay. Alright, so the cavalry are moving in. The cataphracts. Let's do a, tra a trample. Oh, <laughs> trample damage. That's so cool. Look at that, man. Alright, so it's actually going pretty well. His units weren't as upgraded as I thought they were. So we should be able to just steam steamroll him into the corner. I was a little bit concerned, but um, I think we're okay. All right, so let's do this. One and two. And yeah, he sent running. Those He has villagers in his army, too. And now we have the nest of bees. All right, so let's grab this. Let's get the nest of bees going. Get the archers moving down. And get the nest of bees shooting over the walls here. Uh, for an engineering company, let's just keep making nest of bees, because they're super good. Oh, he's got the, shot, the shotgun samurai. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Longbows are actually like really good against what he has though. Against like Japanese archers, I found that um, those guys do work. All right, so biology upgrades, maybe range fire upgrades. Not sure. 
Let's get him with the nest of bees. Oh, he's got the shotgun boys. Yeah, but the nests in the longbow range should do very well against him. Let's keep picking him off. The longbows can outrange him and outtrade him. This is what happened when I was playing English against Japan in 1v1. Longbows just like owned them. Yeah, he's just hemorrhaging units. Alright, so as long as nobody else interrupts, I should be able to kill him. Okay, looking good. And uh, the Varangians, yeah, I don't know if we need to go lead on them yet. Let's go ahead and get the uni. We need to get a fully, uh, fully going aqueduct system at the moment. So we need to connect this to uh, this. Oh, I don't know why I pulled my, literally all my farm workers, but... Okay, so we're supply caps. Our eco is pretty good. Um, we could probably delete some of the fishing eco. Definitely delete this boat. We need to get the elite Strelbora, so we'll upgrade them to elite here. And then we want to get the ranged fire upgrade as one of our first ones, which is kind of funny. We can actually sell olive oil too, which is pretty neat. Alright. Who would have thought? We're just playing England, basically. Yeah, the Japanese archers are quick. They have low HP, though. I guess it depends on the, the point in the game. Alright. So he's got to be starving out here. So let's go ahead and set up towers and uh, towers and towers. Let's take these cataphracts around and just go make sure nothing funny is going on. I love that the foreign engineering company is so cool, by the way, man. That's it's such a such a neat mechanic. So we're gonna go make sure we got we got him in the corner. You know what I should do is I should irrigate him. The classic English nest of bees combo. I know, truly forbidden in all the realms. Uh, I, I should irrigate him. I should surround him and bathe him in water and olive oil. Alright, it's going to take a while to get in um, with this current comp we have. Obviously, we got some rams on the way. Um, could delete some vills. Yeah, probably not a bad idea just to try and finish the job. And uh, then we want to keep getting upgrades. Let's go ahead and get the biology and it mercs. Let's get some strelty popping out. Okay, so we're going to get the longbows in and see if we can cheese them with some strelbora. Oh, we're on his walls! Okay, let's get the cataphracts back. They're not going to have a good time here. And uh, let's get the these guys. I think we're winning that fight. It's hard to tell. We need to get our nest of bees in range. Holy shit, that's a lot of archers. Alright, nest of bees. Oh yeah! Bathe them in, in the nests. There we go, perfect. Okay, so let's just keep shooting here. Do this. We're being forced out of the water. Um, he's definitely not having a good time here, but we're going to run out of gold soon in our natural areas. I believe there's a gold node here. Yeah, there is. Okay, that's good. That'll sustain our fighting for a while. So we got the Greek fire. Uh, we need to go ahead and get more stables if we can to get horsemen to just cheese his archers, basically. Um, all right. Let's get elite horsemen. Cataphracts are cool and all, but, you know, it's not everything. Archers are coming again, so let's get our nest of bees to blast them. He's making walls. This man's a survivor. You know, he's hanging in there, but Penta, Penta nest of bees is going to be very hard to deal with for any sort of an archer build. Alright. Okay, let's get you guys in here. Let's get the TC here with these guys. Let's get the nest of bees ready to go. Um, I'm just going to destroy his market so he can't balance his economy. Might live to regret that later. But yes, now we're getting it. Because I don't want him to be able to trade and stuff. Go, Nest of Bees! Oh! <laughs> Look at the damage! Oh, man. Okay, he's trying to do a wild spring alt dive here. Let's get that one, too. Uh, we're being attacked here with uh, trebuchets from the middle. Pink is coming. I really need to finish this. You know, I can't, I can't, I don't want to be fighting on multiple fronts. So we're going to try our best to finish it. Okay, we can go trample to get this guy if we can. Yep, uh, looks like it's going to run away. Can we tram trample through the walls? That's kind of fun. All right, so TC is going to go down here. Let's move you guys in. Let's get the foreign uh, company here. Get some hui hui pals uh, moving in, which is going to be great. 
couple samurai trying to last samurai and dive here, which is cool. And now let's go for the Kura storehouse. Move you guys up. Move you guys up. 36 workers. Let's go build a uh, gold node there. So, yeah, we're just losing boats here. Nothing too serious. Oh, shit. My nest, my nest is poor pathing on my part. Well, at least they did some good damage on the way out. All good. So the Rams, let's do this. And you guys get in. And just uh, keep killing landmarks, I guess. Yeah, we are a little bit light on the olive oil. I need to regroup. I, I was distracted by this uh, peripheral rating. Looks like somebody was able to get in here. I don't know how he's sustaining his eco. He must have some other uh, funny business here. Let's set up some docks to see. See what we can see. Okay, Vrangians. Yeah, sure, we can get them fully upgraded. And... Um, just keep wearing down his army. Eventually, it's going to break. Unless we get attacked by somebody else. Then, then you know, we could be in some danger. You know, Japan seems pretty good at turtling with their, like, town centers being so jacked and stuff. He's got to be running out of food, too. So we're just going to go after Bills. All right. Pull you guys back. We don't want to lose them for no reason. Um, hui Hui Pao should be here in a second. All right. So let's get this and have it start blasting at these towers. All right, the boys are ready. And, uh, yeah, there's some weird poking and prodding into my lands. All right, horsemen. Dive, dive, dive. Hui Hui Pao can uh, hit this. Let's get some men-at-arms. Let's get some bombards coming down as well. We need to get a critical mass of artillery that can just steamroll him, basically. He's hanging in there, though, man. That's for sure. All right, hui hui pow, how you doing? Let's take this down. All right. Are we being attacked anywhere else? No, it doesn't look like it. Let's uh, take this tower down. Oh, uh, yeah, he's fishing again. Uh, I figured as much. All right, let's make this. That's how he's sustaining. Yeah, it's the fishing. So we just need to starve him out. Okay, let's uh, get a critical mass instead of trickling in and doing haggard Reaganomics here. And we can get these berry bushes, sure. Uh, boats should be popping out soon. And let's do this. Gather up, gather up. Uh, dive that and get you guys behind the walls. Yeah, we just need to starve him out. Which we should be able to do here in a second. Alright. So first warship is out. It's going to start toasting those bad boys. Okay, do we want to fight this here? Do we have enough yet? No, not quite. Our food is kind of okay, but not amazing. Alright, so the bombards. Let's get them to methodically snipe these. And uh, let's get some olive oil dark lords coming down. We'll get some Streltsy. And now his his fishing fleet is going to start paying the troll toll, which is going to be pretty big. He'll, he'll fall massively behind when that happens. All right. So yeah, very pitched fight here for sure. He's got a little, little uh, demo ship here, but I don't think he's paying attention. So should be able to get it. All right. How's this fight looking? He's trying to kill my bombards with, uh, with, uh, with archers. The classic meta. Okay, yeah, he's not watching there. So, yeah, he's going to lose all of his food here. All right, let's uh, target this and this. This and this. Can we get that? I will, t I will too, return the favor of sniping his, his with, uh, with archers. All right. Back you go. Let's get some nest of bees. And, uh, yeah, it's basically just a disaster here. Gather, gather. Consolidated push. Our food is all right. Um, let's go get on... I don't believe all of our bushes are being worked here. It's got to have... I'm going to have start having some problems now, I would wager. Yeah, random tower here. Okay, um, and we probably want to just get some mangoes now. Like normal mangoes. A lot of archers. Let's get you back, Streltsy. Uh, sell some of this. Just let the Greek fire rams kind of occupy their attention for now. And that is the last of the fishing boats they have. Great. Yeah, I was wondering why their economy was so solid there. Um, but yeah, that, that explains a lot. My spearmen aren't fully upgraded. I probably want to get basic archery ranges of my own. Um, let's just gather some of these for now. I mean, I guess horsemen will do the job. Just horsemen with artillery. The dreaded Byzantine hover hovercraft, I know. 
All right, so he should be completely like starved out now. Looks like he's li it's literally the scene in The Last Samurai where they General Katsumoto like moves out for like one last dread push before he goes down, you know? This is this is what this feels like. Yeah. We got a lot of mangoes though. We got a lot of mangonels. All right, so let's shoot here. Let's shoot here. Get you guys diving that if possible. Let's do this. Get some more of you. And get on the archers. Get on the archers. So it looks like we killed all the artillery. So now we just need to basically slow push him. Thinks he's going to get that gold, huh? Not today. The problem is this is taking a long time. So there's a, a substantial opportunity or substantial uh, likelihood that... Um, that uh, somebody else on the map is going really powerful. Oh, those are some big shots. That's going to hurt. All right. All right. Is there any way I can establish some trade during all this? Maybe. So move it, move it, and a groove it. You guys do this. You guys do this. Um, let's grab you guys. Come down here and get this gold. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. Good micro, though, for sure. He's microing very well. Um, we need to grab some of you guys and set up some more olive uh, olive gardens. We need, just need more olive oil to bathe to bathe our bodies in it. We have to be like the Baron Harkonnen in Dune when he's just like bathing in oil. Just to regenerate himself. Yeah, looking, looking pretty beat up here, trying to repair his landmark. And uh, we're going to take this gold now, too. All right, so sacred sites have been taken. Shit, is, is Smeagol really the only one alive over there? Can't be. No. So Smeagol has both of those. Um, I mean, I could obviously make peace here. Let's do this. All this because Red came over and wanted to save him earlier. You know? Just pure suffering. Alright, so keep picking off these units. Do this. And uh, do that. So, okay. Me, Smeagol, Rock, and... Uh, Rock, can you stop him? I don't know if he can. We're going to find out. Because I could definitely kill this gentleman right now. But if Smeagol's going to capture the Sacreds, then... Don't know walls. God, of course. Right when I'm about to kill him again. All right, let's turn around, get you guys turning. All right, so let's go for this. Hopefully, hopefully Rock can stop him. Okay, let's keep moving these guys. Let's get on the Olive Gardens and uh, set up you. We have a lot of olive oil, so let's get some of uh, the longbows. Villagers are getting hammered. Villagers are getting hammered. So now we just flood him with rams and he dies, basically. But um, the question is, I don't know if Smeagol is uh, actually going to win on Sacreds here. This is a little scary. So let's build some transport ships. How are we looking down here? A little bit messy. Yeah, We're getting the bounty for killing his um, his bills. So, yeah, Smeagol, shit, he might be able to win on that. I'm not sure. All right, let's delete these Palisades. Uh, keeps on them. All right, sounds good. So, in order to have a chance of winning, we need to we need to go mid. So, we are gonna go um, peace for now, blue. We'll let him live, cause we got bigger fish to fry. We just needed the report, and uh, let's get the Rams going there. Mercs are on the way. And let's go up this way. Yeah, I definitely can see the strength of the Byzantines, though, man. They got they got some cool tricks. The whole olive oil system is very cool. Japan's basically dead in the water in the corner. I mean, he's got like eight farms. Um, but, yeah, the question is... Yeah, how do we do this? <laughs> look, look at this. Yeah, I'm, honestly, man, I wish I could just finish the job here. But with Smeagol, Helm's deeping on these. We could uh, We could be in danger if we don't try and stop it. Do you get a bounty for killing uh, villagers of dead players? Yeah, that's something else. That's that's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, what other upgrades do we need to get? Yeah, we're basically gold starved right now, so that sucks. But we got olive oil, so it doesn't matter. Blue is going to escape from his cage in the corner. 
And he's probably not going to help either. Oh, yeah, we're probably dead. Um, Because the problem is, how did this side of the map get obliterated so quickly? Yeah, okay, he's, he's taking his time killing that. So this is obviously going to be a disaster here. Um, let's go ahead and get some nest of bees. Some rams and, uh, yeah, some horsemen. We are doing some respectable damage. But our army is mostly wood-based, so it's not that good. All right, so let's get you back to the olive farms. Uh-huh. Yeah, we did some topical damage. Let's gather up. We need our Strelbora. Gonna need help or... Or we lose, Nomad. Yeah, because we got five minutes to decap this. Peace. Until uh, Smeagol gone. Alright. Let's gather up. Um, how are we doing here? Maybe we can start like a stone wall empire to secure us. We gotta get some trade going. Um, it looks like the top might be dead too. So sell some olive oil. Buy this. And do we have enough... Yeah, I know. Actually, if we build buildings with these guys, you just get a little bit of stone, so... Alright. So let's move this way. That should give us enough to build, get the, get that. <laughs> he says don't trust him, but you literally will just lose the game if we don't stop him. <laughs> it's like not the time to politic. Okay, he's coming through here. Let's save these bills if we can. All right, let's get you guys down here to decap that. So we got the decap going, which is great. Let's go down here. Keep these guys going down this way. Get that here. Get this here. He does have the rockets, but the rockets don't actually do that much damage against single target. So that's okay for us. And then we need to go try and get some trade, maybe. So I'm going to see if I can set that up in the corner. Oh, so Sacred Sites just decap no matter what now, huh? That's right. All right, so let's get the Rams on there. Keep on him. He's very strong. All right. So is he just going to backstab? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. If that's the case, fine. We'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. All right, so let's go here. Let's gather these guys. Thankfully, I have a good keep here. I guess I guess Gollum will probably win this. I mean, I think I can fend off this attack. It's pretty damn small, and I have a keep and a ton of horsemen. So, all right, so you guys need to go. Um, start gathering wood here. Keeps getting uh, the business. All right, so let's descend on this archer-based army with our cavalry. One, two, uh, three, and four. And you guys can jump in the Revolquin. He's back. The Ungabunga returns. I am weak. Please don't kill me. He's definitely not weak. Don't listen to him. You know, how many times do we have to teach him this lesson? Many. Alright, so let's do this and this. We're moving guys out here. Nomad, you gotta. Why are you doing this? Understandably, I've been bullying you a bit in the corner, but. Alright, so we just gotta keep pushing him, because at this point, it seems like he just wants to kill me rather than play to win. Uh, so let's go to the corner. Don't let the tire. <laughs> no, he's playing into Smeagol's strengths! Alright, uh, Perp, can you handle him? Nomad attacks me instead. Alright. So we'll come down this way. Um, we're going to set up more siege workshops. Let's go here and do this. Two, three. We got more archers coming out, which is fun. We'll farm them. Hit these walls. Alright. I don't think purple is going to be able to stop them. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's very, very... I mean, this is basically his whole army. 
So he's got to be hurting a little bit. Let's delete some of these guys. Um, and cancel all this. Let's cancel, cancel. Okay, walls are being hit here. And then we want to delete some bills. Probably a handful here. All right. Go nest the beast. Fire. All right. Okay, so I guess I go back to the middle. Smeagol's attacking me now. Oh, lovely. <laughs> oh my god, why? Why? Okay, we gotta try and stop Smeagol, obviously. Because I, I want to play to win. I don't want to I don't want to be a potato. So we're going to make some Streltsy here. Uh, yeah, and we're going to just have our army basically just die here, unfortunately. I don't know how strong Purple is. I suspect he's not that strong. Um, maybe. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. Is there any trade we can get that's like worth a damn? Um, let's see what this route looks like. Alright, so let's move out to the middle. See if we can grab this. And uh, is, is he just going to attack us again? I don't know. Set up towers to see. Okay, so we're attacking here. Let's dive this artillery. Got a lot of keeps around it, that's for damn sure. At least we're killing quite a bit. He's losing artillery. I can't get in, he's in your base now. Yeah, yeah, I suspected as much. All right, so let's get you guys down here. We will need, uh, we will need Nomad's help. All right, so let's get the foreign artillery company and get some uh, hui hui pals. Um, this needs to go just trade here. He may just attack me instead. Not sure. It could be a blood feud for him. Um, all right, so the Huyuhui Pao costs a, thou a thousand olive oil, which we should be getting in pretty good numbers here. Let's delete these stupid houses. They're just like obstructing our beautiful farm network. And uh, we can go ahead and get one here, here, and here. All right. Smeagol's raiding. Yeah, we need to get some, uh, some dudes here to deal with that. It's fine. We can't afford to send things back. Hopefully Japan will come help from their corner empire. Uh, Tithe Barns at this point, is it worth it? I don't know. Alright, so the Hui Hui Pao hopefully will come soon. He's doing a very kind deed of uh, mitigating our villager count for us. So, shout out to Smeagol. Um, Alright, so let's move up with our army. We'll see uh, if he's going to help. I mean, these knights are not going to do anything else. All right, let's move the horsemen in. Go see if we can snipe some artillery and help. Um, and yeah, we just need to keep this coming, this pressure. Get on all these range units. Just dive them down. You guys ram that. Yeah, we actually killed a fair amount there with those horsemen. Not bad at all. Uh, yeah, let's get some brain game guard. Let's see if blue helps this time or if he just backstabs me. I need to protect the Hui Hui Pao now. Okay, and um, yeah, we just get Streltsy out here, I guess. We're basically all horsemen, and his army comp is like quite good against us. Alright, let's get the Hui Hui Pao back. I can't afford to lose it. I need like basic archer units. Um, Alright, so let's build a cistern. Can we build it? Not enough resources, okay. So we're just gonna build standard archer ranges then. All right, let's start hitting this again. Uh, looks like he is going to try and stop Smeagol, so that's good. That is good indeed. We do need to kill Smeagol though, because he's just going to keep doing this over and over, and he's got, he's got. Oh, why the pathing? Oh, I didn't have vision. That's my bad. Damn, damn, damn. Well, anyways, we need to three v one him, guys. He's got like 40 relics. Alright, so yeah, that was good. We folded up a lot of those guys. 
And um, yeah, here comes the, the crew. Let's delete you guys. We don't really need that. Get you guys back here into the farms. Because at this point, he probably has like 5 million relics, all jokes aside. Yeah, you see, he's able to fend us off. We need uh, Nomad to backstab him down there to take the uh, pressure off the top. Uh, I don't even have these guys elite. Let's go ahead and sell some resources here. And um, from here, let's get our archers upgraded. Let's do archer horsemen. It's a pretty good late game combo. But yeah, it's going to take a hot minute to upgrade him. Let's just throw some spears in there. Um, let's throw in some bombards. Because we have the... Now we need to save the gold. All right. 3v1 time, lads. Hopefully they'll. Hopefully everyone will agree to that, because he's very powerful. Japan, uh, if they're allowed to sit long enough, can get a ton of relics. All right, should have gotten that earlier, but it's all good, better late than ever. Let's get back to the farms, get the food upgrade, which uh, I suppose I did not get earlier. Sell some wood, which we have plenty of. Unfortunately, the Byzantine rams, um, they actually cost... They cost a uh, freaking gold, so you can't like spam them as easy. Okay, let's move up here. Let's creep a little bit. And the archers, um, we need to sell. Sell some food. And let's get the archers up to elite. Good. Hui Hui Pao needs to shoot there. Get some vision. Take down that tower because it's shooting cannons. Okay, back. Fight. Gotta protect the beast. Let's get some Brangians, get some archers in there, and yeah, we're doing our part, you know. Let's get on the ranged archers here if we can. Um, hopefully Nomad's coming around the bottom. Oh, is he gonna get there in time is the question. Oh boy. Yeah, nice, nice uh, little force here, that's for sure. All right. So the Hui Hui Pao can attack ground, so we can do a ground attack on this keep here. Should be able to reach it a little bit easier. Although, eh, are we gonna are we gonna have some problems here? Probably. All right, we need to run away. He's gonna dive that. We got two minutes left. Nomads uh, moving from the bottom, destroying some stuff as he goes. Foreign artillery company, maybe just some cannons. I don't know. All right, team. Let's go and the Rams. Not going to be able to make too many, but we're going to try and make some Greek fire rams, and uh, we don't even have the upgrade for them. But at this point, I think we're just desperate. All right, come on, Nomad. This is you, buddy. This is you. This is th the time. Hmm. Yeah, we were no, for sure. You know, going after, uh, but killing uh, the person in the corner, especially when they're a save with infinite gold, is always a priority in my opinion. Uh, obviously, we had a kill on Nomad earlier, but. Um, for some reason, the French rescued them, which then, you know, really, really just put us in a grind because he was able to rebuild and get Imperial. Um, yeah, so that was that was a, that was an unfortunate one for us. Good play, good defense from him for sure. All right, let's get these towers down, get these archers and Streltsy to start shooting at these dudes. And uh, yeah, just archers, 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 man. Let's get on the hand cannoneers. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Let's move it up and let's get the cannons. One and two. Don't think we're gonna get this unless, uh, unless on the south side there's some sort of efficient pushes going. Not sure. Maybe there is. Tower down. Let's go ahead and take this other tower down and pull back the royal cannon. Please don't kill my uh, rams, please. All right. So let's get some more olive gardens here. Maybe just like pure olive garden late game is the way. Alright, so you guys go here, you guys go here. Horseman, horseman, cannon. Come on, Blue. Are you on the bottom? You're my boy, Blue. You're my boy. Alright, so keep roasting here. Okay, looking, uh, looking a little dicey. We're at 56 seconds. But if we can get one of these keeps down, that's going to be pretty sweet. We do have two cannons now. We have the, the dreaded French Royal Cannons. Let's get some Brangians and some Archers. Brangians, I don't know why, it like, sounds like Star Trek to me. I mean, I obviously know it's a real historical thing, but... Frangie, Brangians, you know, you know, I don't know, something. My nerd senses are tingling. Alright, one keep has fallen, that's pretty good. Um, let's get the Rams onto the point. I know that will um, delay the time. 
Uh, we can sell some olive oil to make some money. And, uh, and yeah, just, just send some rams in there, I guess. Are we going to make it? 26 seconds? All right. We might actually be able to stop him here. It looks like we were going to. Wow. Holy shit. All right. So let's get it. We're killing a lot of the forces on the point. Let's uh, go ahead and hit this keep. Move you over here. Holy shit. We're actually going to stop him? For real? So we're going to build a uh, building here to improve our production there. All right. Take down the keep. So the timer doesn't run while um, while armies are on it. So we've almost got the keep down. Send some spheres, why not? And then let's send some olive oil legions. Okay, the keep is down. Um, we are fighting on the point. Blue is close. It looks like Nomad is there. Yeah, but this point's being uh, being uh, yeah. We need to get on it with whatever we can. We lost our momentum here. And Blue seems to be struggling here. Damn, close. We almost got him off. Well played, dude. Well played. Yeah, I think he's got it. Unless the Rams can get there. I I, I wonder if they changed it so Rams don't um Rams don't count as decap weight. Looks like Blue's still fighting in the south, so we need to keep it up. All right. So keep fighting, keep fighting, and we have the mercenaries coming. Let's get some nest of bees action. Yeah, so the Rams do not count anymore. I don't know if they changed that. Oh, uh, run for it. Run. GG. Well played. Damn, dude. Damn. Professor Pone, maybe you can convince Turin to host the next one. Yeah. That was a great game, dude. Good hold. Nomad held very well in the corner. He did a great job. Um, man, our plans got screwed up by the French. We did like a castle age timing, but we lost our momentum because of that. And then I think they probably just got... Because Red lost multiple armies to us. They probably just died to Smeagol. Yeah, that's what happened, so... Wait, why would you attack me when you have a Smeagol in the corner playing Japan with 500 free relics? Oh my god, dude. Oh. Why? Why would you do that? Oh, Nanny and Tron crashed. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so you crashed. Oh, that's why Smeagol got the game for free then. Oh, because you guys just crashed. Okay. So two of his neighbors crashed. That explains a lot. And he was trading, obviously, too. Yeah. GG. Oh, you didn't die. You got DC'd. Yeah, I can see that now. We, we're we starting to see it. Oh, that sucks. We had two DCs. Oh, that just kind of gives the game to someone. Yeah, it's too bad. GG, well played. All right. We had several crashes. Tactical DDoS. I know. I was like, how did Smeagol... I, what I thought is I was like, how did he kill everybody on his side of the board so quickly? I, th I honestly thought that was a pretty short one. So I'm actually just going to play in this next one. We'll cast probably the last one. Um, let me see if Pwn wants to play. Yo. You want to play? I'm seeing if the Dark Lord himself... Smeagol's one doesn't count. It still counts, but yeah. Obviously, you know... Yeah, the Palisade Walls are fun, for sure. Yeah, I've seen people do that before. Well, you got you got Imperial before me, so my timing to kill you was when I had had you uh, push back, but then Nanny um, came and attacked. You guys attacked me 2v1. That, that was really good. It killed my momentum. Granted, I think he should have attacked Smeagol instead. That, that would have been the proper play, because... Yeah, because Byzantines don't have any, any infinite gold, so I don't think you need to worry about them as much as you do Japan. Like, Japan is kind of, uh, seems like French level of like, hey, you got to deal with this. All right. So what we're going to do next is, hold on. Uh, all right. We're going to get our boy Pwn and we're going to do a uh, 2v2v2. <laughs> yeah, Nanny was lifesaver. Yeah, Nanny did good. Yeah, he probably saw me killing landmarks. Yeah. He did. I do think that was a big misplay overall for his own benefit, though. Like, I think if he just attacks Smeagol and keeps him honest, that's way better. All right, let's see this. So Colin Pone. Um, let's do this. All right. Hey, what's going on? You ready, dude? Yeah, he said we're doing a two v two v two. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna shoot. Are you online right now? Are you, you're on my friends list. Yeah, on uh, Age. Yeah, boy. 
Okay, let's find you. I'm gonna be like the player on life support. You're gonna have to keep me alive. <laughs> All right, I'm looking for you on here. This is only my third match ever. Yeah, this is Pwn's third match ever, so he's he's learning trial by fire. I did one FFA and I did a two v two v two with Uravity, and uh, both the other people attacked me. <laughs> <laughs> they just knew you were the, new. <laughs> yeah. So Uravity had to come to my my defense, and then they finally attacked him while he was trying to <laughs> save me in my drowning ship. All right. Well, that's probably going to happen here too. So. Yeah, probably. So you're going to play Japan, okay? And um, I will play. Who do I want to play here? We did Byzantines. We've done a little bit of olive oil. There's going to be a lot of Japan players here, probably. I would suspect. Um, please, I crashed decent hack. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. All right. So, who do we who do we want to play as? What do you guys feel like seeing? Yes. I'm sorry I talked with my mouth full. He called me right when I had crackers and cheese in my mouth. <laughs> I just got home from work. Give me a break. Um, okay, so that looks fine. Um, you know, there's... Uh, there's my homeboy, your rabbity now. Okay, I'll go Japan too. So, team up. All right, lads, let's do it. Oh, we can play Joan of Arc, sure. I don't know how to play... Joan, but do it. Yeah, be be the hero that I need. One, two. I need a hero. <laughs> All right, this is the time where we win, dude. Are you ready for this? <laughs> this is the time where you win, and I will probably have to sacrifice my my spot on the map so that way you can have more resources. <laughs> <laughs> just just send me send me gold. Yeah. <laughs> um. So for Japan. I know the ninja landmark is fun, but it's really terrible in FFA, in my opinion. <laughs> so for H2, you're going to want to go for the um, probably the Kura storehouse. Yeah, we'll see if I remember how to age up. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> just if you if there's one thing you do, just always make villagers. You know, just constantly, I, constantly have the villagers going. All right. I will try. Yeah. Uh, Joan is yeah. I, I've never played Joan of Arc, so I have no idea how this. Like is. I know zero hockey. I hope you realize it. Yeah, well, you're fine. I believe in you, dude. My uh, goal is to become the gatekeeper of bronze. I, I want people who dreamed of silver to have to beat me. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be, you'll be the obstacle. Yeah. I am definitely Turin's vassal. <laughs> <laughs> it's my minion. Um, Turin is the mole man of this game. Yes, mole man, mole the, the, the man. scourge of uh, Age of Wonders. Okay, looking good. Loading up here. What's what's the Zhu Xi's legacy? Zhu Xi, uh, it's a Chinese sub faction. They're really cool, dude. They can get Shaolin monks, bro. Oh God, look how far apart we started. Oh no. Oh no. I I, I guess teams together wasn't on or doesn't work. Okay, man. Well, um, you know what? It's fine. It's time to suffer, lads. <laughs> Suffering. Okay, hey, we're not the only ones who aren't together. Yeah, so. yeah, so we're fine. Okay, looking good. You know, we're across from each other. Dude, we should just trade right down the middle of the map with each other. Okay. Yeah, just right down the middle. It's the worst that could happen. And since you're pretty new, just let me know if you have any questions. Okay, Joan of Arc is... Okay, I built a farmhouse. This is what I harvest wood with, right? So, oh, oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Here's, here's the lumber camp. I found it. Oh, no. Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> no, I actually... I, I remember them saying that they double up. Oh, no. Bone. It might double up with the... Houses are for food. Yes. This actually could work to our benefit, Pone. And I'll tell you why for a couple of reasons. One being is that um, I might be able to isolate and kill someone easier, you know, because their ally won't be with them. So that gives us better chances. So you basically just need to become the Shogun in the South and survive, you know? I, I'm going to be the Dark Lord of the Sheep. Yeah, that's great. Um, definitely fish if you can, if there's water near you. But for now, just, yeah, maybe just standard age up for you is going to be good. Water's over there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, should I be having a lot of people on wood or no? Uh, not you don't want wood at all in the Dark Ages unless you're trying to build an early dock. So if you want to build a dock up on the river, then yes. What should I be going for right now? Oh, uh, just food and gold. So you just want to hit your sheep and, uh, and then build a gold node. So a forge next to your gold. Yeah. Come on, Joan of Arc. Mine, mine faster. She's she's on her way to leveling up. <laughs> Joan needs to be the hero Japan needs. Yeah. Well, she's certainly going to try. Perfect, perfect. So maybe pull your wood villagers over to your uh, food. Oh, no. Don't... I found a Byzantine. <laughs> he has been found. Been... Yeah. Now I'll send him the... The Turinator. Yes, dude. I will I will take him down for you once I get Castle Age. He attacked my scout. You're just going to let him do that to me, dude? You're going to let him do me dirty like that? got to run back to the base and recover from your wounds, your grievous wounds. <laughs> oh, Turin, I'm dying. This, this attempt on my life has left me bruised and scarred. Or what, is, what does Palpatine say in that moment? I always forget. Uh, it says I had a really bad time. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Says, damn man, that did not go well for you. <laughs> why? Why would you do that? Oh, so we have somebody up here, Doctor Silly Willy, too. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Silly Willy is here for blood. Oh boy. Yeah, we could do. Well, we're gonna do a series on the channel eventually, um, the Lords of Bronze, where we're gonna have like bronze players duking it out, and we'll do like coaching during all that. So um, that should be fun for sure. All right, so we have a green player here. Hopefully they're not on a team, green and purple. Let's see. Uh, no, they're not, okay. This is kind of just gonna become like a weird 1v1 sort of, but with like a lot of chaos all over. Okay, so I, I should be focusing on food hardcore. Right? Yeah, food and gold. Usually you wanna open with like seven on food and three on gold, and then you can start switching on the lumber after that is like standard for a lot of civs. Okay, people are aging up. Yeah, everybody's doing better than me. But you're fine. That checks That checks out. And so for Japan, um, your town, main town center, you want to build all your farms like around it. Okay. Because Japan has a centralized economy. Um, the yeah. only way to get faster so, production speed. What, what am I doing with my feudal, my feudal age here? So you want to go Kura Storehouse. Oh, yeah. Koka Township. I see the Shinobi. No, 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 no. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that would require a lot of like game knowledge and ability to use. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah no 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 don't do that all right so the docks are going which is good uh okay so cancel that and build it next to your base so, oh okay like, so like yeah right on top of my base no so a uh, one square tile away from your base so there's a place for a farm in between it and your base and you want to put four workers on it when you're building it like like pretend it's like warcraft 3 where you're speed building yeah, I was just pulling some people over here. Sorry if my coaching isn't great. I'm like, I'm learning this new civ as well, so I'm like struggling here. I need to build all scouts. No. That's chat's advice. No, God, don't listen. <laughs> uh, put more workers on uh, building your uh, your landmark. I, I got four over there. You got four on the landmark? Okay, perfect, perfect. I didn't see the other ones. Sorry, I'm like monitoring both of us here. Miss. miss. Trying to doom me. I know. Joan of Arc's going to level up soon, though. You better watch out. The Iron Lady is coming. That that That's going to be good when you uh, hit him with the old Ark. It is. Of Joaning. Okay. So she's pretty close to leveling. So let's do the School of Cavalry. So Joan does build landmarks faster, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's do this. Switch on to gold. And in case I get raided by some trolls, let's set up a tower. Where do I get my, uh, oh, here it is. So, be in age once you get to the next age, yeah. you're going to want to um, get your town, town center upgraded um, with some stone. So you want to maybe gather a little bit of stone. And you can build oh. maybe two barracks, um, should be your like goal for the immediate future. Got it. So then you can get some samurai. Oh, <laughs> yeah. and, and we win. Hell yeah, dude. Did Joan of Arc level up? She did. Okay, so we're going to do Path of the Archer. She's going to go hunting here. I know Joan of Arc gets experience for this. There's literally a, a Japanese uh, ninja here attacking my docks. Joan of, knows. Joan of Arc is coming for blood. 
Come on, Joan. This is your time to win. Somebody did go for the uh, Shinobi landmark against me. It's pretty funny. Joan of Arc has fended off the foul threat to the lands. God, it's so weird having a hero character in this game. You know, it's very strange. All right, so... Let's get that to finish. Um, all right, so the Corosaur house is up. Yeah, switch to wood. Get, uh, take like half your gold villagers and go put them on stone. I can't afford the building yet. Okay, when I you can. Wood. I need wood. When you can, for sure. Oh, look, he's trying to infiltrate me with villagers, dude. What a troll. <laughs> I see you, dude. I see you. Okay, let's get you on this. Does my scout passively heal? Your scouts do passively heal, yes. <laughs> I, I was like, it's at full health, and it should have should be close to death. Mm. Dude, yeah, they... I'm probably the best guy in the whole game, dude. Yeah, I'm you're pretty, you're pretty damn solid, bro. That old shift right click across the map, StarCraft style. It's working. Okay. Red's using the dreaded shinobis on me. Okay, so let's repair and repair. Get the dock upgrade. Go, Joan of Arc. Hunt them. She's leveling up, but slowly. Okay, for night, let's go. Keep hunting that shinobi. Let's hunt this shinobi. And, uh, cool. So, yeah, age up's coming soon. Does it matter where I put my barracks? Uh, it, yeah, typically just closer to your base. Not, like, right on it, but, like, within range. All right. So next up, you don't have to be as guarded with our landmarks here, since um, since it, it's uh, the, the whole team has to basically get taken down. Yeah. Eventually, we'll have to switch to a farm eco. <laughs> Shinobi just assassinating a poor villager. He is. Do well, you need, do you need assistance? No, no, I'm good. It, it's just annoying more than anything. I'm so glad that happened to you, not me. I'd already be dead. Yeah, I, I mean, the only reason you really do it is just to troll, in my opinion. All right, so we're gonna go hunt some wild game. Joan of Arc's gonna head over here. Oh God, Tron already sees everything I'm doing. Is he attacking you? No, but he told me I had too much on gold. What's that whoa low on the map? Did you hear that? Yeah, it looked like it went down in the middle. Oh, that's right. Joan of Arc has a sniping ability. Yeah, it's my first time playing her, so... Um, I could have sniped those assassins. Got it, with Divine Arrow. Got it. Okay, thank you guys. Sorry, a little bit newer to her, so... Okay, should I be work focusing on advancing my castle age or just uh, uh, so put getting the Daimyo Manor? Uh, Daimyo Manor, uh, max out your farms, and then, um, then, well, then castle age. Max out my farm. I, sh I want to be swapping to a farm economy already. Oh, uh, just the ones you have. Oh man, there's uh, like this building automatically making some. Yeah, but you need to have villagers on your farms for them to work. Right. So they don't have uh, villagers on them at the moment. Oh shit! Wrong landmarks. Okay. Okay, am I may <laughs> Should I be making samurai? Yeah, you can make some samurai. Hell yeah, dude. But uh, focus on upgrading your Daimyo Manor first. It, it's upgrading. Sweet, sweet. It, it, it's done. The the palace has arrived. Never mind. The manor. manor. Palace is next one. The manor is here. Hell yeah, baby. Let's go. This is what it's all about right here. Do I worry about things like increased villagers' health by plus 25? Uh, which upgrade is that? Textiles? No. But you want to get some of your economic upgrades, so like go to your mill and get... Um, wheel yeah, I have been doing that. Good, good. I, p I picked up minor things <laughs> uh, with this game on in the background. Yeah, watching the watching all the old streams and whatnot. Alright, let's move up here. Go see what's going on in the neighborhood. Gotta use my arrows. 
Yeah, the food cost of buildings is the consecrate. All right, so we're going to do that. Pretty rad. We're going to go raid up here. Oh, so she can consecrate from pretty far away. Oh, wow, okay. That's pretty interesting. And let's come down here. I know there was a boar, so we can go grab that to get that sweet food. Um, and chivalry, why not? Sure. Should I be putting... Uh, uh, forget I was going to say anything. My brain dead. Poor Dr. Silly Willy's not having a good time here, dude. <laughs> it's a little bit of a rough one for old Silly Willy. Okay, should I go for the Damio Palace before tier 3, or should I... Oh, uh, the manor's fine. You can go tier 3 now. Yeah, I would say. Okay. And which one am I won? The temple? Yeah, the Shinto one. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Shinto priest. Yes. The one that... Not the, the Buddhist monk. The floating garden is the one you want. Okay, so not much going on here. And yes. And then yes. And yes. Alright. Let's grab some food. Do a little bit of harassing here. Nice. Keep pressuring. Alright, so we'll take a look at uh, some of the upgrades here. Got it. Okay. Joan of Arc has Consecrate, as ranged. Let's go up here, do a little bit of harass. And we need to grab you guys, do this, and get on stone. What is he, this gentleman, doing here? Is he just not mining at all? Could be the case. Okay, we have crazy good food at the moment. Alright, Joan of Arc. When she gets level, the next level, I'm going to be pretty excited. Wheelbarrow, food gather. What's the range on this? Can she just consecrate from downtown? Holy shit, she can consecrate from across the map? Oh, that's cool! Alright, whole map range for consecrate. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, why are you not grabbing this relic, buddy? Okay, I just think this gent here is... Um, is basically just dying. Alright, cool. So relic's being taken. I think green abandoned ship. I think he ran down to his ally. Um, so for Castle Age Pwn, I would recommend getting a lot of stone and just aging up. Or, uh, excuse me, building a keep. Because since you're alone and you're a little bit newer, I would say that... Oops, we had that on the wrong one. Uh, the only other goat stone pile that I've noticed uh, appears to have already been discovered by somebody else and they were mining it. Oh, uh, you can uh, push him off it. And, oh, so you finished your Shinto building, right? Yeah. So what you want to do now is there's relics that are outside of it. Grab your Shinto priest that spawned with it and, um... Okay. Sorry, I'm, yeah. like, in a fearsome battle here. And I'm and you want it somewhere. You want to drop him in, uh... You want to drop him... Okay. You getting Wolo loves? Uh, no, I'm... Oh, oh, he just gave me all the horsemen! Oh, yeah, buddy, let's go! Well, oh, well. All right. You're gonna... He's gonna pay for that now, for sure. Okay, so we have river food, so we need to switch it up. Oh, my God, that was so funny. Where, where, where am I bringing this into? Uh, drop it off at your forge. That will give you a uh, permanent gold, basically, which is very good. What do I drop them both off at the forge? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's separate forges, separate forges, separate. Forges. Got it. Okay, let's see this. All right, Joan of Arc is gonna keep hunting. Uh, let's consecrate another building. Are they all consecrated? Yep. Now we can do that too. Oh, nice. So you can get your landmarks too. That's really good. All right, so let's start uh, getting real crunk over here. You, dude, we're getting crunk as hell. They, they do call you the crunker. They do. Use the holy arrows. Oh, who would have thought Joan of Arc's legacy would be slaughtering peasants here? Oh, 
Odachi. <laughs> yeah, the Odachi gives you the two-handed. So I'm working on that upgrade. So a really simple upgrade for you is going to be. Um, oh wow, he's got a lot of spearmen. I think we can just overwhelm them straight up. Yeah. Sorry. Oh my God, I'm I'm getting Red's coming after me here. I might need to pull back. Um, Do you need assistance? <laughs> yeah, I this think is, this is Farva. Do you need assistance? I think you're a little far away to provide assistance, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Uh, then we can set up an archery range here and here. All the gold I hit you. <laughs> Shit. Red's attacking me. Uh, and I have, like, no defenses at the moment. I think I'm killing his ally, that's why. I might get two. I have, a, I have a bannerman. Hell yeah, dude. Let's go. Bannerman time. I might be dead here because uh, Red Red is coming after me. Okay. Uh, if you could attack Red somehow, that would be excellent. I will do what I can. Yeah, just do whatever you can. No stress, brother. Alright, I still have an army. I might be able to get back and stop him in time. But I really... I, I dunked on purple, like, super hard. Okay, uh... Okay, let's attack here. Okay, let's get you guys on the river. Okay, Red's trying to kill me, but so far I haven't taken too much damage. Hanging in there. Joan of Arc is returning to her people. Okay, let's garrison up. Yeah, see if you can go to Red's base. He's uh, uh, across the river from me here. Go, Joan of Arc! Call the riders to your side! Alright, Joan. We're calling the riders. Summon them. Oh, that's so cool. She can summon the riders. Alright, we're hanging in there. We're taking a lot of eco damage, though. Joan of Arc's doing great. Let's keep using her uh, holy arrows. Expects the surprise Samuda attack. Yeah, oh hell yeah, Pwn, get in there. Pwn's going for his find, base. Trying to find his eco. Yeah, just get into He's his eco. He's elusive e with it. Get into his eco line if you can. Alright. I have summons. Oh, he's got, he's got a big stone gate. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> he said no. See if you can find a way around. Oh, there. yellows come for me. <laughs> no. This is the end, brother. Alright, I think I can hold here. Maybe. Uh, can you send me some wood? Do you have wood by chance? Uh, how do I do that? Uh, you go to the top. I think there's like a resource resource exchange thing. Okay. Joan of Arc's getting some experience here, though. That's for damn sure. Okay. Ah, uh, purple's on his team, dude. Yeah, I'm getting 2v1 tier now. I'm gonna try my best to hold, but there's no guarantees. Uh, he just slaughtered so many villages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. It's not going great, admittedly. Okay, let's do this. Pull the villagers back. I think this could be the end for us, brother. The, the dreaded camel lancers are destroying me. Come on, Joan. My, my spearmen stand no chance. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. I think there's there's two of them on me now. I I am still intercepting all of his reinforcements. Good, good, brother. That's what I like to hear. That that's buying me time. My, my attack force is still here on on the offense. Atta boy, keep it up. Uh, Meanwhile, the city defense. Uh, I have survived. It, I think he left. I think he just left. Come on. Come on, Joan of Arc! Lead the Valiant Defense! Keep harassing, dude. I believe in you. Okay, let's build, 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 build. Go, go, go. Now's the time. If somebody else attacks him, there's gonna be a chance we could, like, stabilize, you know? 
Good. Look at Prof Pwn. Hell yeah, dude. Stopping him in his tracks. Because I, I messed up his ally pretty hard, so. Okay, my, my the seven or I are falling finally. <laughs> oh, I stabilized. He no he noticed I was uh, intercepting all his reinforcements, but okay, my attack horse is dead. You're back to being on your own. Hey, no, it was a, it was a good good enough situation, brother. Joan of Arc's going bananas, dude. I lost a lot of villagers though. So. <laughs> did you? Yeah, no worries. I, I sure did. It's okay, man. You you did great. You... Oh, his camels are back and they're pissed. Just to try and defend yourself now is, is all you can really do. Okay. Oh, yellow's attacking me too. No. Okay, we need to call in some riders here, dude. The riders of Rohan. Oh, it's a lot of Yari there, guys. I don't know if the French Knights are going to be able to do it. Okay, let's uh, drop that back in there. Come on, Joan. Come on, Joan. Mongo's giving me the biz. Is he? Uh, dodge him! So we, we have two teams against us right now, which is pretty hard, so don't feel bad. I, I have to mi I have to actually micro, this isn't good. Micro my villagers around. Okay, let's pull back. Oh, He's in the fourth age. Is he? I might be able to retreat across the map and like get some units to you and rebuild. No, I am I'm okay. No, 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 I'm I saying for uh, the, the sake of our team survival. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> this is uh, this is hard. Purple's going to come attack me. Oh, yeah, I just lost all my eco. Shit, yeah, purple purple came at me pretty hard here. Um, Eco's for the weak. Don't worry about it. Well, yeah, he, he attacked me over here. Okay. So we've held to an extent... Can you send resources? You can. Good. Oh, uh, how do I do that? No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Just, 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 sure? yeah, just protect yourself. Um, there will come a time, though, where I might be able to escape to you. I'm going to have to make a great exodus. And, um, yeah, do we have any religious characters left? No. I need food. Okay, so I am Joan of Arc is is heading out because this is uh this is a lost cause for sure. We're gonna we're gonna flee the scene unless somebody else intercepts and stops them. Uh, I can't survive the two v one. Maybe I can hold under the keep here. We'll try a little bit longer. All right, so I could try and flee to your base. Um, let's take that. What happens if my monk dude dies? How do I get a new one? Uh, can you, uh, your monk, you could just build another one. Can you send me some gold, uh, wood right now? So go to the top right, click on the uh, banner. Okay. And send me, uh, just send me some, some resources. I have to have a market. You don't have a market? Okay. I do not have a market. It was not in the plan. No worries, no worries. Let me build a market. Yeah, see if you can do that. Look at him trying to snipe Joan of Arc. How dare they, dude. She will live. Okay. Let's do this. Let's go to the north. I need to get a villager away if I can. Okay. Come on, Joan. Use the restoration. I, I apparently cannot build a monk out of the floating gate. Oh, uh, you don't. It, you need to build a separate building for it. That just gives you the Shinto religion. Uh, so build a market and send me some food if you can. Food? Yeah. F or, excuse me, wood. Like, as much wood as you can possibly spare, because... Okay. All right. Let's do this. Do that. You go here. Okay, so I've officially fallen. I got 2v1 pretty hard. 
We held for a while, um, but yeah, send me that wood. Excellent. You should have over a thousand. Yeah. Excellent, brother. All right, so this is where we have to Helms Deep. So I need you to gather as much stone as you possibly can and start building keeps in your base everywhere. Okay. Excellent. All right. How much food are you sitting on right now? Uh, 861. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need you to send me uh, stone and... Um, okay, so let's get this. We've tried to hold. How do I build it? I'm dead. Good luck. Spare poor pwn. He's learning. <laughs> oh, I have, to, I have to be tier 4 for that. For what? To send me resources? To, no, to build a keep. Oh, you're Japan. That's right. Japan usually can build them. Totally. You got 2v1. Alright. So, we're gonna head to the south. I'm trying to get, like, a secret agent villager to you right now. This is, this is like, the most important quest possible. So, I have to focus... Uh, this is like Pwn's second or third game ever in multiplayer. This is my third game. Third game, yeah. So we need to play Possum and let them think I'm fully dead. And and be like Palpatine in the friggin' Star Wars. Okay, I need 350 stone if you can get that. Oh no, a keep! Curses. Okay, I have more villagers. There's 400 stone sent to you. Perfect, brother, perfect. Okay, and then you guys come up here. All right, boys. All right, we're back. Yeah, he's only Pwn's naturally pretty good at most like RTS games in general. This is like, so um, get a Shinto uh, priest out of your church. Ah, yes, my church. I definitely have one of those monastery. Yeah, and then you, <laughs> you want to grab those little gift baskets under your floating gate and put them in your um. Oh no, shit, okay, this isn't good. Uh... Do it, so I built, I just build a Shinto shrine now? That's my religious building, it says? Yes. Okay. Put that over here. Unless they're stream sniping, they shouldn't find all my little rat spaces. Uh, you got here pretty quick, but I guess it is a pretty obvious spot. Okay, let's go down here. Uh, he's calling you a liar. You have to counter his lies by saying he's lying. I know, I know. This is, works every time. So this is basically my last worker. If I can't get it out, then I'm fully out of the game. So this is this is all hands de on deck here. We see some archers here. I mean, I could make a fishing economy of sorts, but that's not going to give me any villagers. Oh God! We got our ally Pwn. So if I if I die here, probably we just coach him. Like I can just exclu exclusively watch him. Okay, what shot me here? A keep? Okay. Oh man, this is like such a treacherous land, dude. Okay. Oh, Joan of Arc just like respawns in my base periodically. Oh, that's pretty funny. Uh, Castle of the Crow or the Gunsmith thingy? The Gunsmith thingy. God, it's giving me anxiety every time I hear those attack notifications. Okay, so we need to like hug this wall here. Oh, please don't be a man tower. Okay. Oh, God. Please, please. Pwn, can you move your samurai to escort my villager in the north? Uh, I, I could certainly try. Yeah, just come. You see it running? It's, it's uh, no. Where are you? Okay. I don't see it. No, no, no. You're good. It's at your base already. Uh, I'm good. Oh. I just need to you. Attack no, 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 no. <laughs> All right. I, I need you to do something very important here. <laughs> Destroy all my stuff and give you all my resources? No, 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 no. I need you to get your entire army to come protect me building a town center here, okay? Okay, where are you, where are you building? Just south of your gate. As a matter of fact, wall off your entire empire. I want you to start building walls all along the... Uh... So grab some villagers and just wall everything. Make like, uh, like a dome. Okay. And leave your army to protect my villager here. 
Okay, so I could get some fishing, obviously. I need to get this up. <laughs> so, yeah, get your villagers and do walls on the west side. If somebody were to appear and kill this now, I would be very shocked. That would totally be a stream snipe, probably. <laughs> this is, like, too... There it, uh... It's where the camels come from. They come from the west. Move, move it ahead of me. Like, uh, on the other side of the town center and screen. Yeah, there you go. Uh, what are your resources sitting at right now? 1,455, 2,800, 3,000... Oh god, there's the camels! Oh god! No, 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 just... God, if he comes down here, dude, oh my god. Just hopefully... Uh, they're, they're, they're springled, they're just... They're, they're passing by. <laughs> they're passing by. I think they don't know you're new. Holy shit. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, don't mind me. What are they doing? Oh, please don't come down here, bro. Please. No. No, dude. God, this is so stressful. Okay. Yeah, he just walks to your base to kill Orange. Oh, that's funny. Okay, brother. Yeah, don't attack him. Don't. Whatever you do, don't antagonize him, man. I try not to bring him. Yeah, this is. So, uh, also at your bases, yeah, you've been upgrading your units, which is good. Um, do you have your Imperial Age landmark coming? Uh, yes. Oh, go stop him. He's killing your workers with some camels. Go stop him. Take your army. It's bad. It's important. He's not going to come down here, I don't think. And reproduce those villagers. You always want to be pumping bills if you're not already doing that. Everybody hide! Okay. Do you have any more stone by chance? Yes. Uh, send it my way when you're done. Just like 350 of it. Or, yeah. Thank you. And keep grabbing your gifts with your priest and putting them in your forges. And town centers is probably good too. Oh god, dude. Okay. Yes! Pono, I have a town center again! Welcome welcome back, Captain. Welcome back to the land of the living. I have a shit ton of gold too. How much food do you have? 2,732. You just hold on to that, yeah, for now. I can build the red palace in your base. I don't remember where I was building my fourth landmark. Oh, here it is. Yeah, it's done. Oh, yeah, it's done. I think Joan of Arc just keeps... Oh, Joan of Arc's back! She's free! She can lead the people of Japan now. <laughs> yeah, she's coming here. <laughs> look, look, Joan of Arc's hunting the bills. Oh, God. Be free, Joan! I don't have any way to get her. Is there any way to cross this river? It's pretty troll that she spawns back at the base. Uh-oh. I think Nanu's listening in. Why is that? Because he just responded. About what? Joan respawning. Oh, because they're killing her. Oh, look at my riders. Yes. Well, Joan, you'll be back someday. Snipe! <laughs> it's pretty fun having a hero character, I'm not gonna lie. Dude, Joan of Arc's badass. Oh, another snipe! Let's go, baby! Okay. Oh, she's just owning all these guys chasing her. Is Green still alive, Dr. Silly Willy? Don't be silly. Pwn, we have to we have to use your, your no, new- Oh no, the camels! <laughs> Gotta consecrate on the TC, hell yeah. I don't know if he's coming for me or if he's just trying to be peaceful, but they, they look like they're angry. <laughs> oh, my villagers, they just came back out to work. They, I just told them everything was safe outside and I lied. You, you've betrayed their trust for the last time. They need to, the rest of the map needs to kill the north. Yellow, you need, I'm not dead. 
You need to kill uh, North. They are free trading. Yellow, leave they Pone alone. <laughs> he, he, he thought I would be uh, an easy, easy target. Picking. Okay. Hey, he, and he might be right, but. <coughs> they need to stop attacking you. They need Everyone needs to turn against the North. The North is the strongest, for sure. The North remembers. They do, dude. Uh huh. We getting wrecked, sorry. Probably got, we're in danger. Got some hand cannon ears now? Hell yeah. Uh, nah. Dude, I got guys with guns. Have you, you ever. I don't know if you've ever seen that tech in this game. You fanned it, you fanned it off that attack like a champ, dude. Hell yeah. Now it's time to let my workers be free. Whoop. Time to be free! <laughs> oh, Joan of Arc sniping all the traitors is so troll. <laughs> oh, man. She just pops out of the bushes and snipes a traitor. Yeah! <laughs> My, my, I'm not gonna lie, turn my eco's looking pretty haggard these days. <laughs> <laughs> the Joan of Arc's gonna die so hard here. Oh no, I'm on the last bit of my gold there. I need to just make more forges to put these shrine thingies at, right? Um, the secret tag? yes, yeah, just keep doing that, yes. Oh god! The cataphracts are hunting Joan of Arc! <laughs> oh my god, bro. How are they catching? Oh, they did the charge. Look, they, he's... He... <laughs> this is so funny, dude. I wish you could see this, man, what's happening here. It's just the jankiest shit ever. Where are you fighting at? Way up north? Yeah, Joan of Arc's just riding circles and... Oh, I see it. Yeah. Just... You got the gun? No, uh, gains valorous. She's so <laughs> <laughs> This is great, dude. I'm, I'm kind of glad this game has taken the turn it took, so I get to do this. So at her final form, um, Field Commander, seven uh -oh. of her chosen. You've angered the Silly Willy. <laughs> Wait, Silly silly is uh, Silly's not on their team, though. Uh, he says that she will be dead soon enough. Wait, Silly, you're not on their team. <laughs> silly! Silly! Don't do it! I know, I thought silly I thought he was with us. Equips a mighty hand cannon. Okay. Uh seven of her chosen companions. Grant strength to the heavens, which empowers a single unit. Greatly okay, What's the difference between a hand cannon here and a deployed hand cannon here? Um a deployed hand cannon here? Oh, that means you just get it instantly for free if you deploy it. Guys, I get for free? Yeah, that's from that landmark. Should yeah. So sh should I be getting the, the bigger stuff then? Like, bombards or... Yeah, you get some bombards. Yeah, throw them in there. <laughs> Joan of Arc is so troll here, dude. Oh, I love this so much. We're gonna, we're gonna summon some companions here. <laughs> it's hunting season. That's right! Alright, Pwn, we just need to survive and grow powerful. So just focus on getting all of your upgrades, uh, making more villagers. This is this is how Smeagol plays, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> uh... When can I summon the cannon? Population cap is reached. Okay, so as soon as I get this. We're gonna get the market, don't worry. Okay, houses are coming up, so now we can summon the companions. Uh, which is R. Three riders and a cannon, okay. We're gonna go see what's going on here. That's where the market is, obviously. <laughs> Not today! Not today, baby! <laughs> yes! Yes, Joan of Arc. Keep the keep the gorilla. <laughs> Look how mad he is. <laughs> oh my god, dude. This is the best. So does your Joan just respawn up in the north? Yeah, unfortunately it's at my old base. <laughs> she's she's so troll, bro. 
Dude, if they wall in your old base, that would be hilarious. They already did that, so if she dies again. Oh, oh no. I'm trying to build, like, someone on the river to... To, uh... But she's faster than all of them, so... Rolling. Rolling on the river. I, some, Joan of Arc is literally probably doing more to stop these guys than, like, the entire rest of the map. And she heals, too, so it's like... Oh, the moves! Dude, she's she's riding. Uh huh, and uh huh. Well, I'm gonna be able to summon another cannon again soon. Guys, top. Oh, oh, Joan of Arc, take the wheels. Jesus, take the wheel. No trade for you. <laughs> Did you... oh, what anime am I watching? <laughs> Dude, they're probably so annoyed right now. <laughs> All top. Wait, I went to put that wall up. Oh no, up the archers are gonna get her. I went to put that wall up earlier and Orange already walled us in. Okay, the top is just straight raid bossing, bro. We need to deal with them. Oh, oh. Should we be attacking Orange? No. We need to. No. Well, whose team is Orange on? I, I don't know. But he, he, he's, he's got villagers over here stealing trees and... Yeah, it's okay. Those right. are his walls right here, we not have, mine. We have to focus our resources more. Um, okay, so I can go... I'm going to build a mighty landmark to protect our empire's bone. That should work just fine. The red palace is being built in the back here. I have to build it deep because if it dies, I'm dead. Or I, Actually, that's not true. I can build this up front because, yeah, we share landmarks. All right. So let's... Oh, you, you destroyed your build. I was like, what is happening? I'm building a defensive landmark to help protect us. It's it's probably one of the best landmarks in the game in terms of defensive capabilities. We're just going to be one of those mouth breathers who only makes French knights from now on. Uh, Joan will respawn eventually. It's going to take a while. Even if she's trapped in there, she can build cannons. Do we make it there? Looks like we didn't. Oh, that's too bad. Joan of Arc needs an escape ship so she can come join. Man, that's a fun character, though. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, so just keep dropping your gifts off in the forges and get that infinite gold, basically. This entire empire rebuilt from one village. <laughs> Okay. 44 minute Imperial rush. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's the plays. The fast imp strat. Thankfully, the guild hall got me quite a bit of resources, so. So if they try and attack us now, this, uh, this landmark will protect you, or help, at least. We rise from the ashes, Pwn! Oh, Joan of Arc is free, but I think she's been walled in, but you know the funny part about that is. Is I didn't hear no bell. She can she can call a cannon out. <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> look 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 at look at the cage where they they have have the the character. Look, she's gonna be free again because she can summon <laughs> she can summon a a cannon. You can shut down that trade. I will. <laughs> Can you just leave? <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you go with her. No, you guys are getting this the rest of the game, bro. Joan of Arc is, is fighting the hard fight here. Alright. So, we're online here. Uh, let's go ahead and get the Royal Bloodlines. All right, Joan of Arc's free again. 
<laughs> Nobody expected the cannon summon from Joan of Arc. <laughs> I am in your trade now. <laughs> They're back. This is where Joan flees to the shoreline and tries to get away. Alright, um... So I need to find some source of gold. Oh, Daniel destroyed the Dark Lord. This is definitely not uh, a game Pwn and I are in great shape in. How much gold are you sitting on right now, by the way? 2,000. Okay. We need to kill red and purple, obviously. They're the... Everyone needs to kill them, the whole lobby. I stopped I their have trade. One at, how, how do I get more bannermen? Uh, more bannermen? So, uh, upgrade more town centers. The more oh, town okay. centers, and, uh, and upgrade your main one into a shogunate castle, too. You want to you wanna do, have done that earlier, actually. Don't know if I'm going to have stone for that. Oh, she, she escapes! She, is there a way for me to get passive stone, or is it only the gold? Only gold, yeah. Oh, but when j j when the Japanese culture mines, um, when they yeah, there I I ain't near no gold to mine. I know we're. Oh wait, there's a stone. There's a stone thing right over there. We can look at that. We can trade with one another if we can get a market like somewhere far away. Dude, Joan of Arc's going bananas here. Wow, look at this. Huh. Um, can you send me some more uh, gold, like a thousand, if you have extra? Yeah. Oh, and Joan of Arc can take sacred sites too. That's so cool. Hey, what, what do you want, a thousand gold? Yeah, just to upgrade my horsemen to elite so I can start making a harass army for us. Thank you, Doug. All right, I'm grabbing one sacred site. Um, we're back in it, brother. You say that like we were ever out of it. It's true. Got us a sacred site. We've been reborn from the ashes of a fallen empire. The passive gold begins. Yeah, just just keep upgrading your manners too. You want to get a shogunate castle? Hell yeah, dude. I, 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 I need stone. Okay, so let's get this to elite. I'm gonna start making some horsemen. He needs stone, yeah, I know. Well, the good thing is, yeah. If you can find some gold somehow. I, f I found some stone. I am mining it to my heart's content. Alright, got two sacred sites, baby. We're back in it. God, you know what? Like, for us strategically, it makes sense to kill one of our neighbors to establish trade. It turned. You have anchored the. <laughs> Are you serious? I have. I have Joan. <laughs> They're saying to get me. <laughs> oh, it's awful, dude. All right. Oh yeah, we should be consecrating buildings. That's right. So Joan is going to start consecrating. So let's do this. Okay, Joan has consecrated these buildings. Uh, Got to remember to do that. You ready for the Joan of Arc coastal raid? Look, phone. Do you see it? Uh, yes. Look, watch. Ha ha ha! How troll is that? Viva la France! Dude, Joan of Arc's going hard. Now she's the rat game you've always wanted. This is the this is my rat power fantasy, yes. <laughs> Alright. Looking good. Let's go over here. <clears throat> yeah, kill the TC. Someone's dying on bot. It's probably red killing them. Orange and teal. We need to secure. 
We need to secure the middle somehow if we can. I, you want me to march that way? Uh, one, let me get a full army of like horsemen and then yeah, we can try something really haggard like that. This is basically all I'm going to be able to make, so... Alright, so archer ranges, yes. Yes. Okay. Let's go uh, push everything out of the middle. Oh, will you roll with me soon? Yeah, I, I marching up there as we We just, uh... Yeah, I want to explain to them that I'm not trying to start war with these guys, but we just need a path to the middle. Wondrous inspiration! Oh, the Order of the Dragon's coming. Uh-oh, that's a big army. Okay. Back, 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 back. Oh, God. We're just trying to get to red. Red. They shall meet Japanese steel. <laughs> Look at the, the Shogun's army. We need mid here. All right. Okay. Uh, I need to get a market so I can start trading. Oh yeah, I have just I have just enough stone to get my castle. Oh hell yeah, we would actually oh. be we would actually be somewhat difficult to kill. You're going to win. All right, let's let's push up together. I try. Okay. There's a gilded army here. These like these this orange army. They're gonna mess us up. But I need I need the fury of Japan's artillery here. Bring it. Let's go. Here comes the thunder. I got an achievement for making the to the Damio castle. Hell yeah, dude. We rise from the ashes. <laughs> they have angered Japan. The sleeping giant has awakened. <laughs> Look at them flee. Okay, so this is pretty big, Pone, because we can now set up trade up by the river and um oh dude we got to get that stone you see it yeah keep protect your artillery whatever you do i'm gonna clear these guys out okay joan of arc massacring the villagers yeah clear out that keep if you can what keep uh to the oh, east over here. use your bombards yeah oh we will become the tyrants of the south Okay, one person's dead. Okay, one team is fully gone. Okay, orange and uh, yellow. Let's ally against north. Okay. Okay, Pwn, build a market on the furthest south side of your base, yeah? Okay. As far south as you can possibly go. I'm going to show you how trade works. Okay, we actually got the middle legitimately. That's pretty sweet. Um, Joan of Arc's gonna take the sacred site. Well, far south of my base is you. <laughs> I can get and sneak a spot. Over. Yeah, yeah, like sneak even behind those walls that they tried to wall you in with. Okay, perfect. So, where are you making the market? Um, how do I ping? <laughs> They're like, how could you leave Pwn and Turin alone? I'm like, it's, it's literally his like, first multiplayer game. And they didn't leave us alone. They massacred me, dude. Okay, where's your market, by the way? Holy shit, that's a lot of, that's a lot of camels. You're going to mess up my horsemen. Oh god, the camels are coming, dude. Oh god. <laughs> Flee! I need Japan's Re aid! Readjust! <laughs> oh god, dude! Oh my god, it's a horde! They will meet Japanese steel! I'm All gonna right. keep producing units. Uh. Okay. They might just be passing by. Let's see if they're passing by. No, no, they're coming in your base. I can have okay. six banner. I need your uh, help in the base. 
Yeah, I, I'm right here. Yeah, no, no, no. They're they're around the side. Yeah, just. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I have the red keep here, so I'm probably gonna mess them up with that. They're gonna get owned. Oh, the red keep is just doing work. Come on, Joan of Arc. Valorous inspiration. Rally the troops. Call the riders. My guys are getting slow. No, you're doing great. <laughs> the Golden Order slaughtering. <laughs> the show is already can't hold. Just keep fighting, dude. You're doing good. I'm holding back the uh, the Camel Master. And then they're going to die uh, up my landmark. They don't have enough siege to kill it. But the problem is, uh, guys, north. Why are they leaving the north alone? Why? It's Shogun Army. Look dead. at them. Free trade. <laughs> We're going to hold them back, though. It's fine. Joan of Arc defended. Why this? So haggard. <laughs> Why would they attack us, dude? There's a there's two guys with free trade in the north. We need four to win. Yeah, we we actually successfully defended that, brother. Rebuild the great armies of the shogunate. They they come. Okay, perfect. So you guys go back to the farms here. Um, all right. So yeah, no no trade is gonna happen. Is this potato game assessment? <laughs> I got it. I got a politic. Okay, so we need more stables now. Let's do this. And uh, Joan of Arc needs to consecrate. Consecrate. And consecrate. What is this free unit ship? This thing's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 you get a charge like every so often. You get a oh no, that's us! We're actually probably not even the weakest. We could probably win a war versus the other two, ironically. Maybe. It's hard to say. <laughs> Are these our farms? The anticipation is killing. Okay, so yeah, I still have the guys in the red keep. You just keep rebuilding the army of Japan in, in defense. I'm going to go do some raiding across the river. One, two, delete these. And do this. Okay. Why this? Okay, let's get in the towers here. Uh oh, there's some orange lurking over there. I see that. I don't know why they're attacking us. Like, the North is just going to wonder and win. They won't wonder so long as the might of J the Shogunate's armies are still around. How much, how, what are your resources at? Uh, uh, I have 11,000 food, 12,000 wood, 2,000 gold, and 116 stone. Could be worse, could be worse. Alright, if these Spring Alts are just going to be sacrificed to the gods, then so be it. Certainly not the Lord of Stone. Uh, I need the Shogun's army probably here. We ride. I killed all their spring alts. We need to expand out from our rat cage if we want any chances. Rat cage. <laughs> the spider. The spider ate all my rage. <laughs> Let's kill uh, kill the camel army. So come north with me. All right. Yeah, now they're getting it. Are you being honest? Or will you backstab? Trying to trying to politic this here. Okay, I'm going to go get the sacred sites. Oh, yeah. All right, back 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 back. Okay, north. No. Uh there's we a bad orange tech right there. Where? Uh, right beside all your eco or your buildings. Orange, move that army. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. All right, cool. So we need to clear out the middle. Hey, come north. I need help killing this purple army. Okay, he went wonder uh, in the north, so we got to kill that. Actually, oh wait, we can secure sacreds. Oh yeah, come secure sacreds with me. Uh, do you have any stone? No. Okay, no worries. 
Stone is a thing of the past. K Japan looks for gold now. It's true. All right, so we need to grab all the sacreds, dude. Because we can win on sacreds. And Joan of Arc can capture them, too. So she can just methodically go around and capture all these. So I need you to start massing your armies um, by the sacred sites in the north. And we just need to secure, uh, secure those. Good. All right, Joan of Arc, let's get this. Okay, so let's do this. Build a gatehouse here. Are we destroying all the, all the infrastructure? Yes. Up here? Yeah, clear oh. them off. Clear them off. All right, so we just go for a sacred. Uh, send me uh, maybe 800 gold if you can. Thank you, brother. It's going to give me my spears upgraded so I can make all the colors of the... Uh, the... All right, all right. So let's force them to delete, guys. Because if I can get all the sacreds, then, then, uh, then we're good. So, Pwn, we need to, like, hold these objectives, like, like for dear life. Where's the other ones? Sacred. Oh, no, keep your army up north on that sacred site. Uh, they're, they're all right next to each other right here. Yeah, I was just right here. No, we need to be, like, right on top of uh, the... So you guard the one to the west, and I'll guard this one. Oh, okay. Let's see here. Yeah. Because then we are going to beat their timer, and if we get it, we would technically win, which would be really funny. Um, well deserved. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know, to each their own, man. <laughs> okay, so let's grab you workers. Have you come up here? So if we hold this, then and they can't stop us, move your army up to the coast. We can't let boats land near us. All right, um, looks like there's some infrastructure over that way that I should take down. Yeah, don't let any boats land, whatever you do. And can you build a, a Japanese keep over here by chance? Nope. Okay, no worries. Should I build some traders and send them into that? Yes. Place? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. See, look at that, man. You're learning quickly. Oh, they're building over here. Get your army over this direction. Shit. Oh, they're full armies here already. All right, we're going to have to hold here. This is going to be ugly. Guys, stop him. Okay, we need to get ready to defend here, dude. The sacred site down in the bottom, we need to fight on that. Wait, you're one that's all walled? Yeah, but, yeah, the one that's all walled. I need you to get over here. Quick, 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 quick. Ah, this isn't going to go well. They have a good quality army here. Stop them here. All right, get the last samurai in. It's a bit of a pit fight, but we're doing okay. Um, get those cannons activated too, if you can. Okay, not going. It's not going bad. Driving back. Driving back. Hey, oh yes, order. Drive them back. Hey, we got stuff coming from the north. You see those uh, those rams? Yeah, I'm pulling some bills to deal with that. Okay, that one's a little bit undefended at the moment, which is janky as hell. Good, 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 good job, good job. Okay, keep the defense. Someone's uh, decapping on the other side, shit. Okay. Oh, they just ran over it. Thankfully, they weren't watching. Okay, get those guys off the western uh, objective. You see him? On the eastern objective, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, kill him. No, no, why? Stop attacking. Okay, we got pressure on the north, too. Orange, stop them, not us. Okay. So, let's set up some towers here. Get some cannon emplacements. We need to rewall this shit, too. If we can. Is there any wood nearby? Okay, they're reforming ranks. So, we're going to have to defend here in a second. Purple's coming with some troopers. Might be able to stop him here. Hey, I need help on the east side if you have any uh, free stuff. Uh, yep. 
Okay. Rams can't stop Sacreds anymore. That's nice. The Valorous Inspiration. All right. They're decapping the one in the south, it looks like. It's going to be hard. Uh, they're decapping that bottom one pretty uh, aggressively. Yes. I, and I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them off. Move on to the objective. Move on to the objective. Let's head down here. Ah, uh, Joan of Arc's going to get mowed down. Damn. She did good. She had a run. But the, I don't know if the other players are helping us. I don't know if they are. We're pretty close to holding this, though. Okay, so those guys are holding position. Good job, good job. You guys need to help us. I don't know if they are, but I'm just going to remind them. Uh, east side, east side, east side. Cannons going to get flanked here. All right, good job. Keep just keep macroing units out, man. Just that's all all you got to do. Shit, what? I'm trying. You're doing really good. You're doing very good, dude. I don't think people would believe that this was legit your third game. But they're so rich. It helps having all this infinite gold. Yeah, yeah, Japan's pretty good for that. The problem is they're 15 seconds away from catching us on the timer. Which means... Every time, um, every time they get Yunt on it, stalls it. Yeah, it stalls it, correct. If the other players can help us, then maybe. Maybe we'll get it. Alright, I'm coming up here. Okay, got those cannons facing this way. You guys are that way. Let's get you guys to come up. All right. Oh, they're coming on the south side one. No, some uh, some north. The Rams don't have capture weight, so just you can ignore them. They're splitting still. Yeah, I see. Unfortunately, I think they're going to get it because it's pretty close for them. Yeah, they're really close to passing us here. This is like our only chance. If we if they pass us, it's essentially GG. Okay, they have no cap weight there now. Okay. They passed us. Did they? No, it's equal. Oh. But yeah, well. they're gonna pass us. <laughs> it's a good attempt. GG props. Head north. All right. So now we need to scheme some other stuff. I guess we should try and push off this uh, base over here, right? Yeah, yeah, but we got to go north and get that wonder. If we had united earlier, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Just watch Joan of Arc spawn in and deal with the... And kill it, right? Okay, so uh, you might want to build some docks in the river. We still have um, six minutes left. So start building some docks in the river, and then um, we're going to need transport ships. Uh, not dead, but weaker. Alright, so building transport ships. Um, let's cancel a lot of these guys. Joan of Arc, unfortunately, is going to be spawning in the north in a minute. But that's fine, that's actually not bad. She's going to be in position to help. Okay, building some transport ships. We're going to need to get across the river. Uh, it ain't going to be easy, brother. Joan of Arc will spawn up there. All right, let's, uh, let's load up. Okay, let's shuttle units, shuttle units, shuttle units. It's a fat orange raid coming. Drop these guys. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they, at this point, just let them decap it. 
We need to be going north to stop the sacred site, so. Alright. Okay, load up, load up, load up. Get you guys here. Make some more vills to Lumberjack. Joan returns to the battlefield. Uh oh, is she being shot by cannons? I think so. Okay, let's bombard that wall down. How are we looking? Alright. Oh wow, she does a lot of siege damage. Holy shit. I never noticed that. If only she should, could shoot walls. Damn. Okay, the wall is like very low. So she'll, she'll have to get out of there another way. Alright, let's intercept this army. Drop you. Joan's gonna chill while that goes on cooldown here. It's gonna be very tough to land here. Let's go this way, land a little bit further there. Joan of Arc will have her bombard in a couple minutes. Yeah, probably GG. They've been, so basically after they 2v1 me, they had the entire top uh, to themselves, which means they were allowed to like do free trade and everything. Okay, let's round to the north. Okay, let's run over here into the trees. Do a little bit of this. We've got a cannon bombarding. We'll take it. Oh, you shoot that army with your artillery before it dies. Your army's about to get steamrolled. Just fire. Fire everything, Bone! By the way, you're muted. I don't know if you're trying to talk or anything. No, no. Just try. Trying to macro and micro. You're doing good. You're doing really good, man. All right, so we got some of these in the trees. We have to keep pushing because there's a chance our allies would be able to, like, you know, make some way head headway. Um, any reason to make knights? Not really. Arbs are good, and um, oh, they sank! They sank my transport ship and my army. Yeah, Ugh. yeah, it's it's the pain. Okay, so we got some Ramstein coming here. Joan of Arc will have her bombard soon. She'll be free. Will there be another game after this? Oh yeah, yeah, we can do another one. It's up to you. Do you want to play another game or would you rather watch? Uh, I'll watch the next one. Sounds no. good. I, I, I don't want to like... Uh, oh, you're fine, dude. I don't I don't care. I know there's other people that really want to play, so... Oh, dude. I, I'm fine with sharing the love. I can join you other times. Whatever you want to do, man. Don't stress it. Okay. Joan of Arc will get the wonder on her own. How much... So she does 200 damage for his buildings. Wow, that's pretty substantial, actually. We need probably some warships to deal with that stuff. Yeah, those are... I'm building one. Yeah, keep it keep it at range, though, because those things... Uh... You can use your bombards and shoot them from across the river. Also working on that. Okay. Although they keep wanting to re-rally elsewhere. Let's get in here. Then you guys jump here. Unfortunately, they got taken out. Let's run this way. Go shut down some trade. Killed my duck. I know. It's looking pretty bleak for us. Oh! Dude. <laughs> <laughs> that worship just deleted. They, they want more of you, dude. The, the chat wants to see more of you in action. So if you're down. You want more of me? Yeah. Uh, no pressure if you don't want to, though, man. No, uh, I'll, I'm, I'm probably going to watch. I appreciate it, guys. But... Uh, I know that there are a lot of people that probably still want to hop in turns games as well. Sounds good. Dude, what, what, what are these yellow rams doing? He's just destroying our docks and shit. Why? <laughs> Alright. He has betrayed Japan for the last time! He truly has. In honor of my ancestors! Alright, here we go, baby. The Scourge of the North is free once again! Dude, look at Joan of Arc valiantly charging the wonder. I'm, I'm only alive because the great Mongo deemed that I stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> Let it be known. <laughs> yeah. Dude. That was that was a fun game, though. You did really well, man. You mustered good armies, and for only being your second or third game, that was, that was really good, dude.
Yeah, you gotta you gotta play more. Did you have fun with it? Yeah, I had fun. Yeah, you did. Good, good. Yeah, it was those are some wild ass games. Um, the Shogun has a fooling. Yeah, so they basically just killed me, and then they got the North all to themselves, and the bottom was just scrapping and fighting wildly instead of ganging up on them earlier. Yeah, his base was pretty much unimpeded there. You blue ball us with one game. Uh, Kern's got a stream where you can see my other game, <laughs> my my uh, solo FFA. Yeah, somewhere I... somewhere in his stream list. We're gonna do a casted game right now, by the way, too. Um, yeah, this isn't the last time you'll see me. Just just today. Yes, be... uh, I'm off work tomorrow, and I imagine you're streaming tomorrow. Every day, dude. We're streaming every day this yeah. week. Yeah. See, I I'll be back tomorrow. Hell yeah, man. It'll be fun. GGs, dude. You did really good. GGs. Seriously, if we had spawned close together. Like, side by side, I think we could have had some really good success that how, game. How does one leave the game? What the hell? Are you just trapped? I don't know how to get out of here. Oh, man. Yeah, you uh, do, just force quit. <laughs> or hit escape. There's I, what's the secret? Yeah, if you hit escape, it pops up to make a random resume, player list, tech trees, <laughs> settings. You, you might have some sort of a bug or something. Oh, I'm trapped in here forever. I know. It's the end for you, dude. It's the end. <laughs> GG's man, hit me up when you want to play again. We should definitely do it. Yeah, I'll play tomorrow. Hell yeah, dude. We'll 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 do we'll open tomorrow with another two v two v two. Oh, you know what? Maybe tomorrow I'll I'll host a uh, tournament, like a like a two v two v two tournament or something, and we could just go get wrecked. Or we could do like a three one and get Gunhound and have the ultimate Boomer Alliance. Oh, that could be fun. We'll figure what, it out. Whatever you want to do, I I will be there. All right, brother. Sounds good. GG's man. All right, GG's. See ya. That was that was pretty haggard. That was basically suffering. I got away with one villager, uh, and yeah, <laughs> and that was that. All right, let me see here. Um, let's see. So he messaged me earlier. So Ventus was the first one to message me here. Um, sure, you can host. You can host. Uh, eight player. Haywire. Please confirm. So he was the first one to message me there, so, um, yeah. All right, cool. Good luck, have fun. So Ventus is gonna host Haywire Map. We're doing the, there's a new map, guys, that's like a, like a Thunderdome, and it's super crazy, so we're gonna do that. By the way, we had some donations during uh, the game. Daniel, thank you so much, and uh, Nguyen, One Villager Escape, thank you guys so much for your support, I really appreciate it. And DG, thanks so much for the content. Hey, I'm sorry to hear about your cat, man. Yeah, yeah, that's that's tough. I, I've been through that with uh, pets before. It's not fun. So hey, we got you, man. And we're gonna we're gonna have another really fun match here. Also, they added ranked back in, so um, we'll do some ranked streams too. Super excited. We're doing Haywire, which is just like an absolute meme map. It's apparently like the Thunderdome on steroids, is what I've been told. Dude, I'm actually really impressed with Pone. He did really good. Like I've. And I'll, I'll do some coaching with him off stream too. I'll I'll, tr I'll train him up. He he did really good, honestly. He had good armies. Like th the biggest thing he was having issues with was just not knowing what things were on the new Civ, which is really just like anyone would have that problem. He uh his, he did good. He did really good. Sorry to hear that, GG. We're here for you, man. Let's find our boy Ventus and see. Um, hopefully he has a spectator slot. Spec slot. All right, and let's uh, go to the top. Cool and cool. Hey, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. We're gonna do some tournaments this week too. All of the Olive Garden did good in the first game. Actually, we really um, in game one we got in a really long battle with um, one person, and we were definitely doing good. But unfortunately, several players DC'd, and someone on the other side just got free map wide trade and just basically karate chopped us. Um, not free. He certainly had to kill at least one person, but um, he was, he ran away with it. Um, but Olive Garden felt good. They, Japan feels stronger in FFA for sure. Although the Olive Garden can definitely put big pressure on Japan early, like the mercenary pressure. And even without gold, the Byzantines can fight very well because mercs cost olive oil, which you get from your farms. So they they kind of in some ways feel like English. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, they feel good though. The Byzantines feel good. All right, so let's find uh, Ventus here. God, it's getting it's getting harder to dig through the friends list. Hopefully they add like a search feature. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Come on, okay. 
it alphabetical? I don't think it even is. Friends, friends, friends. Should be towards the top. Obviously just missed it. Here he is. All right. Thank you guys for joining today, by the way. Uh, the samurai are not squishy. They're, they're quite the op opposite, you know. All right. So spawning in this game, we got Ventus on the Ayubids, uh, Kirk on the Order of the Dragon, Sir Arthur of Itis on the Order of the Dragon, Nacho on the Holy Roman Empire. Wow. What is this? We have an English player in there, two Siberias going back to the old school and three Japanese players as well. So obviously the new DLC came out. We're going to be seeing mostly new stuff. And you know, as far as that goes, very. Um, we basically have three Holy Romans in this game with two Order of the Dragons. Um, I'm curious to see how they do. My experience has been that Order of the Dragons and FFA certainly are. It's it's if you can go two TC adequately defend yourself, grab like one or two relics. You can. I feel steamroll pretty hard in Castle or early Imp, like one player. But defending multiple fronts with them is very hard because their units are um, pretty elite. So, all right, guys, let's break it down. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, wow, this is like a Thunderdome, but oh, wait. So this is pretty different. Check this out. You got you got like more space to expand on the outside. Your, your main TC starts inside, but there's plenty of space to spawn. This is actually a really cool map. I like this one. Like you can totally go make a little corner empire. There's resources and all sorts of stuff. So spawning in on the Northwest side of the map, it's gonna be Sir Arthur. And to the east of him, of course, he's playing the Order of the Dragon. To the east, it's gonna be Siberius on the English. To the east and south there, it is going to be Nacho Bear on the Holy Roman Empire. So taking it back to the OG Holy Romans, trying to show that the old civs got some bite, which I, I personally think they do. Um, you know, Holy Roman Empire is still super strong. English is super strong. Uh, my anecdotal opinion is that Ruses still feels like one of the top tier civs for sure. Not very much wood on this map, yes. So that is something that you got to watch out for. Down on the south side, we have <laughs> Wang Enormous. I love it. I love it so much playing Japan, which is pretty great. Of course, if you guys are newer to Japan, their houses do count as food drop-off sites. So what you typically want to do with Japan is build your house next to the berry bushes right away and build your forge next to the uh, gold vein. So, you know, kind of covers all your bases, which is nice. And then you have extra wood to do other things with because normally you have to build a house and then a mill. But with Japan, you only have to build the farmhouse, which is very, very nice. Down to the southwest, we do have uh, Eight Man. Eight Man is going to be on Japan going for the forge and the house uh, close-ish to the berry bushes. But again, it is a drop-off point, so I think players are making a slight mistake by not going for the uh, Berry Bush House. Over to the west side, we do have the Ivory Bard, and they are going to be on the Japanese as well. And uh, they did the correct placement with the farmhouse in the beginning. And to the northwest, it's going to be Kirk here with the Order of the Dragon. Yeah, this is going to be pretty crunk. This is going to be a ferocious battle. Um, early aggressors. Now, there's a couple strategies I like with... Um, Japan. I, I really like to go Kura Storehouse, and this is for 1v1, so it doesn't really apply to this situation, but I really like to go Kura Storehouse, which gives you progressive eco without having to invest in eco, and then you go double barracks and do a Ona Bugeisha rush. So those are the melee variants of the Ona, which you can get from your barracks at tier 2, and they're very fast and good at harassing eco. So you can go and harass with those while building up progressive eco and then pressing your way to castle age. On top of that, you can get an early uh, katana bannerman to buff them and make their damage at nine instead of eight, which is pretty decent for sure. Question from chat, are HRE men at arms actually stronger than Order of the Dragon? No, I mean, if you're looking at them just from a cost effectiveness standpoint, they do have some upgrades that are very good, like the mace and the uh, two-handed weapon, which the Order of the Dragon does not have. So in some ways, in terms of cost effectiveness, perhaps, but if we're talking about just head-to-head -head fighting, the Order of the Dragon one has twice the HP, so it'll simply win. The Order of the Dragon has better archers. I mean, everything is technically better um, if you just look at them one-to-one. -one. But they have uh, their launch necks are very good. So the Order of the Dragon launch necks get a halberd upgrade, which actually gives them a, a bleeding attack. So they do damage over time when they hit you. And then their archers are top tier too, because Order of the Dragon archers can get a uh, upgrade that gives them three ranged armor. So when they're trading with enemy archers, they just totally cackle. So. Do my eyes deceive me, or is there just one sacred site on the east side of the map? <laughs> I think there's just one, guys. I think there's just one. Check that out. Oh my god, yeah, there's literally one sacred site. I mean, I'm not... Oh, never mind, there's two. Okay. I think there's two. Am I crazy? We got one, we got two. And they're both kind of on the one of the, on the south central side, and the other one's going to be on the east side, but the poor western player's not going to be getting anything. I don't hate this from Ventus. So yeah, this is a perfect opportunity. So the Ayubids have a multitude of different differences from the uh, Abbasid. I would say the Abbasid probably have objectively a bit of a stronger eco, but the Ayubids have a little bit more, 
uh, going on here. So let me show you this. So you have the economic wing, the military wing, culture wing, and trade wing. So essentially you choose these different upgrades they have. And all their upgrades are different here. Um, they have the bazaar, they have the culture wing. Um, and these are the various advancements. Yeah, so upon completing this, you get three villagers, orchards gain 50 food. Um, this appears to give you uh, cavalry units gain the ability to construct siege weapons. That's cool. Imagine like a cav harass, like running around the map, spamming rams. That's really funny. Advancing to the next age takes four. This is my favorite one. So advancing to the next age takes 40% less time and costs 250% less resources. This is really, really cool. And uh, then you have the bazaar. So every three minutes, a trade caravan arrives with random selection of four favorable exchanges of resources and units. So more upgrades upon completion, gain it to Atabeg, which can be garrisoned in any military production building, increasing the health of newly trained units by 20%. That's permanent. So you can drop those bad boys in, uh, you know, your barracks and just get more tanky units. Culture wing, you get dervishes. And uh, yeah, these are all, oh wow. So these are all age two upgrades. So look at the diversity of upgrade options you have. Each of these, uh, you know, is for age two and it's going to give you what appears to be a whole nother wing of them as you advance. That's really neat. So upon completion, this is awesome too. Economic wing, if you go here, you can like get a second TC really quickly because it instantly gives you 300 wood. Man, Ayubid's got some cool stuff. Uh, on top of that, the Ayubids have unique units. They have Desert Raiders, so they have a Camel unit at Tier 2, which can switch between a bow and a sword. They have Camel Lancers, so instead of standard Lancers at the Castle Age, they can get uh, Camel Lancers, which will debilitate enemy horse units nearby. So, um, very, very fun stuff. Wow. I do dig it. Yeah, and obviously this is going to be a little bit risky, but at in, in the end of the day, if your base does get, you know, you only have two landmarks with these bad boys, so you could suffer. On the other side, we do see the Korra Storehouse. Um, this, I do think, is risky um for japan and i'm gonna explain why so the kura storehouse generates farms perpetually okay and in doing so uh you can attach your villagers to them and they work like regular farms and when fully surrounded by farms it then starts to generate passive wood now japan's economy works in a very strange way you cannot really have your eco be built too far away or your farms be built far away from your town center because the only way japan can increase the gather speed of villagers on farms is by upgrading their daimyo manor, uh, daimyo uh, palace, and then eventually the shogunate castle. So it goes 25, 50, 75% respectively. So if your farms are out in no man's land, your villagers are going to have some of the worst gather rate in the game. Whereas if your farms are near a town center's sphere of influence, once it becomes a daimyo manor, uh, that's how you get good farming. So honestly, for Japan, uh, understandably, he's worried about being rushed and killed early. But I do think that building that landmark next to your main TC, upgrading it to a castle and getting that farm eco, is very very good um very very good so um so yeah we'll see if he suffers there we do have early samurai upgrades coming out so that's that's interesting also i'm more of a fan of the onobugeisha in feudal age the samurai are good and all but the onobugeisha are just so much cheaper you're saving a total of what appears to be yeah so 40 resources on food and then 10 on gold so uh 50 resources in total and yeah they'll lose to a samurai one to one but for defending your base diving battering rams chasing archers they're super good um i don't really get onobugeisha after the feudal age, um, they kind of fall off compared to how the samurai scale with the Odachi upgrade, which gives them a bonus for his infantry, but yeah, we'll see. So somebody in chat says the trick is that you can only choose a wing bonus once. Got it. Okay, so correction, and thank you, because I haven't played Ayubids yet. Um, as you upgrade, you get to only choose one of these upgrades once. Okay, so you get one of these per age up. You kind of choose between the two variants, which yeah, is cool. You can develop really dynamic build orders. So double barracks, Onobugeisha rush or a samurai? Okay, he's going for the last samurai rush, baby. I do like that. Up in the north, Holy Romans. Uh, looks like they do have an early barracks out. And also marching drills and iron undermesh. So this is probably the biggest erect tell that you're possibly going to find that a Holy Roman player wants to kill you with Burger Palace. Um, or it could just even be basic men at arms here. But basically, we're seeing marching drills and you know arrow resist. So you can dive under somebody's TC and not really take a lot of damage. Um, England up here... Taking it easy, going second TC. England is very, very tough to kill. Very, very uh, tough to kill here. So they're just going to sit back and probably just macro and get their farms. And uh, yeah, England is still a powerhouse, obviously. We haven't really seen too much meshing of the new and old civs, but after a couple weeks passes and people, you know, burn out on playing the new civs, we're going to be seeing, uh, you know, a little bit more diversity in factions again, I'm sure. But in the back, the Korra storehouse is going. I would suspect that if Wang, <laughs> Wang Enormous, I love it so much. If he... Um, knows how Japan works, he's going to build the TC back here. Uh, most likely on top of the gold, which will then give a sphere of influence and gather rate to all of these resources nearby. So, um, well, just at the farms, but 
Uh, Japan still does have standard upgrades for uh, other gatherings. So if you go to the house, they do have, uh, I believe they still have the standard ones. Yeah, they have like the forestry and all that stuff. Down to the south side, eight man taking a lot of territory. And once again, we see the Korra storehouse being built very far away from the TC. I do understand that the players are worried about dying, but I, I think that, um, yeah, and there's this TC is far away too. So all these farms are going to be potato tier. And the Ayubid wings upgrades get stronger depending on the age you build up in the wing. Yeah, that's what I suspected. So each time you, it would be, you know, wouldn't make sense. So yeah, you can see these are getting upgraded. So yeah, that's really fun, man. Ayubids are a save I definitely want to give some uh, practice to. So we see the Mindwork Palace. So if you guys haven't seen Order of the Dragon, they have unique upgrades. So they can get the Gilded Men at Arms, which is really cool. So when their Men at Arms get below 20%, they get minus 20% damage. On top of that, you have the Zorn Howe, which gives the Gilded Launch Neck to Halberd upgrade, which gives them a bleeding effect, which does damage over time. And the Bodkin Bolt. So Gilded Crossbowmen deal 10 damage against Siege and It's not very good against Rams, since they have super high armor anyways. But against like Springalds and Mangonels, their Crossbowmen can actually kill enemy artillery pieces, which is really, really rad. Very fun indeed. So no aggression yet. Um, it's been very, very peaceful so far. We've been seeing uh, pretty much everybody macroing. Okay, Gilded Horseman on the other side for Kirk. Getting pretty aggressive here, diving into the base of Ivory Bard, but Ivory Bard does have some uh, Yadiyashigaru, or the Hardened Spearmen, as they're called in this game. And they are going to be fighting off the old uh, Gilded Army, but the Gilded Archers can definitely wreck them pretty hard. You can see the shots coming in, shot through the heart, and you're too late. Did they give love a bad name? Find out on today's episode of Dragon Ball Z. No, they're going to run away, so we're good. And uh, yeah, he's got triple racks, which I think Japan's... Japan is a, a sieve that one of my favorite strategies has been going for racks play pretty heavily and kind of ignoring some of the other ones because you can go with like samurai and onobu geisha and that can deal with like uh you know archer play for sure because the ona are incredibly quick so they can chase down archers and the samurai also have the deflective armor which mitigates a ton of their dps which i think is cool so it looks like the order of the dragon is doing a feudal push which in my experience the feudal pushing order hasn't been very good um, sure, they might be able to get a kill here, but I think Order of the Dragon really, really starts to shine once you can get like a nasty Death Star. Also, if you guys have ever played Warcraft 3, for example, when an Order of the Dragon unit gets very low, you should send it back to your base and save it, and then uh, heal it with a Prelate in the Castle Age. And that way, um, you're going to be really maintaining your super expensive units. So no fights anywhere on the map. Um, Ayubids just macroing, building multiple TCs. I do like this corner empire. I think this is the right play here for Ventus. This is very good. Uh, Ventus is going to be setting up this corner trade and uh, just getting that sweet, sweet golden age going. Trade on the south side of the map is respectable. It's going to be a trade route of 100 round trip. So that is quite cost effective. Not like top tier or anything like that, but for this point in the game, it's good. Granted, there is a great wall of, uh, of the Order of the Dragon coming down, which is going to be blocking the trade. So the golden block. The Gilded Fences. Wouldn't it be funny if their fences were even stronger? The Gilded Fences. Yeah, be pretty rad. Yeah, so good play here by, I like this by Wang. Um, he sets up the town center, which eventually will be upgraded to a daimyo building. And at that point, um, it's going to give gather rate to all these farms. Otherwise, it's really, really wasted. And uh, you're just going to be, you know, feeling feeling a little bit sad with your food economy for sure. England in the game, doing great. Wouldn't it be cool if England won this one? Barracks everywhere. So going to be going for a longbow men at arm push, perhaps in the castle age is Siberius. No heavy aggression yet. We see Sir Arthur building a Stonewall Empire, and I don't hate that for the Order of the Dragon. Also, Ragnitz Cathedral on the backside. He needs to get more relics if he can. Looks like Prelate's going down there. If, if you can get like two or three, minimum two, to be functional, um, but Order of the Dragon still does have the Ragnitz Cathedral. They don't start with the Prelate, so it's a bit of a different beast there, but um, nonetheless, this Prelate is going to be heading over to the east. Oh, the wall off by Siberius. Okay, well, you know, I'm sure the Order of the Dragon's going to be setting their sights on the, their foe, and one of the most impactful units for the Order of the Dragon, uh, in my opinion, in the Castle Age is the Gilded Knight. Uh, you immediately get it. You don't need to upgrade into it. And they have like four, like I think like 400 HP. With good micro, they can even like battle with spears. Um, you can pull them back, you can heal them and get a lot of value in 1v1s. Uh, in FFA, Order of the Dragon's a mystery to me in FFA. They seem like they, um, I personally feel in FFA, they might be a little bit weaker than, Order, than the HRE. But yeah, time will tell. All right, so Desert Raiders are coming out. Pretty cool. You can see they have a toggle between their Raider bow and their sword. And they still are camels, so they'll lower the damage of horsemen pretty effectively. But the Gilded Army is going to be coming across. And that trade is basically going to be shut down. But the Desert Raiders switch to their bows. Speaking of Desert Raiders, I've been uh, I've been reading through the Dune books. Oh, the Fremen are, the, some of the Fremen stuff is so cool. Look at that. Dervish coming out. So Dervish is the religious character. And it's going to be grabbing this relic out from the mouth of the Order of the Dragon here. Yellow ultimately probably going to be somewhat behind, um, largely due to the fact that they um, 
they were doing feudal pressure like a lot and their opponents are just kind of turtling here granted we do see ivory bard getting a pretty solid japanese army here that could probably defend and it looks like there's even some towers with arrow slits there so no mortal wombat yes yet uh, I, you know, I, I figured this might be a fast game when I was like looking at the map on the outside, but I thought it was like a true Thunderdome. I didn't know that you could expand to the farthest reaches of the corners and, uh, you know, reestablish your empires there. And it looks like every single player except Nacho Bear has done that. Nacho is, is feeling very confident with his, uh, his solidified HRE, uh, empire. And honestly, he could go to the north and set up like a, you know, a landmark here if he wants to, like an Ellsback or something like that. So we'll see. He's trying to play Beasties, Order the Dragon, Strat that's going Gilded Horsemen and Archers and transitioning into Spearmen. It's a good 1v1, don't know how to work on this. Yeah, that's the thing. In 1v1, it's a completely different beast, right? So Gilded Archers have pulled down this way. They are gathering up, and uh, the gatehouse is here. Up on the northwest side, we do see the Abbasid with their corner force. Um, one relic being taken for them. So far, Regnant's Cathedral for Sir Arthur is going to be rocked here with two relics. Over on the east side, we do see the Korra Storehouse and the Shinto Shrine. So if you're playing Japan and FFA and you're not going for the Shinto Shrine, you're making a massive mistake. This landmark is, in 1v1, it's good, but it's not like broken or anything in 1v1. But in FFA, this arguably could become one of the most broken landmarks um, because it generates free relics, like nonstop. And yeah, sure, in a 45-minute 1v1 game, it's not like going to be as impactful. But in like a two-hour FFA game, what it can bring to the table is going to be really good. So yeah, he's obviously got the floating gate back here. So you see these little relics back here, the Yodoshiro? These things um, can be dropped in a number of buildings. So you can see town center gives 25% production speed, farmhouses gives you food, uh, lumber camps give you wood. So on an island map, you could drop these on uh, lumber camps and just get wood. It's insanely powerful, which I think is going to be making uh, Japan a top tier civ in FFA, like S tier. I would, I would say France is an S tier civ too. Like the Guild Hall is one of the most busted landmarks in FFA, but I think Japan could be joining their ranks for sure. But Japan, I think, has some weaknesses early game. I always feel like uh, early pressure against Japan is very effective. But, you know, again, not a lot of people pressure early in FFA. So, uh, yeah, it's tough. Old Firehand, thank you for becoming a channel member. Welcome to the Dukes of Haggard, my friend. And I want to thank you all for joining today. Hey, man, really, really appreciate that. So this is a nice layout here by 8-Man. Solid economy. We have the Daimyo Manor, which is going to be giving the Daimyo Farm Aura. So all the villagers will gather 25% faster. And now the composition here for 8-Man. We haven't seen too much military being built yet. Just taking what wood is available on the map. And this has been one of the um, one of the most relaxed, probably, FFAs I've seen initially. I suppose there's been a little bit of harass, but we need we need Smeagol in here to do his dreaded Burgrave drop behind somebody's base. Yeah, FFA tier list one? Eh, it could be something. I would say France is up there. Um, but, like, the tier list also changes depending on the map. Um, the map will dictate a lot. The size of the map. Uh, how many trees, how many relics are on the map, whatever. I mean, I think relics usually spawn in the same frequency, so that doesn't really make a difference. But um, there's a lot of variables. For me, I would say Fran Fr the French are like in the hands of a good player, can be S tier. I would say Japan in the hands of a good player, probably S tier now too. Um, like insanely good defensive capabilities, infinite gold, infinite wood if they want it. Um, very good quality armies, insane imperial landmark that gives them free artillery throughout the entire game. Um, I would say that Japan is probably S tier in a uh, in this format. I would say that if I had to give a rating to the Byzantines, I would probably give them like a B. I, I would say they're not as good as English. Like English would be an A tier for me. Uh, Byzantines can do like produce olive oil production and get mercenary units the entire game, but it's not like insanely powerful, and they don't have any way to like print um, gold in the same way. So yeah, it's a peaceful FFA. It's been very calm. Order of the Dragon, going to be stabilizing here, getting walls on the south side. And you can see walls can actually go around nodes, which is so nice. And uh, I have to say, coming from Total War, it's so refreshing to see like developers actually, um, you know, care about multiplayer a little bit. It's so refreshing. Who are the worst factions, in my opinion? Um, it's hard to say. Okay, big duel going down here. Up in the north, we do see the Gilded Archers engaging with the Bedouin Swordsmen. So these guys, what do they do? Plus five uh, versus melee units. Okay, so when they're up close, they do well. But the Veteran Desert Raiders are upgraded. They got their swords out, and they are going to be driving the Order of the Dragon back to the metaphorical west, technically the east in this situation. But look at that. They then pull out their bows, and they're able to just pick off these very expensive Gilded Archers. So none of these units are cheap there, and they are able to push them back. So that was... Um, that was a nice hold there, and the Gilded forces are going to be forced back, and uh, they did not have their Gilded Knights there, their medieval tanks, which the unfortunate thing for them in fighting the Abbasid is that they're going to be doing 20% less damage there. 
so peaceful compared to previous matches. It really is. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to take take a really big look at all the sieves. Um, the weakest, huh? I don't know. Delhi Sultanate doesn't seem to have too much that's really conducive with FFA. But on that same note, the Delhi Sultanate does get keeps that are much cheaper. So they can potentially uh, rush relics on the map. And then they can build a ton of keeps um, with whatever stone they can get. So in some ways, I'd have to really think about that. I think maybe we'll record a video talking about that. Um, I think definitely Japan and French are S tier, though. I would say they're probably the strongest. But there's also... Here's the thing. Obviously, the uh, Golden Order here is going to be getting karate chopped by the Bedouin. How cool is that? And then we do also have the Elite Spearmen and the Desert Raiders. In the back, we do have a Dervish. And the Dervish heals all nearby units, uh, which is rad when carrying a relic. He heals 50% faster. Oh, wow. Mass healing on him. Man, the Ayubids got some neat stuff. They got some really, really neat stuff. So the Gilded Order here getting absolutely karate chopped by the veteran Desert Raider. The bow's getting pulled out when needed, and the sword's being pulled out when they want to attack buildings. So overall, the Golden Order here, the Order of the Gold, the Dragon Order, the Dragon People, Order of the Dragon... I don't know, too many names, uh, are probably going to fall here. We're going to be seeing Aventus pushing through and probably taking out his neighbor, which is going to allow him to secure trade. Obviously, in this situation, if you're the Ayubids here, you really, really want to take him out because you want to get that sweet, sweet trade. More raiding coming in front. Camel Lancers charging in. we got Trebuchets coming in from the main base as well. Battering Rams from the north. Very, very nice uh, dual-pronged push. And this is going to be the end of Kirk's Albator. Um, he, he, did a, he put up a valiant fight for sure. But, uh, you know, the problem for Kirk is he went pretty hard on putting feudal pressure into Japan, which failed. His opponent was just macroing and, and going castleage. So he was going to be massively behind. So the fact that he's holding it all here is very impressive because um, he is substantially behind his opponent here for sure. Yeah, Joan of Arc, uh, I would say, has a lot of potential in FFA too. And you know why? The reason why is because Joan of Arc has access to the Guild Hall. Guild Hall is the reason why French are here. Without Guild Hall, uh, you know... You know, the French would just not be S-tier. Uh, but the Guild Hall is what makes them S-tier in tandem with the Red Palace. So the Red Palace gives you one of the best defensive landmarks to defend Wonders within the entire game. and makes all your keeps better. So that's why French are just S-tier, uh, in my opinion. And also they have really good units. Like Arbalists are amazing. French Knights are amazing. It's really good stuff for sure. So the Mindwork Palace is in the trash can. The Burgrave Palace is online. So there could be some rapid fire units coming out. But taking a look at the eco of Kirk here. He's currently uh, just in the pits. He's currently at 11 military and 44 eco, whereas his opponent, Ventus, is going to be rocking 107 and 52, respectively. So a couple of Gilded Knights coming out trying to fight. Uh, a bit of a miss micro here by Ventus. He definitely needs to attack the Gilded Knights. Currently, he's not doing that. And uh, he's just trying to snipe the TC. Up in the north, do we see more siege engines coming in? Yep, it's going to be more battering rams. And any other fights around the map? It does not look like it, but you know, man, this empire is crazy awesome looking. Um, this Japan empire... Is going to be getting, yeah, two relics. you got all the forges, which are already getting uh, gift shops dropped in them. So people have already figured out how good the um, the Japanese are in FFA. Just nuts. Absolutely nuts. Honestly, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't hate it if Relic put like a cap on those gifts. Maybe you can only get like so many of them. Because I feel like that can definitely get out of control. Although in 1v1, I don't know, the game should be bounced around 1v1, not FFA. But um, time has, you know, time has yet to tell how it's going to be functioning here. So, very good hold here by uh, a Kirk. And, you know, you always want to fight as long as you can. Because there's going to be a time where somebody can come rescue you. We saw that in several of the previous FFA games. You might be getting bullied, pushed back into your base, losing everything. But then sometimes somebody else will just randomly attack or decide to come to your aid if they think it's to their benefit. Uh, and in this case, we're seeing that, uh, you know, he's holding. But I don't think anybody else is going to be attacking the Ayubids. But, yeah, Japan's looking very, very strong. On the northeast side, we do also see another Japanese empire doing the exact same thing. So forges being set up, relics going to be getting dropped in those, the free relics. Japan setting up their houses, their Shinto shrine is online as well. I don't believe the Tithe Barns works for the uh, Yorishiru. I think it only works for the, um, it only works for the, what's it called? Yeah, it only works for the uh, standard relics. Okay, trade is back online. So the Ayubids were able to reestablish trade. Down to the south side, we see the Ivory Bard just uh, chilling out with his mounted samurai. And he is going to be bringing back these actual relics to his base. The Floating Gate is, uh, of course, the ideal landmark. You don't really want to do too much else there. I don't think that you want to do it. And the Castle of the Crow is okay. Um, I think it's the inferior landmark. It does give you a uh, trade. So, you know, you're going to get a trade, uh, you know, a caravan from a nearby trade post. But at the end of the day, um, I just feel like it's much weaker than the other landmark. The gunpowder landmark for Japan is insane. You can get free bombards, free ribalquins, um, all sorts of stuff like that. Like literally every 30 seconds you get a charge of it. So it looks like there's going to be more walls going down here. But 
Yeah, Ivory Bard is pretty trapped here. I mean, the base is very compact. Um, could get folded pretty quickly if things went south. So more troopers coming in, and the Order of the Dragon is being allowed to farm. Is the Order of the Dragon able to get some military up? Yes, we have the uh, Burger Palace pumping out upgrades on the Hardened Spearmen and Dragonfire, so Gilded Spearmen torches deal area effect damage. Uh, not a super pertinent upgrade. Probably not worth the money, to be completely honest, but it looks like it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, the other one is very good, indeed. Yeah, Japan's got some insanely powerful landmarks, and uh, but in 1v1, they're not as bad. In FFA, I think they do shine. Ahmad, thank you for becoming a channel member. Welcome to the Dukes of Haggard. Thank you, my friend, and hopefully you're enjoying the battle. So if Ventus really wants to go pedal the metal, he should win this fight. So his army composition is Bedouin Swordsmen, uh, mixed in with veteran Desert Raiders, as well as Dervishes. And the Dervishes, of course, are the religious characters, which do have mass healing, and uh, those bad boys are doing some work as the Order of the Dragon has mainly archers, which will not be good against any of these unit types, really. So they're going to be forced back into the base, and that is going to be the end of the road. Up on the north side, what do we got? We got um, the old Regnitz Cathedral and the Ellsback. Pretty nice base layout. Definitely very apt for a wonder. Triple Relic as well in the Order of the Dragons. Pretty hot. And uh, yeah, he's just hanging out. Red really not fighting any uh, anyone. No natural predators. What's probably going to happen, I suspect, with Japan is that as players get better um, in our community at dealing with them, they are going to start targeting them early. Because... That's kind of what people do with French. If you leave a French player in the corner, they're more than likely going to win the game. Even if they're a vastly, like, like their skill level, you could take like a Conqueror 2 player, Conqueror 3, whatever. And if you take like a Diamond level or even like High Platinum uh, French player and just leave them in the corner, they're going to be able to mouth breathe and just get like a million keeps and, and a wonder. And then like, no matter what, you're going to have to push through like 30 keeps. And it's still, they're probably going to win. Um, so you, you have to punish them early. And I feel like Japan's going to fall into that same boat. Uh, as players learn. And, you know, eventually players are going to get punished more and more for not doing that, and the meta will develop, and people will realize they need to deal with them. So, Anjan, she also has a unique tech that makes it consecrate, also reduces golden wood. Wow, okay, that's really good. Yeah, so she can reduce the cost on siege workshops. That's good for turtling, too. See, I haven't really played Joan of Arc, so, yeah. Lesson learned. I played her once. That was a last game. Very fun. Elite men at arms, elite longbows, standard England, just going farms, farms which are going to be generating gold. Yep, he's got the gold upgrade, he's got the white tower here, which is having a bit of a standoff. Um, very, very relaxed game. Nobody's really going Mortal Kombat, but if I had to put my uh, money on a winner, it would be either 8-man, uh, Wang, or yeah, it, it would be one of them. Simply because they're playing Japanese and they have access to the, uh, the infinite relics. So right now, Let's see. So one, two, three, uh, four, five. So four relics so far. So basically Japan here has four relics. Um, relics generate 80 gold per minute and they gen generate 75. So he's already got four and it's only going to get worse. It's already going to get worse. So moving across here, we do see the mounted samurai doing some battle. And the first player has fallen. So a salute to the mighty Kirk. He held well. You know, Kirk got aggressive. He tried to take out his neighbor. It didn't quite work out. And then he was really behind when uh, his opponent came at him with a bigger economy. So, so yeah, tough stuff indeed. Tough stuff indeed. But the next duel of fate is probably going to take place between uh, perhaps this Japanese player and his Castle of the Crow, which admittedly is very cool. Um, I'm trying to think of when the Castle of the Crow might be better. Maybe in a one... No, I, I think under every circumstance, the other one's better. Maybe if you just are desperate to survive and you're being attacked and getting a castle would make a difference. But overall, um, yeah, hard to say. All right. Domingo says, I had no idea you were rebuilding uh, when I passed by Pwn's base. Y'all's reaction killed me. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny, dude. Yeah, in the last game, uh, I got smashed by uh, two guys in the north. It was brutal. He's trying to build forges here and get the stone, but the Bedouin as well as the Elite Desert Raider is probably not going to let that happen. So chasing back this battering ram here. Up on the north side, no conflict. England just hanging out. Um, wow, this game is just supremely peaceful. Supremely peaceful. Counterweight trebuchet is going down. Uh, knocking down the white tower here. Okay, so we could see a little bit of conflict here. But the problem is, is we're going to see a conflict between Nacho Bear and Siberius. And what that does is, it lets the Japanese player down here just gather more and more relics and basically just chill out. Um... A little bit of a... Oh, we have a Shogun. The Shogun Civil War. All right. So a Japanese Civil War going down here as the Samurai rush through the gates, engaging the Yariyashigaru as well as the Archers and the Onomusha. 
It looks like the Hand Cannoneers, the Ozutsu are here. The Ozutsu do have siege damage. They hit so hard, and they can just knock down keeps. Overall, it looks like the army of Wang is quite a bit stronger. The samurai are just chopping up the peasants as well. Hand Cannoneers going to be coming out for 8-man, but these Ozutsu will nuke down this keep. The fact that Japan can build, like, Hand Cannoneers that literally do heavy siege damage is so incredibly savage. So here we do see Wang continuing to push through, and it looks like that's going to be a mass route. There are a couple of Japanese castles nearby, but if Wang continues his push and really, really gets going, I think he's going to be able to defeat 8-man, and then that is going to be giving him absolute dominance in terms of being uh, the Japanese Relic Master. Samurai charging in as well, going to be cutting apart the Bombard Cannons here. Other Bombard Cannon going to get hunted as well. Moving in with the old dreaded Samurai Swords. The Keep here, Japanese Keeps of course are pretty strong. They do have the rocket shooting. But the momentum is continuing and the Ozutsu with their high DPS just melting through this force. Backed up by the Elite Samurai which appear to be fully upgraded. Their deflective armor is super super good as well. And overall we see Horsemen counter raiding. So Horsemen going to be pushing in trying to snipe the Ozutsu. The Ozutsu are pretty squishy. Um, they, of course, are range units, so they're going to be taking penalty here. But it looks like the uh, Elite Horsemen do make a dive on top of the Bombards, which is very smart. That's going to allow your uh, keeps to hold longer and do their thing. So fighting continues here. Ozutsu moving up and uh, getting mowed down by the Horsemen to an extent. Looks like a couple of them will die, but the Samurai are able to move in. They have super cool attack animations as well. And they do cleave to those horsemen. And now the Azutsu are going to continue pushing as the Samurai momentum continues. On the rest of the map, we have the Order of the Dragon here. No, Elite Mounted Samurai and the Bedouin, yes. Uh, so Japan and the Ayubids having a bit of a standoff. On the north side of the map, it is the Order of the Dragon. And looking at resources, yes, yeah, Sir Arthur is not super rich. Um, does he even have a standing army? He does, but he's kind of just chilling and banking resources, it looks like. Um, England going to be doing battle with uh, the Holy Roman Empire. So the classic old civilization duel is on. England probably has the advantage in the Imperial Age, unless HRE has like four relics. Because honestly, their attack speed, their um, siege equipment, it, it just t tends to outclass the HRE in the later stages of the game. In the meantime, the Ozutsu are going to be shooting at the keep and the horsemen, and there is going to be a keep drop coming in here from blue. So it looks like uh, Ape Man is going to be on the back foot for sure, sending out horsemen out of desperation, but the samurai are cutting through so many of the reinforcing units. Both sides do have samurai, um, and both sides do have elite samurai. Granted, the samurai of the Northern Empire, of Wang, do have the elite army tactics. So they have a little bit more HP, therefore they're going to be winning a lot of the duels here as the Ozutsu uh, need to be targeting the keep, and now they are. So they're going after the castle. Uh, Villager is being pulled. Are we going to be seeing another keep drop? Looking at the resources of uh, Wang, yes, he does have enough. So he's probably going to go for a keep drop back here. And yeah, he's getting keeps dropped in his opponent's base, and the samurai are escorting the villagers. So is he going to get it? No, that is the defensive keep. Okay, it's not going to be a keep drop. And torches are coming out. That's a lot of torch damage. A lot of samurai. Many villagers are going to go down here. Looks like 8-man is really on the back foot, losing so much stuff. And the fact that these villagers can just do keep drops with impunity means that he is just so on the back foot. Ozutsu with their siege damage, knocking down the keep here. And uh, overall, it is looking pretty bleak for sure. Pretty bleak for 8-man. Uh, and again, this is a huge power play here for Wang. Because Wang is going to be just in the north chilling. Meanwhile... Everybody else is kind of fighting, and he's potentially going to be able to do north to south trade. If he wants to, if there's a market nearby, he could potentially do that. Um, keep coming down, but it looks like 8-man did have a couple of bombards coming out. So those bombard cannons are going to be able to mitigate that uh, keep right there, which is very nice. But the momentum of the blue samurai is continuing. Yeah, FFA balance is a different thing, because the game should be balanced around 1v1, and it is. And honestly, in 1v1, everything feels pretty good. Um... I haven't, like, Japan feels good in 1v1, but, like, I feel like they get wrecked by the English, you know? And, like, I even had good success against Japan with the Roos when I was doing some practice games. So, um, yeah. Like, in 1v1, I don't know. I, I, I haven't played enough games to really draw conclusions yet. But we're going to be doing some, uh, we're going to be doing some casted tournaments here soon as well. 1v1s. And we're going to get to see some cool tech. So, uh, Friday is what I'm aiming for for the 1v1 tournament. And there will be a sign-up going out in the Discord soon. I'm just trying to see if I'm able to get um, the Age of Empires tournament website set up before then. And if we do, then uh, we're going to announce it on AOE4Tavern.com, which isn't up yet, but we're working on it. So we'll see what we can do. All right, so the battle is on. And looking around, um, all is pretty peaceful. Yeah, a little bit of skirmishing here. We do see purple being raided by the uh, Mounted Samurai here. So the Mounted Samurai coming in and butchering a lot of these villagers of Ventus. Up on the top side, the Civil War continues. The Holy Romans and the English duking it out. Looks like the Holy Romans actually got a leg up on them there. I don't know about the experience level of the English player. Um, he needs... 
He needs more uh, hand cannoneers. So, okay, the English player does not have the proper uh, army comp to fight the Holy Romans. You want to go usually men at arms and then just have hand cannoneers uh, or crossbowmen in the late game to battle Holy Romans. And uh, in this case, he might not be quite as experienced here as Nacho. It's hard to say. His army looks a little bit small and he doesn't seem to be macroing terribly efficiently. Uh, you need to get some armor piercing or anti-heavy for those uh, for those troopers. But yeah, it looks like Nacho is going to be able to win this fight. Nacho probably just kills the English player here. I mean, that's a shit ton of men at arms, 55. So you, you should just go through and purge all these landmarks one at a time and, uh, you know, put him out of his misery here. We do see the White Tower being rebuilt. Down on the south side, the Blue Samurai uh, methodically going through all the keeps. And Ape Man is desperately trying to hold, but... You know, Zutsu uh, just doing nasty work. A little bit of a defensive conclave in the corner where the uh, forges are being made. This is the landmark, the Tanagashima uh, Gunsmith. It generates free artillery for you. You get tickets. You can also build from here too. But yeah, you get the free ones, which is just super gross. Super, super gross. Indeed. All right. So big armies here. And it looks like Blue is just going to continue his reign of tyranny. Honestly, to start torching down all these buildings. Yeah, might as well. We do see the samurai raiding this infrastructure up here as well. Eight man trying to set up another uh, production center with which he can make an army to defend himself, but it is immediately intercepted by the veteran horsemen, and many of those villagers are going to be falling. On the other side, the duel between uh, pink and purple continues. It's a little harrying raids and skirmishes and stuff like that, but it doesn't look like either of them are committed to total war. You're saying Age of a Company of Heroes 3 got nominated for an uh, RTS award of some sort, and Age of... Uh, Age of Wonders 4? Are you talking about Age of Empires 4? Yeah, Company of Heroes is okay. This game is, in my opinion, exponentially better. Um, but yeah, it, it's a fun game to fire up every now and then. All right. So, Holy Roman Empire still duking it out with the English. Um, the English did lose their council hall, but the Barkshire Palace appears to have held. And England is for sure one of the most annoying civs in the entire game to try and kill. Very, very tough. Um, good defensive capabilities with the attack speed when on home turf or near towers or keeps. And on top of that, they uh, have insane food and gold production. So they can basically just make units the entire time. Down to the south side is Blue continuing his push. He is the elite samurai showing no mercy. The Ozutsu are on their way in and more rams and more villagers coming down to steal the gold from this fallen empire. Definitely should make a couple rams and just start plowing through all this because it's allowing eight man to keep building a military to defend with. Uh, which is definitely not something that you want. So keep here is going to start shooting its rockets, but the samurai going to be fending off the villagers, while many of them do start to torch down the building here. And the keep is probably going to fall. A lot of villagers being uh, destroyed here. Eight man currently sitting at 91 eco though, so doing a very good job defending despite the circumstances. The samurai going to be taking the fight here. Meanwhile, um, blue really needs to finish this. You can't let people linger. If you do, um, you know, you, you, potentially someone else is going to attack you eventually or take over. You need to go for the death death blows very very quickly if you can. <laughs> in Ormus shall reign. Yeah, perhaps so. so. Eight man pulling back here, but you see the elite samurai moving in and cutting through a lot of villagers. Ozutsu being called out here for eight man as well, but um, they're going to be unsupported. So the samurai are probably going to be able to cut them apart pretty easily. Their DPS against ground units is okay. Um, they're kind of not quite as much as hand cannoneers, um, but in terms of like killing buildings and having them like mixed in with your forces for sieging, is it's really really nice. They are incredibly good. So desperation keep being built in the back. Rams need to start just plowing through all these buildings. He's got a couple idle rams right here, which could have easily killed like half these buildings by now if they had been attacking the whole time. This base has been destroyed and it looks like more rams are being called in from the north as well. Up in the north uh, side, we do see the Holy Roman English Civil War continuing uh, with no end in sight, which is uh, going to be giving uh, Japan some time to cackle. That's for sure. Mounted Samurai chilling here. And it looks like Pink uh, Ivory Bard is doing his best to hold, getting nice farm infrastructure here in the back. With their farmhouses and uh yeah all is good in the realm oh yeah dude i'm so glad i looked over here it's the tower of the sultan the most erect towers in all of age of empires baby so these are unique battering rams to the ayubids which shoot arrows and they just are super tanky too but unfortunately they're getting caught in melee without support so they can still go down here but they do absorb a lot of damage there and, and can be repaired by villagers as well so here comes the tower of the Sultans, the most erect. Dude, look at the little dongs sticking out of these towers, dude. I love it. Oh, yeah, baby. Let's go. So the towers of the Sultan going to be moving across, getting ready to hammer into the walls here. In the meantime, the Ayubids really just need to make sure to protect those. Um, but the Japanese army is no joke, and the Japanese army probably wins this fight, honestly. They do have access to the good samurai, which will annihilate the camels in combat, and also they have archers to deal with them, you know, some of the lighter units. I would say the Japanese army here is a little bit better quality. Um, Japan should probably switch off the horsemen, 
Uh, they're going to be debuffed by the camel. So for Japan here, you probably want to just mix in the samurai and various other ground-based units. But the Tower of the Sultan is going. Grand. It is Grand. Yeah, Grand is going, man. So the Tower of the Sultan going to be moving into the base, but the Ayubid army fighting valiantly, actually. The Bedouin and the elite Ghulams. Okay, so Ghulams might be able to hang with samurai because of their double attack. Hard to say, but overall, the samurai army here holding valiantly, but it looks like at the end of the day, they do lose it. Partially because maybe the dervishes are providing good healing support to the army. That's something I didn't really consider. And Grand has gotten into the base. Here they come, baby. The Talus of the Sultan, the Palace of the Sultan, Tower of the Sultan, Jesus. So many words. Um, has now reached the Castle of the Crow. Granted, they're a little bit obstructed in terms of their movement, but the Iobids are pretty close behind, and it looks like the giant phallic towers are going to be falling. Japan really good at dealing with those because they have rockets uh, from their keep, which do some pretty considerable damage as well. But it seems that the Ayubids have really gotten good momentum. They push them back and look at the Mangonels. Yeah, they have the unique Mangonels as well, the Manjiks, which uh, do have uh, the incendiary shots, which deals damage in increased area. And then they do also have the kinetic, which deals damage, uh, higher damage to individual targets. So a lot of neat stuff. Honestly, the Ayubids seem like they got some of the coolest stuff of all the variant saves for sure. Yeah, look at the Mangonels with the uh, big spray fire. Pretty rad. And the sustainability of this Ayubid army is insane. The fact that these uh, dervishes are just healing everything is really giving uh, a ton of trouble to the samurai defenders. Down to the south side, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like it's basically the same thing. Reaganomics and trade. So the traders are heading north to south now. And uh, Westerly is... Is Westerly or 8-man, is he holding on? Yeah, it looks like he is. I, I definitely think big mistakes not clearing out all this infrastructure because that's going to give him opportunities to produce more units. I mean, like all this could have been dead earlier and then he would basically be dead. Like the game would be over for him. Setting up farms in the bottom. Um, Eight man's resources are basically gone though. He's got no food production whatsoever. And uh, the, the the blue samurai is, is going to be able to probably finish him off here relatively soon. Up in the north, we do see the English. Yeah, this is this is more what I would I expect. So you see the English player switch to crossbows like we talked about in men at arms. And now he's suddenly winning. Okay. That is, uh, that's what's going on. Uh, what do I think about Shinobi? I think Shinobi are a meme unit in FFA. Uh, I think that Shinobi are potentially good in uh, hybrid maps because you can get them out quickly and they can sabotage docks and give you water dominance. I think on some maps where the spawns are a little bit strange, maybe Shinobi are good, but I think like 80% of the time, the Kura Storehouse is going to be the better landmark. So that is, um, that's my opinion of that. All right, so more momentum coming down here. We do see the uh, the blue Japanese player continuing to karate chop. And uh, just give me one second. I'm going to go grab some water. The voice is getting a little bit tired here, so give me one second, guys. Ah, <clears throat> that's the stuff, baby. Let's go. Let's keep these good times rolling. All right, so here we are. And uh, once again, the blue samurai continues moving through and just purging through the land. So that's gonna be the fall of the samurai here on this side. My least favorite part of the Shogun series was fall of the samurai. I, I, I was, Shogun 2 was one of my favorite games of all time. But when they did fall of the samurai and like guns got included, I was, I was so bummed. I was like, oh man, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe it was sad. <laughs> Don't let mom see you can pause online games. I know, I know, exactly. Exactly. The battle continues in the north. England's still uh, getting good momentum, and as long as they keep trebucheting down, they should be able to defeat the Holy Romans. Uh, they can just outfood them, and look at this. The English have actually gotten in and raided a lot of the Holy Roman infrastructure here, so you can see a lot of farms and various pieces have fallen. So the HRE is basically dead in the water. So we have two players who are on the cusp of uh, death here. Um, I know Fall of the Samurai was really good, but uh, I just I, I, I didn't like when gunpowder units came in and just crushed my samurais in multiplayer. Yeah, it was a good expansion, but I uh, I just didn't like the thematics of it. Is what I'm essentially trying to say. Yes. Oh, it's it's good, it's good. I just didn't like the the guns being introduced to my bows and swords, and uh, it just made me sad. All right, guys, up at the top side, the Elsback Palace being rammed. We see triple battering rams hitting, and uh, I think this is going to be the end of uh, of the uh, Holy Romans here. I think it's it. I think it's it. In Fall of the Samurai got introduced. There was no restriction to prevent using guns against Samurai. I don't, actually don't even know what the meta was. Like I, when I played Fall of the, or when I played uh, Shogun Two and then Fall of the Samurai. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember what the meta was in multiplayer back then. I played Avatar Conquest mode. Um, 
Uh, my favorite were the uh, the monks that had the halberds, or the the not the yari, but the naginata samurai. Those were my favorite units. Those were my favorite favorite units, hands down. Were the naginata samurai and the nodachi samurai, the samurai with like the big two handed swords that had like low armor, but just got in there and like cleaved. Oh yeah, it was awesome. So down to the south, it looks like this is going to be the last samurai, dude. They just blasted the walls with their uh, ozutsu. Whoa, so they do like splash damage to walls too, or maybe that was something else that hit them. That's absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. On the north side, Red is uh, red is pulling a dandy dragon. So if you guys know the legend of dandy dragon, he likes to sit in his base and strike in the fourth quarter of the game. And it looks like Red is doing exactly that. So we are going to be seeing Red uh, just literally chilling and doing nothing. Which is uh, very rad. Yep, this is going to be pretty brutal. The one downside of Japan's relic system is that if you destroy the building that the relics are in, uh, it basically uh, kills the relic permanently. So that's something to uh, take into account. And the samurai have fallen to the gunpowder. Classic. The Ozutsu coming in, finishing him off. That is going to be GG. Well played for eight man. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are six players remaining, if I'm not mistaken. Soon to be a couple less. I mean, I don't know why England isn't going in and delivering the death blow here. Looks like we do see some Holy Roman archers coming and trying to shoot down the old trebuchet. Desperation. Absolutely desperation. And uh, yeah, the Duel of Fates is upon us. Looking to the southwest side. The palaces or the towers of the Sultans continue to move in. The Ayubids really, really relentless on attacking the Japanese here. But Japan is an extremely good defensive sieve. Their shogunate castles have a good arrow fire. Also are very durable. They can take a lot of beatings. And of course, samurai are very, very good. I, I, I think they're one of my favorites. The fact that they get a bonus horse infantry and they also have deflective armor every eight seconds is so cool. So like they can uh, they can trade well into a lot of different things for sure. Hmm. I don't think Red has moved his army. Okay, he did. So guys, we have a major update in the game. Um, we do see over to the west. Uh, his army was here and now it is over here. So Red is getting pretty crazy and the Holy Roman Empire has fallen. Let's see if they fix the bug on the Regnitz Cathedral. So it used to be if the Regnitz Cathedral uh, went down here, it would... Yep, they fixed it. Okay, so the relics do actually drop out of the Regnitz Cathedral if somebody leaves the game. That's good. So the Regnitz Cathedral bug has been confirmed fixed. Ayubid setting up infrastructure here. They're going to be able to make their Ghulams, and uh, the Ghulams, of course, trade very well. They're also one of the better men at arms units in the game and are going to be producing the Manjiks with their spray fire mode and structural reinforcements. So siege units gain 20 melee armor and five, and five armor for 10 seconds. Cost 50 wood to activate. Oh, that's really cool. So check that out. Nacho Bear, you put up a great fight. We're proud of you, man. Hold your head up high, Nacho. You were awesome. You did great. And I hope to see you back in more games in the future, my friend. All right, so the duel soon to be on here. The Japanese holding valiantly under the Castle of the Crow. Ironically, if they didn't make the Castle of the Crow, maybe they would have died. Uh, you know what? Honestly, the other landmark probably would have just given them the armies they need to win on that same note. So I don't suppose that's really too uh, accurate. England getting the relics. Um, Order of the Dragon. What is he doing? Um, Sir Arthur is currently out of gold, even though there's a lot of gold up here. Come on, Sir Arthur. Grab this gold. Oh, he should have had all that by now. He should have had all those goodies. Oh, man. Yeah, and there's more gold over here, too. But, I mean, he's got 7,000 stone. Um, uh, oh, Sir Arthur's going for a wonder. Oh, man, the Order of the Dragon wonder is so hard to do, though. It's really difficult. You have to have so many resources saved up to replenish those armies. For sure. All right, so relics down here, probably going to be taken. Blue is, is the powerhouse now. Um, if we look at the Bank of Wang... He's making a lot of gold. I mean, all of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, like around 10. So he has essentially 10 relics, which is just nuts. He's got somewhat of a cross map trade. Oh my God, 200 trade per. That's so brutal, dude. Yeah, blue is the tyrant and um, everybody needs to pretty much team up on blue. But I suspect this Mortal Kombat's going to continue for a while. Oh yeah, the Tower of the Sultans are back, baby. Let's go. They're coming for round two. More Manjiks being built. And what's also really cool is that the Abbasid, or the Ayubids can get an upgrade where their uh, units can, their cavalry units can actually make a uh, siege weapons. So you can even build siege weapons with your uh, your camels. The camels are going to get their little, their little feet and build uh, siege weapons. Very rad. Japan attempting to wall. Not really going to buy them too much time. Up at the top, the Order of the Dragon finally strikes. 
the dreaded Sir Arthur. He comes in to do battle. And that is a lot of golden boys. And here they come. So the Golden Legion's going to be piling into fight. Looks like they're charging the town center. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, he's trying to landmark snipe him. I'm not sure. And he's attacking a mining camp. What is he doing? Oh, the micro is so haggard, Sir Arthur. Come on, Arthur. Don't You need to fight his army. Oh, you can't afford to lose all those gilded units. So the Barkshire Palace is down. Um, and now he's just shooting random buildings. And now the golden units are fighting. Okay, so they've turned... Uh, they're getting in there. Honestly, against England, I would definitely make the men-at-arms. We have the elite Gilded Spearmen getting mowed down, but that Gilded Army not having such a good time. But Sir Arthur is still doing good damage. I mean, he took down Berkshire. He's got more and more units coming in. He is macroing effectively. A little bit of Haggard targeting in the first fight, but you can see how truly jacked these uh, units are. The fact that like he microed pretty, uh, pretty rough there in that fight, but still found a way to win that. The Order of the Dragon units just cleaving through those bad boys. And now England could be in some trouble if, if, depending on how good his macro is and how efficient he is at just pouring in reinforcements, we could see the Order of the Dragon doing work. Order of the Dragon hand cannoneers, by the way, are just super, super scary. So Sir Arthur moving in more units here. The English defenders rallying out, coming out from the barracks and various other production buildings around the realm. Meanwhile, oh, the giant towers, the Dong Towers moving in. And look at that, the spray fire from the Manjiks. Shooting in, doing quite a bit of damage against those bad boys. And the samurai are going to be forced back while they are losing the floating gate. The tower is anchoring it, and there are going to be more and more waves of Ghulam coming here. Or at least there should be. A little more Manjik fire. The samurai archer core going to be getting nailed. And it looks like the samurai are able to hold once again, although the elite Ghulams under the support here uh, with the camel infantry support. Very, very raid boss for sure. So the Dong Tower is going to be pulling back. Running around with its giant phallus, trying its best to, uh, you know, fight wherever it can. Up on the north side, we do see the Order of the Dragon plowing through the English, uh, making progress. But the English defenders seem to have kind of stifled the momentum a little bit. They've gathered somewhat of a critical mass. But man, these Order of the Dragon horsemen have almost 500 HP. Insane. They have so, so much HP. And he's been able to sit in just this whole game, Sir Arthur. But look how quickly he's dumped through his resources. Sir Arthur is bleeding armies here. Absolutely bleeding armies against the English. And uh, he might not be able to keep up this production. Especially if the trades keep being inefficient like this. I'm not sure where he's going. He's like trying to run past his opponent, maybe get to the farms, which isn't a terrible idea if he can, but um, overall, a little bit tricky. Yeah. Back down to the main fighting here. The Order of the Dragon moving in with their second wave of units. Trebuchet is being knocked down, but the troopers definitely getting in there and causing some havoc. Um, the Jong Tower has fallen, but that is the most damage that we've seen um, Japan take so far. We saw them lose their castle and their Shinto garden which is going to be obviously generating the free relics for them. Nasty nastiness, but blue is for sure the cackle monster. Um, look how rich he probably is. Oh, not as much as you would think, but Wang is actually getting 2,000 gold a minute, even without uh, any sort of uh, natural gold. I mean, but he has a gold node here. There's a gold node here, and there's also one here. So yeah, and he's taking the relics now. Shinto Priest heading across the map. Uh, Ventus with okay trade. He does get 47 to pop. Not amazing. But the Order of the Dragon just going pedal to the metal, man. But I think they're going to run out of food. The way they're fighting? Let's see. I don't know, man. Those Order of the Dragon units are definitely raid bosses. And I love how England's sending out rams, too. It's pretty funny. I mean, the rams are kind of tanking some units. Um, you probably wanted to send in men-at-arms here against this army. The, the uh, Order of the Dragon men-at-arms and knights, I suppose, aren't a bad comp. Let's get a couple horsemen coming around to do some flanking, jumping on top of the archers. But the Order of the Dragon still sending more and more units here. The elite Gilded Knights with 552 HP. But England... You know, history has shown England pretty good at defending their shores at times. And uh, in this case, they are continuing to do it against the Order of the Dragon. Their spears fighting them off. Meanwhile, the Ayubids coming in with another uh, wave of pressure. But the Yumi archers able to pull back. And uh, yeah, they're doing good. Ayubids making momentum. Let's look at the resources of uh, our Japanese player here, Ivory Bard. He's out of gold. He doesn't have much gold outside of his free relics. Um, currently sitting at about 3,000 on food and getting really, really good food eco because he does have a Shogunate castle here. But oh, the, the giant Dong Tower is coming in from the north and Bombard Cannons have also flanked in as well. This is going to be nasty. This could be the end. The Shogunate castle does have 13,000 HP. It's super tanky. And the Dong Tower is trying to knock down the gatehouse to clear a way through. The ram does 600 damage. It is no joke. That ram hurts. But the Shogunate castle is getting absolutely hammered. On the south side, the Ghulams have moved in. Is this going to be enough to take him down? Shogunate Castle is getting very, very low. The Quad Bombard is no joke. And if they kill the Kura Storehouse right after that, that is going to be game blouses. So the Dong Tower is making its progress. Here it comes, baby. 
Uh, going to be two-shotting a gate almost. It'll, it's almost a two-shot, but the Shogunic Palace is going down, and this could be the end. If he just goes after the Core Storehouse, that's going to be it. GG, well played. Farewell to the Ivory Bard. And that was the giant dong of doom has come, and it has claimed its pittance for uh, the last time. Yeah, it has a ram on the bottom. You can you can use it, I believe, as a siege tower. Um, you can also give it bonus armor, which is so cool. Giving it 20 melee armor makes it super resilient against Torch, which is rad. Dude, I know. Like, I think I uh, I think Relic and Microsoft knocked it out of the park with this. This, I mean, Age of Empires 4 in general is an amazing game, and this this DLC is or whatever expansion is uh, whatever they call it is is really good. Like the variant sieves all feel really unique and really fun. It doesn't feel like they're just like redone. They're all very unique. They feel like different sieves. So I, to me, it almost feels like we just got six new sieves, and obviously the two um, brand new sieves. Both feel very fun and very unique as well. Uh, I think I think they they did a great job, and I'm really looking forward to the future of this game, for sure. All right, guys, the battle is on. Um, looking around here, is there any way that purple can get better trade? Not really. Um, there is one relic in the fallen Japanese base. No, three relics. No, it looks like there's at least at least two, at least two. So looking at Blue's bank, um, he's currently pretty good. Not as good on gold, but his gold per minute is three thousand, which is just disgusting. He has 3,000 gold per minute from trade and from free relics. He's doing cross-map trade. Blue is just going to prepare for a wonder um, in the corner, like right here. Which is obviously a good idea. Japanese castles are also better than regular castles. They have rocket emplacements, um, if I'm not mistaken. And they also, uh, I think, have more HP. 7,150 uh, against. Is there any one to measure here? Almost as much as Barkshire. Yeah, 6,000. So they have more HP. But Japan can only build castles in Imperial Age. So, like, if you need to, you know, defend yourself, you usually just use your Shogunate, you know, buildings and whatnot. Yeah, I would imagine every faction will eventually get a sub-faction. Yeah, like, uh, there will probably be another expansion for this down the road where they have two new factions and, you know, you'll get, like, a Rus sub-faction. Um, I suspect they'll probably add Poland. I think we'll see Poland. I think we need to see um, the Scandinavian civilization would be cool. Like, I'd like to see some, uh, you know, some sort of a Viking culture. That'd be rad. We already kind of have it with the Varangian Guard. The fact that they, they can build transport ships is super badass and uh, also have the Berserking. So I think we'll probably see a Scandinavian culture of some sort with the next um, expansion. And then also, um, it'd be really, I just want, I just want Hussars. I just want the Polish Hussars in the game. So I can have a huge Cav Legion of them riding around with their wings flying in there looking all cool. But um, yeah, that would be rad. So traders trading hard in the paint. Yep, really, really nice stuff. Walling it off. You know, it looks like Wang has got all the all the fundamentals of a good FFA player right here. Walling off the trade, cross map, beautiful. And um, where's the Wonder Blue? What are you doing? He doesn't have enough gold um, or stone. So he's he's buying stone as he's as he's getting it. He's buying his way to the Wonder, which obviously obviously is still a ways off. I'm surprised he's not at least mining some of these gold nodes. Anyways, looks like Purple here doing a little bit of scouting. Bedouin Skirmishers. Oh, that's cool. They have Javelins. Oh. I don't know if I've seen these guys yet. So a couple Bedouin Skirmishers running in. And uh, I would imagine Ventus is probably going to sound the alarm on what's happening on this side of the map. Because Blue... Oh, look at the rocket instantly just nailing that guy. Blue could probably 2v1 pretty easily. And it looks like there's going to be infrastructure being dropped by Japan here. A lot of archery ranges as the Bedouin Skirmishers scout the land. Sending back very important intel to their uh, to their their lords back home. Yeah, imagine crab people edition in this game. Yeah, yeah, it could be quite, it could be interesting for sure. The Vampire Coast. Let's add them in there. Yeah, Mongols are easy. Get the Golden Horde. Yeah, Timurids. There's there's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff you could do. Order of the Dragon is chilling out. I think they realized that the English wouldn't die easily, and um, I suspect that there's going to be some uh, aggression flowing towards Blue soon. Because blue is just telegraphing like everything about a wonder. And getting 3,000 plus gold a minute is super disgust super disgusting. Yeah, really, really foul. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm excited for the future of this game. You know, I come from, uh, I mean, in terms of what I've done on YouTube, I, I come from a background of covering Total War, which is a game that's heavily neglected by, uh, <laughs> by its creators and multiplayer, so... You know, just it's nice to like have have like the devs actually like you know doing the bouncing and the maps and all that stuff. Oh man, I think one of the empires in the Americas could be cool, like Aztecs or uh, yeah, man. Oh man, yeah. There's so there's so many cool options you could do. There's so many. 
And, you know, Age of Empires 2 is still getting new content. So, I mean, I suspect this game could be supported for a long time as well. Assuming it, you know, does well enough. Hmm. The native civs in AoE 3 were super, super cool. Yeah. Yeah, Spanish. Spanish will probably get added as well. Yeah, Spain at some point. Whatever they were called back then, I don't know. I'm not very good at the old history of that part of the world. Um, down to the south side, yeah, we see Japan looking like they want to fight with the, uh, the, the proxy emplacement here. So I think Japan's going to come out and probably steamroll this and just push these away with their samurai. We do see a core of elite samurai moving across. The Shogun has ordered them to drive back the invaders. And it looks like they are going to be doing just that. Yeah, wood is going to be running out on this map too soon, by the way, guys. Like, wood is almost pretty much gone on the um, on the English side. The Order of the Dragon is kind of out of wood as well. They have a little bit on this side, which they're actually sharing with the Ayubids, which is really, really funny. And down on the south side, um, what do we got here? Yeah, a lot of elite samurai pushing across. Mosque is going down here. And uh, yeah, those, those Ozutsu are such a good unit, man. I think they're one of my favorite new units Japan has. I haven't really used them too much. Um, I've only played like a couple games as, as Japan on stream because there's been so many people wanting to play them. But um, yeah, they're no joke. So yeah, these are all generating gold per minute. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Probably like at least half. Um, currently not enough stone. Uh, not yet. The gunsmith, he's spam producing Ozutsu and Bombard Cannons. Probably could cancel a bunch of these and instantly get a bunch of gold back for his wonder. But we'll see if he's going to prop a wonder. I mean, it would probably be a good idea to go. A three, like, I would say a 3v1 a three v one wonder would be uh, good. Like, usually I'll do that, depending on the positioning. With this positioning, yes, because orange is blocking red. So red would have to come right here with his deployment and his units are expensive. And then also um, purple's really far away. So purple would come east and red would be blocking him with his infrastructure. So I would definitely go corner wonder with Japan right now. Like, as quickly as possible. Because you don't know how how strong the other players are too, right? Like the Ayubids, for all you know, could be planning a wonder. Like, look at this. The Ayubids could wonder race them, guys. They almost have enough. But the Ayubids, I don't think could hold. I think the Ayubids would get swarmed by Red really quickly. Um, he does have a couple layers of walls and is setting up a lot of stables. So it looks like he is preparing for a wonder. In the back, Elite Desert Riders coming out. Raiders. The Raiders? Riders? I think they're Raiders. Super, super cool. Do we really want Water Blizzard to make Warcraft 4? I don't know, man. I, I would... God. I don't know, man. Blizzard is such a disappointment. They, they've, like, basically butchered every beloved franchise, you know? Um, the only Blizzard game I still play is Warcraft 3, but that's, like, because it was made a million years ago, and it's basically the same. Like, none of the new Blizzard games really called to me at all. All right, guys. A little bit of a duel of fates here. Samurai going to be engaging the camels. Yo, Zutsu. Plopping down in the back, ripping pot shots here. But the Ayubids are not pushovers. They do have their Dervishes. They do have their Bedouin Swordsmen. Oh, those guys are so cool. Look at the dual wielding swords. I don't know, they're going elsewhere. But the Samurai holding the line pretty well. That's what they do. And the Ozutsu, of course, uh, mowing down as many of these units as they possibly can. But they're not easy to replace. Ozutsu do cost 150 gold a pop. They're very, very pricey. Three of them are basically the gold cost of a Bombard, almost. A little bit less, but you know, they also cost food, too. So it looks like blue is going to go for the kill. Um, it looks like the samurai wants to push here. We see blue mustering reinforcements over. So there's spears. And uh, I think he knows that there is a mortal combat between these two players. So red and, you know, orange are both kind of like sitting there staring at each other, having a bit of a border war. So he, he probably knows the other powerhouse in the game is going to be the Ayobids. But the Ayobids are not pushovers at all. They're going to be able to push back the Japanese here. And Japan is very far from home. Very, very far from home. StarCraft 2 is still good, but it's ignored. Yeah, I know. I saw the memes about StarCraft 2 getting ignore ignored at BlizzCon. That was really funny. Um, it's a shame. StarCraft 2 is a great game. I stopped playing it after uh, Legacy of the Void. I, I didn't play Legacy of the Void. But I was a pretty competitive player in uh, the first one, Queen's of Liberty. But that was that was many moons ago. Many moons ago. Supposedly, rumors are that StarCraft 3 wasn't even going to be an RTS. What the hell is it going to be then? Probably some awful microtransaction litter, just piece of crap, you know? Like, it's, it's, Blizzard just sucks, dude. Like, most modern gaming industry just sucks, like, bad, you know? They're just, like, predatory, they're greedy, um, you know, despite the efforts of devs to, like, want to do things, like, the higher-ups and companies often just make horrific decisions and just, like, ruin companies. They're just out of touch. They're not actually, like, gamers. They don't care about, you know, the people who play their games. They just look at the bottom line, you know? But not, not realizing that making what people want is, is really the way to be successful, you know? I mean, but, you know, the, the sad counterpoint to that is, like, if you look at how much money 
some of these microtransaction games make compared to you know more traditional games it's like pretty pretty depressing yeah until people stop you know playing into that system you know it's probably going to stay that way anyways rant for another day duel on the bottom continues the better when skirmishers they do a bonus for his light infantry so a counter against spears essentially and uh, they're going to be javelining down the villagers but the the old Ayubids do have the better supply lines. Japan's troopers are having to march all the way from the north, and they're using the uh, trickle-down. So those bad boys are moving in one at a time, which is going to be allowing the Ayubids most likely to push them back. The Ayubids can't really afford to... Um, they can't really afford to lose this ground. If they lose their trade, they become the potato. But the Ayubids' economy is very amazing. I mean, their food bank is good. I mean, all their resources are solid. And honestly, the Ayubids can almost slap down a wonder, which... Let's look around the base and see um, where would the wonder go. It'd probably be like right here. Delete this barracks and just plop it down right here would be your best bet. But Japan is already going pretty aggressively after you. And uh, yeah, I don't know if they wonder. Japan also probably has wonder money now too. Yeah, 9,000. So they have enough. Japan, if, if you're the Japanese player, ooh, do you wonder here though is Japan with only 6,000 wood? No, I don't think you do. I think Japan needs to get a good wood bank again. Their wood economy is really, really poor. Um, so yeah, they wouldn't be able to really defend the wonder too adequately, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, man. It is tough indeed. So the battle continues. The elite gulams, dervishes, and all the Bedouin skirmishers forcing back the overextended samurai who've had to push into enemy lands. And the uh, Ozutsu, their big shotguns. Oh, they have the Friar Tuck haircuts too. It looks like they're bald on top. Hell yeah, dude. Let's go representing the uh, folks in their uh, mid-30s. So the battle continues, the elite samurai pushing forward. But I think that uh, Wang needs to consolidate his forces. A little bit of a mistake to just keep sending them in in waves like this. They're basically just getting massacred and hemorrhaging resources. Samurai gonna be uh, heading down to the south. Meanwhile, the Order of the Dragon. Uh, yeah, Wonders cost 8,000. Wonders scale based on map size. So if you're playing 1v1, Wonders are much uh, are cheaper. If you're playing this uh, game size, I can show you real quick actually. So Villager. And it's going to be, uh, wait, why is that 5,000? That's not, hang on a sec. 8,000. Okay, guys, hold on. Did I just see that the Order of the Dragon's Wonder is 3,000 resources cheaper than everybody else? There must be something. Is there a tech in there that I'm missing? Have you guys noticed that before? Yeah, I don't know, man. That's pretty badass. It's a maximum of 8K. Um, let me look around here and see if there's some funny business. Yeah, it should be. Wait, and his is 5,000 also. So why are the landmarks cheaper for these guys? Uh, I know the Ayubids probably have some sort of a tech, right? That makes it cheaper, like buildings are cheaper by a certain percentage. But why is the Order of the Dragons also cheaper? I, I didn't know that. Did you guys notice that? It's it's the, it's only 5K. I mean, that that's really big, actually. Nani? <laughs> yeah. I started balding when I was around 24. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm not balding, but my I'm going my beard is going gray. Yeah, I have like a really shitty beard right now, and it's like it's it's going gray. Dragons don't pay for wonders. Replay glitch? I don't know. Let's go to his perspective and see. Okay, okay. So now when I go to his wonder, it says 8,000. Okay, and then when I go to his, I have to be looking from his perspective. Okay. Yeah, it's bugged. Okay. My power fantasy of the Order of the Dragon having a cheap wonder is over. It's 8,000. It's just a, it's just a replay kind of a bug. Yeah. A couple of villagers running up this way. I have no idea what they're doing. It's 8,000. <laughs> Turn the grave. Yeah. It's a replay bug. We just checked it out. Yeah. So Japan going to drop the wonder down. They're pretty close to it, but they need wood. Um, that's what she said. They need a lot of wood. Japan's eco is pretty heavy duty on trade. And it's all in on the gold. The Ayubids uh, could also wonder race them. I, I wonder if they're going to. Ventus, Ventus and Wang are both very... Um, they're from our Discord. And they're both players who are very seasoned with the old um, FFAs. So these guys both, I think, are going to be very capable of, um, of winning here. Should be fun. Should be fun indeed. I didn't download the beard update. I'm 30 now. I'm pretty close to just shaving it off for good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Thank, thankfully, um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind being, I wouldn't mind being bald myself. I have, I have no quarrels with it. Um, I think I could handle it. I've had buzz cuts in sports. Like when I played football and ran track, I always had a buzz cut. But my wife would, she likes the the long. She likes me to have Bible hair, the biblical hair, like super long. So I don't know how that would go with her. 
<laughs> she, she just yelled divorce from the other room. Yeah. <laughs> just just divorce. Just with a big emphasis on it. Yeah, that's pretty good. We need more dong powers to take down the Wang. The dong versus the Wang. Yeah, dude, I love it. The Ayubids. I don't know. I, I think I have to start playing the Ayubids. Although I love the Byzantines in 1v1 too. Byzantines are so cool in 1v1. Just the diversity of unit choices and all that stuff. <laughs> Divorce. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I'm saying I don't like. I wouldn't care if I, I did went bald, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Just slowly turn, start turning into Italian Spartacus. Order the dragon moving out, by the way. Attacking in the center, taking down a Daimyo Palace, which is, uh, you know, not the Shogunate Castle, but it's up there. It's a pretty good tier. And that is actually one of their landmarks as well. It's actually one of the landmarks. On the southwest side, um, it looks like, yeah, maybe they're all turning against blue. And I have to say, that would probably be one of the biggest, biggest victories for purple. If purple could use politics to make the entire board think that blue is the terror, then that's going to be a, just like the play of the gods, baby. Absolutely. Andy in chat says, I know that divorce talk. My wife says the same thing. If I shave my beard, that's interesting. Because my wife prefers it if I don't have a beard, actually. Yeah, although my beards are pretty terrible, so I completely understand where she's coming from. You don't like my beard. Okay, she said she loves it now, so maybe it's changing. The paradigm has shifted. <laughs> Here they come. Elite Gilded Horsemen gonna be coming from the middle. Getting ready to push into the east. And Japan, I think, is just gonna slap down the wonder now. They they probably have to at this point. Um, I think they can see the writing on the wall that there's aggression coming their way. Although the, uh, the English are just kind of AFK in their base. The English haven't done much. The Order of the Dragon just kind of harrying out in the middle. Cleaning out the middle of the map. Um, does have villagers nearby. Wood is basically uh, gone on the middle area. Now, there's still a lot of wood here. That's what she said. Should for sure grab that. And uh, down to the south, we do see the Order of the Dragon continuing to get momentum. But what are they going to be doing with it? Yeah, Byzantines uh, are kind of cool in late game FFA too, because the Olive Gardens let you just build good quality armies with just farms. And on top of that, the Byzantines can, um, can get a bounty from killing villagers. So if the Byzantines, for example, are raiding, they can get a little bit of gold that way too. All right, so we have a battle between the Samurai and the Order of the Dragon. The Order of the Dragon army, very small and elite, but the elite gilded men at arms with the golden cuirasses are gonna be very tough to take down as they do battle with the Samurai. Archers and crossbowmen gonna be tearing in, and I think the Order of the Dragon army is gonna win this fight. It looks like the Samurai are gonna be falling, and Wang is going for it. Villagers being pulled, baby. Let's go, it is go time. Hell yeah, it is time. All right, so how many villagers do we have? 42, are the Ayubids gonna race them? Nope, Ayubids are not gonna be able to race them, ladies and gentlemen. They're not prepared, their villagers are not all together, and that is gonna be the um, Palace of the Emperor, or the Tokugawa Shrine, yeah, that's what it is. Build and defend a wonder to secure victory, yes, yes. Go on, go, do it, baby. You gotta plop it down now. I think the aggression is gonna come, and if the Order of the Dragon cuts off his trade in the middle, that's gonna be pretty big, so. Yeah, we don't see it yet. Um, the Order of the Dragon army, man, is is definitely pretty, pretty scary. When that death ball gets going of those super elite troops, it, it's hard to kill them. And I do recommend if you guys want to be Order of the Dragon players to, um, to uh, what's it called? Go for the prelates in your army. Because they not only will inspire your troopers, making them better. You have the Inspired Warriors where they get 15% more damage and one armor. But they also will heal them. And HP is more valuable on the Order of the Dragon. Uh, he's, the wonder is coming. It's time, baby. Let's get it. So the Tokugawa Shrine is going to be getting dropped here. And it is Gotham's Reckoning, baby. If you guys are enjoying the stream, do drop a like. It helps out quite a bit. Keeps the Age of Empires action going. The Tokugawa Shrine is up and the Order of the Dragon was about to leave. And they're like, wait a second, we got to come back. So what the Order of the Dragon player needs to do is he needs to grab all these villagers, come here and build infrastructure. Otherwise, it's going to take 10 years. Horsemen going to be diving the artillery pieces, obviously. Um, but the Order of the Dragon player should be able to kind of fight them off. And here they come. But that Bombard probably going to be dying. Good micro. He pulls it through, but it only has one HP as is. Oh my god, is it going to live with 1 HP? No, I don't think so. The Samurai army comes out and the Bombard Cannon does fall. And the Ayubids uh, have the giant Dong Tower now in here. And they are going to be pushing into the uh, Japanese. But the thing is, that Wonder is like... Yeah, he has a Sacred Victory and the Wonder Victory going at the same time. It's a Duel of Fates as the Samurai 
bash it out with the elite order of the dragon's troopers they look so cool that black gold and red scheme is incredibly rad i really really like that so they're going to be battling but it looks like the samurai were able to outmuscle them with the support of the ozutsu in the back doing big burst damage against those elite units Obviously, no supply lines, and the Order of the Dragon is going to be sending reinforcements in. And England um, needs to get a siege engine going. England is the best hope for everybody this game. If England just gets, like, trebs and battering rams and just pushes through here with a good quality army, the Japanese player could fall, for sure. And how cool is this? When the katanamen fall, or the bannermen, they leave their banner in the ground. And it uh, buffs nearby units for a while until it disappears. Very, very fun. All right, so over here we see more samurai coming up as the uh, the Dong Tower pushes. Um, this is a mistake, I think. I think that the Ayubids need to go up to the north and set up here and push the Wonder. Uh, the Sacred Site, you know, you'll get it here, ideally. I mean, understandably, he wants to get back here, and it does shut down trade, which is nice and all, but um, it's not like he's going to take so long. I, I think Blue's got this in the bag. I think Blue's going to win this game. Yeah, I think he's going to get it. Is the South Sacred placement is a bug? What do, uh, I'm not sure what you mean. It's, uh, I think there's only two Sacred Sites. Yeah, so it should be fine. I don't think there's a Sacred in the corner or anything like this. The Dong Tower is going to be knocking it down, but the Ayubids really need to go for the Wonder. Order of the Dragon, this is good. Well played. Good, good stuff here from Red. Good FFA fundamentals. And honestly, even in 1v1, it's good to do this too if you have the advantage. Um, forward infrastructure is down. So England is moving, but no Siege equipment. Siege Workshop's coming. Honestly, Trebs and Bombards or Rams, whatever. All of that is going to be perfectly viable. And the Wonder is actually kind of vulnerable to England. If England can get a push, like, boom, 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 and just get, like, some trebs right here, uh, or even back here, you're going to be able to hit that and kill that pretty quickly. So, yeah, they are on the same side, for sure. So, he's walling this up. Could get the Sacred Victory. Let's look at the Sacred Timer. So, looking at the Sacred Timer, uh, unfortunately, yeah, that's right. It doesn't show it here. Wonder Timer is at 12 minutes, and no real progress has been made yet. But England is uh, needs to get the Rams working on the walls. Every second matters when you're pushing a wonder. And the, the giant Dong of the Gods is going to be knocking this down. And the big army of the Ayubids is there for Ventus. But Ventus um, needs to push mid. Okay, he is. Good. Uh, well played, Ventus. This is good. So Ventus is setting up in the middle. That's exactly what you want. They need to work together. They need to work together. But on that same note, he's taking down the trade, which is going to kind of make you know Japan potentially struggle if they do manage to survive this somehow. Uh, and, you know, set him back to the Stone Age. If, if the Wonder does get stopped, Ventus probably wins it because he's just going to slap down a Counter Wonder after that and, you know, cackle all the way to the bank. But the Gilded Knights doing battle with the Samurai, but the Gilded Archer is not really the best choice. Um, the Men at Arms fighting in the front line with some Spearmen, and they'll still do some damage, but overall, the Mass Samurai will do very well, and the Ozutsu are going to be very nasty there too. You could also use Onomusha. Onomusha are the mounted crossbows. Um, the Ozutsu do cost a lot of gold. Although you do get them for free from your landmark every 30 seconds you can get one. So here comes old England. For England, James, the bangers and mash, he's taking them to Weatherspoons, baby. He's on his way up. He's going to be heading down. Rams pushing through the wall and uh, making progress. So England needs to move its army up with the Rams and set up towers as they move. Uh, that will make it impossible to rewall and also um, gives them the attack speed buff. So Samurai pulling back. Order of the Dragon going to be rebuilding here. So um, definitely don't need to make Spearmen here. Just make Men at Arms. Probably what you want to be doing. And the, the Dong has taken down the trade post. Um, not sure what he's doing, really. I guess he's trying to get to the sacred site. Yeah. Which makes sense. I don't know why he didn't kill that market either. Uh, should have just sent his ghoulums in there to take that down. Here comes the Dong Tower. It is time. Yeah, weather spoons, man. He's going to have to eat at spoons. Here comes the battering rams. And the Dread Legion is going to move in soon. Here comes the English army. Should be better quality. Um, Siberius has got 14,000 gold. It should be a gold-based army, but it's mostly wood. So the Samurai defenders will probably do very well against it. Here they come. Dude, Samurai are just the coolest unit. Oh, look at those guys. <laughs> do host walls. <laughs> do, <laughs> do, do host walls. Yeah, it's pretty good. So they're coming in, but you need to defend these rams because they're pretty close, actually. They've gotten back here rather quickly. Order of the Dragon is going to be marshalling an army to move in here, and the Sacred Sites are going to be decapped. Uh, I suspect as soon as the Sacred Sites get decapped, we're probably going to see a delete on the um, army down here and maybe rebuild it in the middle. I'm not sure. Because it's going to take them a long time to get up this way. A long, long time. So the Samurai Defenders rushing out to uh, meet the English army. Long goes in position, but the Samurai army is really, really good. Um, and also we have the Ozutsu up in the walls with their uh, hand cannons. I don't believe they do as much individual DPS compared to hand cannoneers. Hand cannoneers, I think, hit for 48, is it? A little bit more? Maybe it's the same. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check that, but 
More longbows coming out, but the samurai are super resilient. Their armor mitigates a lot of the damage. Essentially mitigates like, what, 15% or something of the damage every attack? Yeah, in total. Um, so those samurai, yeah, just melting through that English army. The English army is very the wrong army comp here. You don't want to make horsemen, longbows, and spears. Um, you want to spend that gold and make hand cannoneers. English hand cannoneers with attack speed upgrades would butcher this samurai force. But um, alas, you know, maybe he's just learning a little bit newer. Who knows? So here comes the Order of the Dragon moving through into the main base, which is good. If they can penetrate in, cut off the trade, do some work. Um, and yeah, the sacred site has been taken. Unfortunately, they've let the trade continue, which is giving the samurai defender a lot of extra um, resources to work with. Desert Raiders moving up and the Ayubid army moving in from the south. And we're probably going to start seeing reinforcements coming this way as rams pour in from each direction. Um, currently, Wonder is at 8 minutes and 40 seconds. And uh, yeah, man, it's on. Bombard cannons, here they come. Men at Arms moving in. Nice. The Order of the Dragon player doing some work here. And the English also not doing a bad job either. Even though they're not making the correct units, um, they're still overwhelming and macroing well, which is good. So several of the Samurai Defenders will follow to the Horsemen there, I would imagine. And now the Samurai are uh, bolstering back under the Shogunate Castle in the back with all the Japanese rocket keeps. I'm telling you, Treb pushing the north right here is hands down the play. Uh, eight minutes left on the Wonder. At, as it currently stands, ladies and gentlemen, eight minutes. Uh, on the other side, Order of the Dragon moving in. Might as well kill some infrastructure while you're at it, but it looks like they're just going to go straight for the uh, backside, which isn't a bad idea. You know, both both are viable for sure. And you have the Ayubids coming from the south, um, who will put a little bit of pressure on with their giant phallic tower. Uh, Japan has pulled back to its, er, his, its back defenses already. He's been pushed back pretty far. The rams are moving in, English longbows and the walls are picking off samurai, and the horsemen also getting a little bit of aggression in there. A couple idle units here. Um, Siberius needs to grab those bad boys and move them down south to make sure he doesn't lose his momentum. Meanwhile, the Order of the Dragon, you know, getting in there, putting some work in. A lot of bombards, a lot of artillery, a lot of trebuchets. If he can start knocking down the uh, Shinto Shrine here, it'd be big, but also taking down this. Wow, something's popping these. What is doing the damage? Is it the rockets? Or no, Japan has five spring alts right there. Nasty. And he was able to get those shots and rip them. Beautiful. Villagers being pulled. Really, really, really impressive defense. Today we're going to be settling the age-old debate of what is better, the Wang or the Dong, as they do battle. Yes, the Dong Tower is coming. And if the Dong is able to get you know fully erect and get in there, it could be a problem. We'll see. So Order of the Dragons uh, push has been stifled. They almost got to keep down. The, uh, the trebuchets here trying to take down this castle, but the Japanese castle is a little bit tankier. Big English push on this side. A lot of rams coming in. Looking at the timer here. This is a desperate hold, man. He's at six minutes, and that wonder is, is, is kind of close to being uh, compromised. Japan doesn't appear to have production back here, and their production is kind of out in the open, getting intercepted. So this is allowing um, a lot of the attackers to push in well. But look how many bombards he has. Yeah, even villagers of England being pulled in. But those rams have gotten in. Look at all the Ozutsu! Oh my god, are they going to just blast these rams? They actually don't do much against the rams. Okay, they basically do nothing. So this is like 48 Ozutsu. Oh my god. They're not very good at killing the rams. You saw the damage that there um, was pretty insignificant. And now the rams need to just start killing houses and doing infrastructure damage. You need to cripple them to the point where you can't build more. Six minutes is still plenty of time. Grand, grand, grand. Here it comes. The Tower of the Sultan is on its way, guys. Here it goes. It's getting into the tower. Oh, the Dong thrust. It thrusted and took down the keep. And now we have all the battering rams moving in. Here it goes, baby. The giant goat Dong is moving into the back of the Japanese base. But Japan does have its Ozutsu pocket. Longbows are a very hard counter against them, or not hard counter, but a good counter. Uh, their massive range advantage uh, allows them to tear apart the expensive Ozutsu at range. England macroing well. I'm, I'm impressed with his macro. He's doing good. And the Order of the Dragon is moving into the trebuchets and knocking down production, which is good. I think it's, not, it's good that they're, uh, you know, all kind of teaming up and doing these different variables. Japanese reinforcements being intercepted, allowing the English player to get some good pushing power. Um, I think the uh, Tanegashima landmark, does it have any stockpiles? Uh, where can I see how many stockpiles it has? It, it would appear there's no sort of tooltip, so you just kind of have to, uh, you have to guess. Unfortunately, the Dong has fallen, but where one Dong falls... Another arises. So the Tower of the Sultan is going to be coming up right now. And uh, yeah, the English longbows just continuing the attrition. The Japanese are out of food. What you see is what you got. Japan can only make siege equipment. They literally have like no food income. Three villagers on food. The English longbows, unfortunately, are attacking some of the Ayubid units. The Ayubids need to make sure they need to stay separate from one another. Uh, it's pretty unfortunate that they're attacking each other. That's basically what would give Japan the win in this situation. So Japan's going to be holding in the corner, and um, yeah, they're doing pretty good on the hold. The Wonder Tracker is down to 4 minutes and 38 seconds, but 
England is coming and do they have battering rams? Or trebs. Trebs. Trebs are what's needed. So the Order of the Dragons moving in. We have the Dervish. He does more healing if he has a relic, which is pretty badass. So when he has a relic, he heals 50% faster. Unfortunately, he's probably going to die to these Order of the Dragon troopers. Yeah, just it's, it's hard to keep track of that when you're in an all-out attack like this. So the English archers up at the wall, slowly picking off the samurai and the, uh, the Ozutsu. One keep still hanging in here. Ramps being built. The giant Dong Tower is getting in there. There it goes. Order of the Dragon needs to make sure not to attack the Ayubids. You really need to work together on this. The micro has to be impeccable. 75 of the hand cannoneers, the Ozutsu. It's pretty much the only thing he makes because he's producing them out of his, his range here. So he can build one every uh, like 30 seconds or something. So he's just building those guys. But they're going to start falling. The Order of the Dragon troopers are closing the distance. You can see some of the samurai falling to them. But the shotgun blasts were heard. And uh, they did some big damage. And look at this teamwork, baby. They're getting in there. Yes. Yeah, that picture is a Photoshop, the one that they're sharing in chat. Um, all right. So once again, we see the uh, battering rams uh, moving up. But somehow, these mangonels are getting sniped. The Japanese are being forced back. The English army concaving in. We got three minutes left on the hold for Japan. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. It looks like the Dong is going to defeat the Wang today, but we're going to find out. The Dong is moving menacingly towards that Tokugawa shrine. And uh, the English archers are carrying a lot of the weight here. But what's going to happen is there's going to be a counter wonder as soon as this goes down here. We do see the floating gate going down. And wow, I really, really thought that Wang would hold that. I honestly really did. But, you know, hey, it's, it's good to see that, you know, even Japan can, can fall. Like, honestly, if this were a French player in the same situation, I think they would have held because they would have had more keeps. They would have had like 15 more keeps. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool to see. Red or purple will build the wonder. Red's got a nice little spot for wonder. He's ready to kind of defend as well. Um, looking at the wonder tracker, two minutes left. Battering rams knocking on the door. The giant tower of the Sultan uh, using its thrust motion here to take down the forge. Japan is basically toast. And I think all their landmarks are dead also. Let's see. Um, yeah. Honestly, I'm really impressed at these players. Like Sir Arthur and um, Siberius really, really... And, you know, obviously Ventus all came into their own in the fourth quarter of this game and did an excellent job at unifying and taking down Japan. And now they need to finish him. Uh, you, you, you don't want to leave him alive. We're probably going to see a counter wonder being dropped here. Oh, yes. All right, guys. So we have found out today that the uh, the Dong has defeated the Wang. And here the prayer hall of uh, Ukba is going to be going down in the corner. All right. So is Japan going to live? Uh, uh, let's see what their landmarks. One... Uh, that's not their first landmark. So one, and then I know this one. Yeah, so if the if this landmark gets killed up top, then that will be the end of Japan. Granted, they probably want to leave Japan alive to help a little bit with the wonder if they can. And look, oh, it's a race! Order of the Dragon, 2100. Oh, and the prayer hall goes down as well. Grand has done it. That feels bad for the Order of the Dragon, dude. They had to cancel their wonder right now. Wow. Japan basically in shambles. They lost everything. Like, his eco is... He's got five villagers. And there's still rams just plowing through his base. Now they have to save blue, I know. Yeah, the Order of the Dragon is going to be turning its sights over to the uh, to the Ayubids. Obviously, the counter wonder going down here. So the uh, construction has started. Wonder canceled here. He, he was not quite quick enough here. <clears throat> And yeah, this beast is still getting in there. Honestly, it would behoove the uh, the big Tower of the Sultan to actually kill the um, to kill the Japanese if they could to take them out of the game. So it's just that the floating gate that's down, and I believe his other landmark was in the middle somewhere. Yeah, obviously this died a long time ago. Uh, how is England's got trade? Yeah, it's not very good though. England doesn't really need trade as much as other civs in FFA. Hmm. You can't get it up faster than the Dong. I know you can't do it. Not possible. <clears throat> Over on the west side, the prayer hall of Ukba is up. Um, towers being built. Pretty good infrastructure. These are mostly unupgraded towers, so just there for the aesthetic, looking pretty cool. Um, but it looks like Japan uh, is able to stabilize the rockets cleaning up. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you're Japan here, you just got to rebuild. You just got to rebuild. I, you know, you can't really help. So just try and get your eco back somehow, rebuild some landmarks, and get your relics back if you can. And, uh, you know, see if you can stabilize. Because there is a chance that purple will fail. And uh, and then from there, you could maybe be back in the game. Blue's eco count right now is 10. He, he has a TC producing villagers. They didn't kill a Shogunate castle. So he's still going to be able to produce. <clears throat> still going to be able to produce for sure. 
Down on the bottom side, the Bedouin skirmishers poking away randomly at some buildings. Trade shut down here. Um, this market could be taken by the Ayubids. I don't know why they haven't yet. Um, you could do some good cross map trade if you want to and uh, definitely cackle. He's parking some units on the sacred site, which is a great play to make sure that his opponents don't try and beat him with the sacred victory. And now the Order of the Dragon um, looking at their bank pretty damn good. I mean, the Order is going to be able to push. England setting up towers. They have to make sure they don't fight each other here. This is this is unfortunate that they're uh, clashing here. And England's going to be coming across as well. Good games today. We've had some really, really good matches for sure. Can people yoink relics that Japanese produce? No, they can't. They're unique. Um, look at that. An attempted theft here, but these samurai. These, these are no longer samurai. They're ronin now. They're renegade samurais, having lost their master. Um, so now they're just going to roam the lands and have super badass names. So, uh, yes. The push is on. The Ayubids under pressure already. The Order of the Dragon having to fend off enemy units. And we do see the elite Camel Lancers. Uh, the Camel Lancers are so cool. <laughs> they're so cool. They get in there and take down a couple of the artillery pieces, which has got to feel good. Rams left over from the other siege. Moving in now. A couple of villagers being pulled by the Ayubids to try and fend them off. And um, I suspect... Probably doesn't need to do forward infrastructure yet, but at some point you will. England moving with the big army. England needs to come down here where my mouse is and set up and push west. Or, you know, even break through this wooden palisade and set up right here. This is like prime time. And then you could put a lot of pressure on the base. No sacred site action. No counterplay there. Um, Japan just going to be getting back in the game here. Uh, rebuilding landmarks. The Kora storehouse is going to be back online, which uh, gives you passive... Uh, Passive wood, which is very nice, considering that he's got no eco. Every little thing is going to be count. I'm counting here. <clears throat> and the Elite Desert Raiders, battling it out with the Gilded Horsemen. Gilded Horsemen, obviously, not going to trade effectively there, but they probably will win just because of the numbers. And they do have 400 HP, so they're very, very scary. And it looks like they do end up folding up the Camels with uh, the Rams still making some progress. English Army coming in. Uh, villagers are here, but only two. That's a big misplay. Um, the English player needs to get forward infrastructure. If he just relies on, you know, what he has here, it's it's going to... There's no way they'll win. Culverins are amazing. They definitely need to focus down the old uh, bombards, if, or the rams if they can. They appear to be shooting at horsemen out of the gates, but I suspect they'll shoot at the rams. Nice. Yeah, culverins are a, a big, big powerhouse unit. Honestly, I feel like in 1v1, civilizations with culverins typically have, like, solid advantages over those that don't. They just make such a difference in late-game squabbles. <clears throat> Look at this! Oh, I love this so much. Look at Ventus. Ventus set up these proxy proxy uh, ram stations. And it's just ramming the Order of the Dragon's base. That's so annoying. And especially against the Order of the Dragon. You want to know why? It's because Order doesn't have that many units. So covering ground? Like, look, he's pulling his whole army up here to deal with this. Which is going to buy so much time here. That is a big, big play. Very, very well played. So now the English army is going to be engaging versus the Ayubids. The Ayubids have a pretty, pretty solid bank. Um... Only 47 eco at the moment, mostly trade. And look at the AoE healing coming in from the dervishes. Dude, that is so strong. The fact that dervishes AoE heal your whole army just gives you such a leg up in fights. Like, the English player would need to snipe those with his um, longbows to make sure they actually, uh, you know, go down. Jeez. That passive healing from those dervish units, dude, is great. He's going after the regnets. Oh, that's so troll. And what is this doing? What is he doing? I think, I think Sir Arthur is kind of struggling with the micro a little bit on the map. Uh, and we do see old Ventus pulling back into his base. How's Japan looking? Is Japan going to be able to contribute anything? Let's look at his eco right now. He's got 20 villagers. He's got his farms back grabbing relics. And uh, a lot of his landmarks have been rebuilt. On the other side, the English uh, longbows do set down palings, which will help them against the advancing camels. We'll take a little bit of damage and get stunned. But the English player is just trickling across the map. And uh, yeah, Ram's being pr pulled back from the other siege. Oh my god, he's going to lose the Regnets. Oh, that's so haggard. What is he doing? Is he AFK? Sir Arthur, you were doing so good. Oh, no, Sir Arthur. I think he's like, maybe he disconnected or something. I don't know. Because Sir Arthur's just letting this happen here. He 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 could have had all this dealt with. Okay, now he's reacting. He, I think he's just struggling with all that's going on in the map. There's there's a lot of craziness, obviously. So the English army trying to fight here, but the uh, Ayubids are holding them back effectively. England moving in with more crossbows. <clears throat> and uh, let's look at the bank here, uh, Ventus. Honestly, his bank isn't that good. If they apply pro proper pressure to him, I mean, he could for sure fold over. And now the Rams are going to be heading north, um, which is hilarious, going after all these landmarks. And here they come. Casino wing means Ventus can buy units out of the uh, House of Wisdom for pure gold, too. Oh, that's cool. So let me look at that. 
So yeah, he can buy Bedouin swordsmen or um, Bedouin skirmishers. That's really cool, man. Oh, they're so rad. The Ayyubid seem really fun. Really, really fun. So the Dervish is holding back, but the English eventually get the momentum. Back in the base here. Uh, the Order of the Dragon was able to uh, push back the trolling, but now the Order of the Dragon needs to get its shit together and push. They need to they need to move down and head to the south. Uh, obviously, have a couple of villagers rebuild this, um, replace those relics. Uh, I don't know why he's really worried about rebuilding these walls right now, but nonetheless, the English player are doing a good job, but he needs forward supply. This this Bronzodia pushing from across the map is, um, which I've done many times before, is is a recipe for failure. Uh, it, it will send you to the Leagues of Bronze. Looking at the Wonder, he is at seven minutes. I think he's got this in the bag. I think the reaction hasn't been quite as good this time from the Order and the English player, largely due to the distance. Um, neither of them are building forward infrastructure, and um, they're just kind of trickling their armies in, which is still doing good. I mean, the fact that Ventus is so... Um, yeah, he, he probably needs to keep some of his food economy. Ventus could actually die here. He's still got a good army inside of his base. He's mainly just using... Uh, are these Bedouins? No, they're Ghulams. Okay. So the English army wearing down some of the units. The, the food bank here for the Abbasid not looking great. Are they bringing back a secondary resource? No, they're not. Okay, so just 47. Uh, again, should have taken this market trade on the south. That would have been very, very strong for our boy Ventus. And the Bronzodia push coming from the north. Here they come, baby. The Order of the Dragon. They're so heavy metal, dude. I, I really like the Order. I, I feel a little bit like they would be stressful to play in 1v1, though. Like, uh, I don't know. They feel they feel hard. They do feel hard for sure. Kirk, how you doing, man? Well played. You played great in this game. Bronzodia. That's right, baby. So the Rams are heading straight down the side of the map. And that's a mean-ass army. That is a good quality army. 25 gilded men-at-arms, trebuchets, and uh, the English player is still pushing. We see some palisades being set up. Mangonel sitting on the defense. Culverins will be very good at side sniping if they can get line of sight here. But he's just going straight for the for the site. And I mean, it's possible. Those ramps could just beeline it. If the English player attacks at the correct time and really keeps that momentum up, yeah, maybe. So Ghulam's maybe going to be heading that way. Order of the Dragon army is on its way down. Wall's going to be falling in a matter of seconds to these rams. Trebuchets could also knock them down as well. Trebuchet is very vulnerable there. Very, very vulnerable. It uh, looks like he pulled those units off the sacred site, knowing that he has the timer now. And look at the oh, look at the Manjiks. Them, uh, how do you say that? Manjanik? Yeah, I think that would be it. Dude, the fire. That looks so cool. And here on the side, we do have the elite knights as well. See hand cannoneers duking it out with the ghulams, fighting valiantly to defend their empire. But the English forces seem to overwhelm them. And honestly, it's mainly just siege equipment being made here. This could be a problem. The Order of the Dragon is moving, guys. He needs to micro faster. Come on, move that army down here. Go, go, go. Faster! Come on. Okay, he's moving now. The English army has dispatched most of the ground-based forces here of Siberius. No siege equipment, though, so we can't really get in the walls. Um, now he's setting up forward infrastructure. Attaboy. That's what I'm talking about. Good play. Good play right there. And is Blue going to do anything? Um, Blue is trying. Yeah, look, even Blue's coming. He's got his horsemen and samurai, and he's bringing bombards over. Attaboy, Blue. I like that. You're my boy, Blue. The Wang, the Wang is not fully limp yet. It is not flaccid. He is here and he is ready. All right, so this is uh, going to be going down here, and that Order of the Dragon Army might be able to get some solid momentum now. Need to get these trebuchets and these knights in here to help defeat this force, and that has fallen. So now the men at arms getting ready to do battle with the uh, Desert Raiders. Archers need to move in position, and it looks like they're riding straight for the Wonder, which um, oh he misclicks. Yeah, he he misclicks on the farm. Uh, if they turn around and just butcher these guys, that'll be pretty big. Or dive these artillery pieces back here right now. That would be huge. Rams going in, uh, moving towards the back. And now the English player is going to have a little bit more freedom. Japan clearing out the purple infrastructure in the middle, which um, you can't really expect Japan to help too much. You know. The Order of Dragon is moving. Sir Arthur, watch me. <laughs> yeah. Here he comes, man. That force is moving. Those are going. And that wonder's looking a little bit... A little bit sketchy over there. Trebuchets need to be brought down. The Order of the Dragon doing a dive. Dive the artillery here. No, no, no. Dive the arty. Dive it, and then you win. Oh, my God. If the Order of the Dragon player just dives all this artillery, he could probably kill the Wonder. Because there's, like, no defenders here. But he's just going balls deep for the Wonder. You know, some men just, you know, like, like to go aggressive here. But he's not going to be able to get that many in there. He should have just killed all that artillery. Um, and also, the trebuchets need to be moving in as well. All right, so they need to attack. Just attack the troopers. You don't need, there's not as big of a rush here. You have a little bit of time, I guess. Yeah, three minutes. And he's on the wonder. The Order of the Dragon has made it despite all the haggardness. They got more archers coming down here. And uh, they are attacking, they were, they were attacking the House of Wisdom there. And then they move over to the prayer hall. <clears throat> are there villagers to repair? 
If, man, if he had killed those mangoes, he wouldn't have been taking this damage right now. A lot of mangoes coming across here, guys. And uh, we do see the Parahull getting brought down kind of low. The high HP pool making a big difference here. I don't think he's going to get it, though. Um, there's only one Ram left, and his troopers are a little bit beat up. <laughs> Sir Arthur just raw dog. <laughs> All right, so we see another army coming in, battering rams. Red is going to have time to get another push, for sure. He's gathering his knights, and that is going to be a threat. But um, he should have killed the defenders. I mean, he got it down to, you know, a, a relatively low amount of HP. He's down to 4,200. England is out at the gates. Um, two minutes and 44 seconds left. Japan coming across with what appears to be some mounted samurai and some bombard units. Red needs to just gather a critical mass and alpha strike. He needs to kill the units. He needs to kill the units. Yes, kill the units. There you go. Drag him down. Ventus's resources, he's empty on like everything. So everything you kill, he's not going to be able to replace. So the Gilded Knights cutting through the Ghulams, obviously. Bombard cannons are nearby as well. Um, a couple defenders in the back. A lot of mangoes nearby. Rams have gotten through. And the Wonder Tracker's at two minutes left, guys. I don't even know who's going to win this, honestly. I mean, there's a chance that he fails this hold. Those rams are beelining it. Um, the Order of the Dragon player, I think, needs to start killing the army. Like, diving all these. Like, a couple of trebuchets moving up would also just end the game. But I think maybe Purple gets the hold here. It's two minutes left. He's got, you know, some defenders back here. Not too much. England beelining it through, but the Mangonel is doing big damage. He needs to get these men-at-arms to kill these mangoes. Um, a little bit of a uh, haggardness there. And look, Japan coming into the fourth quarter to help out. I love this. I love this. Here we go, baby. Yes, perfect. Perfect. So Japan coming in with what appears to be a respectable eco again. Japan is actually full, fully on. Um, they have, they have like a decent eco now. Kura Storehouse is going. Um, he's got Bombards trapped back here. And I assume his market is back online. Yeah, he's trading again. So if Japan is able to get this, I mean, he's not out of this game. That is for sure. Look at the big dive. Yes. Good play, Sir Arthur. That's what I'm talking about. Kill the army and then the wonder is going to be vulnerable to everyone else. That, that is the good stuff right there, baby. That is really good. Is Orange dropping a wonder? I don't think so. So Orange moving in. We do see the blue samurai force has arrived. He's diving. He's going through the mangonels. And the, see, the fact that Red sacrificed his knights to kill the uh, mangoes now opens it up for the samurai to move in and get the snipe here potentially, right? Wonder tracker, 49 seconds. He's beelining it. At this point, you just got to beeline for the back wonder. There's literally nothing defending it. There's like a couple gulams. That's it. No, he's he's doing it. He's hey, you know, you guys got to give people a break too. People are there's different skill levels. People learning the game. It's a high stress situation. So you know, every, everyone here is doing great. This is um this is a lot of people learning as well. Okay, he's on the wonder. Japan has a lot of pressure on it. 29 seconds left. Gilded Knights are on it as well. Bedouin Swordsman being called out of the back. Can the Bombard Cannons make it? Oh my god, it's so close. Orange, no. Orange, do not kill those Bombards. Oh my god, 19 seconds left. 19 seconds, Villagers are pairing. Oh, is this going to keep going? It is. Oh my god. And he loses it. He loses it with like four seconds. Holy shit. Oh my god, they got it. The last Samurai. The Samurai with the clutch. But you have to remember, guys. Red also did a great job helping there. He came in, he pushed, he did some damage to it. And uh, the Wang didn't hear no bell. And now they're actually going for the kill on him, which is very smart. Um, he's too strong to be left alive. His landmark, obviously, in the middle is down. And that is going to be the end. They got it, dude. The Wang vengeance. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. All right. So the Wang is fully back online. He's been able to restructure his economy to an extent. His empire is still in shambles, but he could rebuild it. Now it's time for the Order of the Dragon. I hope Sir Arthur wins this. That'd be so funny. But he doesn't have the tools. All right. Yeah, without blue, that would have been the end. And it looks like the Gilded Knights are going to be pulling back. That is a super chat army. And um, the House of Wisdom is going to go down. Man, that that is the way the Wang with the steel chair defeats the dog. <laughs> yeah. Wow, man, that was something. Holy shit. I can't believe that. And it's going to keep going. So this landmark's going to pay the toll, and that is going to be a ruined empire. Look at this. There's actually uh, two relics sitting here idle in this Japanese base as well. Yep, GG well played to uh, Ventus. Wow, I thought Ventus had that one in the bag, but he did not have that good of a bank. So he wasn't able to produce units for, uh, for a long time. Probably should have kept some of his eco going. All right, guys. GG well played to Ventus. He was the host in this game. And he is going to be falling. We have some fast forwarding, actually. All right. That wasn't the the game wasn't fully live. That happened a minute ago. But now uh, the base is just being torched for some reason. The English players just attacking random buildings. 
So he's going after that. And who wins this now? Sir Arthur is getting better as this game goes on, dude. He really is. Yeah, he's improving. All right, so let's go back to the regular speed. We're just trying to catch up to the live state of the game. Who's going to attack who now? You know, this is a weird one. Honestly, I think Japan might win this. Like, I feel like these two are going to start fighting again, and maybe, although that's a shitload of rams. England is no joke, dude. They could push that Order of the Dragon player super hard right now. The question is, are they going to? Yeah, maybe they will. No? How do I go back to normal speed? No. Okay, we were stuck on, on that. I was like, oh god. Not like this. <clears throat> uh, Red does not have enough for a wonder. He does have 11,000 sun, which is nuts, but he basically used most of his resources here. Um, Siberius does not have enough for a wonder, and Wang is... See, Japan is going to be kind of weak now, because they don't have all those free relics. They do have a couple to drop here, which they need to put in, but they don't have... They got destroyed earlier, which they can't be replenished. Um, that when a, the building dies, they go down as well. Samurai pushing back infrastructure to try and re-secure the lands. And, uh, yeah, this is good, man. This is a great match. Really, really good match. I'm, I'm super impressed. It, it would appear we have some newer players in the game, but... They're playing well, um, which is very encouraging to see. Pog will definitely win this. I have confidence. Yeah, I think I think he's got the map wide trade. The fact that they the uh, Ayabid player didn't kill this market is giving him a huge, huge like boon because he still has that cross map trade, which he's going to want to keep pounding out. Um, and yeah, he's got like a good military again. He could rebuild all these walls in his empire. Kura storehouse is online. Um, <clears throat> more keeps being rebuilt. But getting a wonder for him, probably not in the books. It's probably going to have to be a domination or a, a, a sacred type victory. Holy shit, dude. Look at this. Do hostening here. He's got 15 hand cannoneers hiding in here. <laughs> probably doesn't even know they're there. And then the men at arms as well. Yeah, GG Ventus. I don't know if you're in chat. That was a great game, man. Your dong stood high. It did. It was great. It looks like he's going to take out the Japanese. Um, but it would be a massive, massive mistake to not attack the Japanese right now. Because uh, obviously I know that because I'm watching, right? But if uh, if he's able to rebuild, like he's got that, that good, he's a good player, number one. And number two, he's got a good source of gold here. A couple of free relics over here. It looks like the Shinto priest has arrived, so he can start grabbing these relics and taking those back if he wants to. Rams coming down here for red, not sure where they're heading. Maybe going to go try and take down some blues infrastructure in the south. That would be very, very strong. And yeah, he's just sitting there with a lot of rams. Siberius does have a massive army, but he's not using it. Um, nor are his farms active. Yeah, Siberius' eco is somewhat non-existent at the moment. Although he is trading on the top, he's getting only 30 per root, which is pretty Walmart. Up at the top, we got markets being set up by the Order of the Dragon. It looks like they're going to be trying to get some trade too. That knight army for the Order of the Dragon is very strong. Hey, Axel, your Ventus. Well played, man. Dude, you almost had it. It was so close, dude. It was so incredibly close. All right. Come on, man. Is this going to be like one of those like suffering games where where like the players just can't kill each other and they just like hours of hours of misery? The Order of the Dragon is, is chilling, taking it very easy in their base. Um, Regnitz is back online. Maybe he just saves up for resources for a relic, I mean, or for a wonder. <clears throat> 2v1 wonders are extremely doable. Extremely doable. Yeah, so. Comes the rams from the other side. They're mig the rams are a migratory herd. Heading from the west to the east, looking to for new lands to graze upon. Oh, now they're heading back west. They certainly do have the intelligence of the rams there. And, uh, yeah, a Axel, we were all cheering for, the for your dong, dude. Probably not something you hear ever, uh, you know, so often, but uh, those towers were everyone's favorite, including mine. <laughs> More skulls for the skull throne, I know. Yeah, and this is also another reason why I really enjoy covering Age is not having to deal with like peer-to-peer -peer connections, having like servers that don't like you know lag nonstop. God. Yeah. Yeah. No, but here's the thing: if they had killed the Japanese player, then. Um, the game would have been lost because the only reason they got that wonder is because Japan rolled up in the fourth quarter. So leaving Japan alive was, you know, arguably the right choice. Uh, he came in and helped in the fourth quarter here. Yeah. Like Japan is going to get back online though. He needs to get his Shinto priests and start dropping these relics back in these if he can um, to reboot his economy. Red is coming across the map with some rams. Not sure what he's going to do. Maybe just go after some random infrastructure, some buildings here. Japan's going to be able to react to that. Um, this army is so ferocious. 
This this army of like knights, we got 43 elite gilded knights. You know how much gold that is? Those knights are 200 a pop. That is a lot. That's very expensive units. Look at the rams coming in. Like, what is he doing, dude? I guess he's trying to free up some supply. Um, but, I mean, maybe one of them calls out the cross map trade. Are we going to see a second wonder in the corner? I feel like that's what it's going to be. Although, how is Wang going to get the stone, dude? I don't know if that's even going to be... What are these rams even doing? Yeah, I guess they're just randomly attacking towers. Red is just chilling out, probably banking resources. Um, 10,000 stones, so he just needs to find a way to get gold. And then he could maybe wonder. Wood has um, got to be almost off the map at this point. We're almost two hours in. So we have 149 here. Um, this is looking all right. This is looking... Ooh. Talk about Shangri-La, dude. This is, this is the, the promised land right here. This is the good stuff. Oh, yeah. Let's go, baby. Down on the south side, these rams. Oh, are they going for the market? That would be a pretty big MLG play. If they took down the Japanese market, that would be big. I mean, I don't know if Sir Arthur's... No, he's just attacking random barracks. Okay, so there's no big scheme there. I thought maybe he was going after that. <laughs> yeah. They're scout rams. Uh, why wait? Why do we have to look forward to tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow we are either doing an FFA tournament or one v ones. I would play ranks, ranked games. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, sure, I'm gonna make sure to get conquer again. This, I'm gonna push for it. I got conquer two seasons. Um, got pretty much didn't really play one v one after that, just casually. So this season I want to get it again though. So I'm gonna make it my goal to actually like develop my one v one skills. Um, so maybe we'll do some streams of that, or maybe we'll just do FFAs and mix in 1v1 replays. I could do that too. Um, I also started casting uh, high-level games, like Conqueror 3 games. So I casted one yesterday between two really top players, Order of the Dragon and Joan of Arc, which I'll be putting up tomorrow. So uh, I haven't played with J Japan's Navy yet, no. You know what would be the coolest thing? Oh, hell yeah, dude. That's my boy, Sir Arthur. You know, I kind of want Sir Arthur to get this, just because the Order of the Dragon is so freaking cool. Um, he's got cross-map trade now, but unfortunately, he's going to be spotted potentially by the English, if the English player is paying attention, but um, we do see the traders moving down. Uh, any plans to cover AOS Realms of Rune? Uh, I really dislike Age of Sigmar's aesthetic. I really dislike the factions. It's just like, ugh. It's, it's just like the most bland, generic fantasy to me. Um, but, I mean, maybe I will. If I do, I'd probably do some games with Professor Pwn when it comes out. Just like some 1v1s or team games or something. But this game, to me, is just so much more fun. So I think I've seen about all of your streams since AOE4. Hey, man. You're watching live. Matt, hope you're doing well, man. I know it's probably pretty early in the morning for you, right? Middle of the night, maybe. All right. So, yeah. England is going to come punish this trade, which is really unfortunate for the Holy Romans. Because it's allowing Japan to cackle in the dark. Because Japan is, is just going to grow super strong. He is just going to be really, really beast. Uh, over here, on the other side, we got a lot of knights coming across. Why are cross-map trades good? Um, yeah, so they generate more resources. You know, So you're going to be getting like 120 uh, per route here. And Relic's also being stolen too. What is the English player doing though? Is he going to destroy the market? It looks like that's what it is. There's actually two markets here. So Red's going to feel pretty sad. He is going to feel pretty sad for sure when he loses that. Although, where are they going? Okay, yeah, they're riding through. I don't know why England isn't trying to disrupt the, the Japanese trade. Obviously, that's happening. Japan is free trading here. They're free balling it on this side. Um, they don't have that many traders, though. It's only a couple. Yeah, Japan's just going to build up for a wonder again. Yeah, he's buying stone. See, he started buying stone. And also, he's getting it from his tithe barns, so... Yeah, Japan is going for another wonder. Um, Order of the Dragon obviously wants to do the same thing. Defending wonders with Order of the Dragon is interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. You have to be really careful with your armies. Yep, markets get destroyed. So that's going to be shutting them down. That feels pretty bad. So is that going to mean Sir Arthur is going to go to war and just, you know, try and steamroll the English player real quick? I mean, it's for sure possible. The English player uh, has an amazing bank, though. Holy shit, 19,000 gold. I mean, that's England for you, so... Japan coming in to disrupt as well. It looks like the scout towers did manage to see it. And uh, yeah, they're going to come and destroy the trade here, or at least try to. But both markets were taken out by the English knights. So that is going to be uh, cutting him off for now. He is down and out. All right. So elite gilded archers and men at arms standing at the ready. It looks like walls are coming back up. 
Uh, Orange cannot wonder. He doesn't have enough stone. He could buy his way. But let me tell you this from experience, having played this a million times, a million FFA games, is that um, if Orange tried to go for a wonder, he would be guaranteed dead. Um, he's in the middle of two players. Defending from two directions is extremely difficult. Uh, you obviously want to be in a corner or, or somewhere that only you can you can easily defend usually from one front. Fighting on multiple fronts is incredibly difficult. Um, incredibly difficult. All right, so that's offline. Sad, sad order of the dragon faces. Uh, trade still going for the English, but again, it's pretty pretty mediocre trade, so not going to be that impactful. But he is saving up gold. Um, huge, huge AFK army here, and uh, yeah, just just sitting there. This is exactly this is exactly what Japan wants. Japan wants to just cackle and bank resources in the corner again. And um, I think that I think that Wang is probably going to get this. My initial assessment was somewhat correct, although Wang a little bit a little bit sloppy here, not dropping off these Yodoshiru. Uh, Shiro, uh, he should be dropping those off here. Uh, I'm trying to remember how to say that in Japanese. Yeah, it'd be like Kore no uh, Yodoshiru. I can't remember how to say to like put something inside. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, very peaceful. I mean, the three the three Titans are are here. It's being farmed down on the bottom side. And here we do see the elite horsemen and the mounted samurai moving back. Uh, I wonder who is going to be the one to attack first. It's like the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you guys had to say in this match, who is the good, who is the bad, and who is the ugly in this in this duel of three players? Classic Western movie, Clint Eastwood. Um, what's the name of the other gentleman? Uh, the bad that actor. Oh, Edwin Van. No, something Van Cleef is his name. Yeah, great actor, great actor as well. So if you're a little bit newer, um, when you put a relic into a church, it gives you uh, 80 gold per minute. Um, and Japan has a special system where they can spawn relics and put them into their buildings. So you can put them onto forges, which give you 75 per minute. So relics are basically a source of infinite gold. Okay, the good is always gonna be, well, Dong, Dong is not in the game anymore. So you have to say with who's here in the game. Lee Van Cleef. Yeah, it's Edwin Van Cleef is from Wow. I I, that's that's a, a synaptic thing I always get wrong. I know it's Van Cleef something. Yeah, Eli Wallach, yeah. Great actors. That, that's such an iconic movie. But we need the answers, guys. Who's who here, you know? Um, <laughs> who's the, uh, nobody wants to be the ugly, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But Although the character of the ugly in the movie was fun. Yeah, he's a fun character. All right, English are now raiding the uh, the trade of the Japanese, which is certainly smart. Although, is he actually going to follow through with it, or is he just kind of riding by? English is ugly, good as Arthur, and Wang is bad. <laughs> yeah, all right, fair play. Fair play. I can be ugly, but I'm not playing, I know. I'll take the ugly, too. It's fine. I accept it. It's been a great day of gaming, guys. It's been fun hanging with all of you. It's raining outside. It's cozy. You know, everything's everything's good. Everything is good in life. All right, so are we going to be seeing raids? The English night raid. Um, <clears throat> they could definitely move in. These walls were never built by the villagers, so Japan could easily lose their trade here. Currently, um, Wang is sitting at 11,000, so he's got a really good bank. I think every player is uh, definitely just hanging out and taking it easy, trying to accumulate resources and, you know, very scarce out there. They're, they're, they're on the lands of Arrakis. You know, instead of moisture, uh, it's wood. It's pretty crazy when you read the Dune, like watching the um, the Dune. I really love the Dune movie. I thought the movie was awesome. The casting for the most part was amazing in the Dune movies. Like the Baron Harkonnen is like, oh my God, the casting of him is just top tier. Um, and they uh, they even found a way to make the Baron in the movie more menacing in many ways than he is in the book, you know, um, like physically. Yeah, with his uh, suspenser suit. But um, it's crazy how much they cut out of the movie. Uh, which is understandable because the first Dune book is literally 800 pages. So, you know, it's pretty dense. Anyways, rant for another day. Amazing, amazing stuff. Those, that movie, those movies are so good. Pog is bad. Overwhelming efficiency. Siberius is good. Quiet but strong. And, <laughs> and ugly is chaotic and unpredictable. And there you go. All right. So the Japanese horsemen coming in. The English knights should just battle. They would win this if they just turn and fight. But if they just run, they're just going to be taking, uh, chipping damage here. He who controls the wood controls the universe. Yeah. Yeah, they could have won that fight. It's mainly just, although there are 29 mounted samurai here, or 14 mounted samurai. Yeah, it could have been a little bit of a dicey fight. But overall, I think the English, um, 
The first Dune book is like 800 pages. Within it, there's three like sub books, right? You have the, uh, and then it's Dune, Messi it's Dune Messiah, and then it's what? Uh, Children of Dune, I think is what it is, yeah. They didn't know the battle pug wasn't in this one. In the in the 1984 Dune movie um, by David Fincher, they have a pug. Her Gurney Halleck, for some reason, has like a pug. Is it Gurney or is it uh, Fufir? I can't remember which character has that. It's been a while since I've seen it. All right, guys, the battle is on. And uh, we do see the elite knights turning to fight. And like I said, they have a lot of armor and a numbers advantage. But the mounted samurai are uh, str slightly stronger than the English knights because they do have the damage reflection. So they would win in a duel objectively one-to-one. -one. But with these numbers, the English knights might be able to uh, defeat the Japanese forces. Red is just semi-AFK um, waiting to build a wonder, which hopefully he'll do soon. Uh, you know, that's like the only way that... Um, that's the only way that you're going to be seeing... Uh, you're gonna <laughs> Sorry, a comment in chat made me laugh. That's the only way you're going to be seeing uh, a game end, I think, is if somebody builds wonders and just, you know, everyone else comes after them. Yeah, the movie's um, pretty true to the books, I would say. We have a little bit of downtime so we can talk about other things uh, while the players just kind of meander about and gather resources. But yeah, it's it's pretty true to the books in many regards. Um, I know they... they the, Liet Kynes, the planetologist, who's kind of like, uh, you know, the Fremen leader of sorts, uh, they changed the gender of that character, which, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then, yeah, I'm trying to think what else was, like, really different. Um, I mean, like, some of the descriptions of characters, like, if you see how the Harkonnens are depicted, and, um, yeah, they changed the way Fa Fade Rautha is described, because in the books he has hair, and it looks like in the trailer he's bald. I mean, it's little things. The aesthetic that um, the director did for the movies is super good, though. Like the aesthetic of the Harkonnens and the the way the way that the Sardaukar look and they're like they the aren't like their outfits and like the the war paint on their helmet and like how intimidating they are is like really cool. Um, I think they did a good job capturing the Fremen as well. Although, yeah, in the first movie they don't really get into like how the fanatical like th theology is an aspect of their culture. They kind of dive into it a little bit, but I think they're gonna really get into that in the second movie as well. Because, like, you know, there's obviously a massive religious element to them that, um, you know. Yeah. Should be fun. Orson Welles is the Baron Harkonnen. Oh, my God. That, that almost got made. Wow. That would have been something. Yeah. So, semi-AFK mode as the players just uh, just gather resources. This is one of those suffering games, is it? It's, it's suck on constructing for the wonder for him. So, it looks like he's... Um, you know, sitting there with his passive construction. He is getting good gold per minute from the Regnets. Uh, the Regnets Cathedral, if you guys are newer to the game, um, every relic that the Holy Romans have access to or the Order of the Dragon gives you more gold. So it's very, very good. Yeah, the Sardaukar were very menacing. And they're like that in the books too. In the books, the Sardaukar are like super scary. They're like, you know, they're they're like hardcore, like fanatic warriors. And like, but they get shit done too. They, they like, yeah, very scary. But that's one of the first things in the books that when you start to realize that the Fremen are no joke. There's several accounts of like, of, of like the Fremen taking down Sardaukar troops. And like the Atreides, like, and even the, the Harkonnens are like, are like, what? Like you're saying, they, they took down Sardaukar? Like, because the Fremen are just like terrifying fighters also. And plus they have the home field advantage of fighting on Arrakis, which is really good for them too. But yeah, it's, it's a, the books are really good. It illuminates a lot of stuff the movies don't get into yet. Or the movie didn't touch upon that really explains a lot too. Yeah, it's, this is the last game, but um, we're gonna be um, we're gonna be uh, streaming again tomorrow and the day after that. This whole week is Age of Empire streams, and honestly, I can I can see more coming in the future as well. So, yeah. all right. So looking back up here, got a lot of uh, elite gilded knights sitting AFK chortling. Wood being taken. This is definitely going to suck for Sir Arthur. He's going to be losing his glorious wood income. And did the English player even notice it? He did, but it looks like he then rides away. So he has mercy on those poor villagers. Look at the chivalry. Is there, is there chivalry here? Is chivalry dead? Is he going to hold the door open for these villagers? Or is he going to ride them down? Find out today. Find out today. Um, yeah, and you know, the Japanese player is, is obviously very good. And he knows that if, he, that if there's no fighting, it's going to benefit him. Because he has... You know, the relics, and uh, he has good trade going. Did anybody kill? Oh, they actually, the knights got down and killed his trade. So the Japanese trade is offline. Okay, that is big. I did miss that during all the analysis. I did, I did see that. 
All right, rad. So Japan, in terms of their infinite gold now, they are still getting a fair amount per minute. Um, no stone, though. I suspect the Order of the Dragon is going to build a wonder soon. Yeah, you can see setting up keeps. It's going to be a very hard attack for the um, for the Japanese because of the angling of it. He's going to have to go over here and push north, which is going to take some time. And if the Holy Romans stop him from setting up with his knight army, then they could do quite well. Yeah, the new expansion is really good. Japan is pulling a Sauron. Yes, he is. He is indeed. So we got Gilded Men at Arms, Dragon Hand Cannoneers, all sorts of good stuff like that. Up on the top side, we have the AFK Knights sitting here, chilling out. I know, the English Rams. This is such a... I'm, I'm a very aggressive player in FFA. I like to just always aggress on my neighbors. Um, not always. Like, I would say like 80% of the time. It depends on who it is. If it's a newer player... Well, that's actually not true. If they're new, I'll still probably attack them. Uh, not as not as much, though. If there's an option, I'll go somewhere else. I can be villainous like that, though, sometimes. But yeah, it was fun. Fun game earlier. Pwn did very, very good today. He did very good. Um, by the way, if you're wondering how to get into these lobbies, just add me as a friend. And when I make the lobby, it's first come, first serve. So you have the same chance as everybody else is getting in. You just need to add me as a friend and then, you know, click it. So. Uh, so here's the thing. Somebody in chat asking, can Japan not take uh, Sacreds? He can, but if he does, it puts a target on his back. So there's a bit of a political element to not taking Sacred Sites. Because uh, Japan has both Sacreds under their control. To an extent. So by taking the Sacred Site, the other players might attack him. Right? So you don't, you don't want to do that. Yeah, don't want to do that. We're going to have some fun tournaments on uh, our Age of Empires website when we get that set up too. And uh, you know everybody's welcome to play in that. It's going to have a leaderboard for 1v1. Um, and obviously I know this community already has a very well-developed 1v1 leaderboard and ranked and tournaments and stuff. But we're going to have our own leaderboard with which we can use as an inviting tool to special events like Faction Wars, which we're going to be doing for this game too. Where you have one champion on every faction. Um, so we're going to reward people for playing in our tournaments, um, having faction wars with, you know, a couple hundred dollars prize pools, fun stuff like that. So it's going to be, it's going to be outstanding. All right. So we can fast forward here a little bit, catch up to the current time of the game. And it looks like we have caught up. Uh, do we have a, a border standoff here? Yeah. Japan is, is pretty well entrenched. Do they have enough? They're not, they, they've started to get stone. Oh, Japan found some stone down here. Actually, that's pretty big. Okay. So that is going to give them how much stone? It's going to give them uh, another 600, give or take. Excellent, excellent. And on the bottom side, there's relics. No, those are... You know what's actually interesting is if the Japanese player, um, Bob, knew about this, he could actually grab these Yoroshiru and put them in his forges, which would be very strong. It looks like he's trying to set up a market to trade right now. So England is sieging Japan, which is going to give the Order of the Dragon some opportunities. Yeah, all right. There you go, okay. So the counterweight trebuchet is knocking down the wall. And the monk, the spiritual re leader of England here, going to be leading the charge. Order of the Dragon, their AFK play here might actually be good for them. Because it's going to allow the others. And he almost has enough to build a wonder. I mean, he's been... he's been. Are these cannon towers? No, they're just basic towers. But he does have a keep here. Um, any more keeps? Yeah, another keep here. So some some adequate entrenchment. That's for sure. And, yeah, I don't know why he's not grabbing these. This is a pretty colossal blunder by the Wang. These are all free relics that cap at three. So if you don't gather them, they just sit there. Um, he is waste losing so much gold per minute by not re-equipping his uh, floating gate. Just an insane amount of gold per minute that he's losing. Paint dries fast. The game started off really, um, really good. But, I mean, this is still good. But it started off really fast. And now it's just like potato mode. You know, the Bronzodia, the Bronzodia is taking over. It's taking over. I would love to see an Order of the Dragon Wonder, but he really only has Regnant's money. So he's basically just gathering money from his Regnant's Cathedral. He's got enough wood to last a long time. Orange and blue have a deal. Okay, orange and blue have a deal. Blue is giving orange the sacreds for peace. Really? Blue is giving orange the sacreds for peace. Huh. So I was wondering what's going on here. Yeah, here they come. The monk is dropping it. He's taking the sacred site. On the bottom side, we have a little bit of a skirmish going down. A Japanese tower is picking off some villagers who are going after wood there. Is he actually bringing him relics? 
No way. Why would the Japanese do that? They're really rich and strong. I mean, he could honestly just kill him. Or try to, at least. I mean, he's got... Yeah, it doesn't have that good of gold anymore. His trade... Oh! Oh! Look at this. Trade route. 154 trade for the Japanese. Wow! That is a balls-deep trade. Yeah, that is a balls-deep trade right there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god. That is huge. Okay, so Sacred Side has been taken by England. And, um... Are we going to see the relic or the wonder being built? No, just more walls, which is smart. You know, yeah, you know, for Sir Arthur, this is good. You you want to you wanna entrench. You want to make sure you're ready for the push when it inevitably comes. You got to watch out. Ugh. Now, on the other side, Japan chilling out here. Um, I don't know why there's not a farm here. Is he deleting farms? Or do those farms just disappear? Oh, he's building a keep there. Interesting. Okay. So he's preparing for a wonder of his own. Uh, it's going to take a while, but he's got three relics. Tithe barns, and now, yes, okay. Now, finally, he's grabbed his Shinto priest, Wang. And he's going to be getting tons of gold now because he's dropping the relics off in buildings. Good. Good play. Good play. I like that. I mean, letting Orange have the sacred side is a very small price to pay. A very small price. Um, the Katana Bannerman going to be uh, showing this villager who's boss. A very honorable samurai butchering the unarmed villager there. Nice. And on the bottom side, it looks like the players are sharing wood. So we do have blue and red have like a very strange um, non-aggression pact where they're kind of hanging out on the bottom and just sharing resources. Walls coming up for Japan on the bottom side. Uh, looks like they have some sort of interest in building that. And over for the Order of the Dragon. Are they going to build it? 84,000 food is no joke. I mean, that's enough to do a wonder defense. And yeah, he can build it, but I wouldn't. Uh, you, you need a lot more gold than that to hold. <clears throat> You're going to want to get like probably 15, 20,000 gold, and then you can maybe drop it down. But until then, it's too risky. Um, however, this uh, this army, this knight squad is so brutal. Like this gilded knight, they have 552 HP, guys. And they hit as hard as hand cannoneers. And they have a charge bonus too when they lance. So, I mean, <clears throat> chick could get real crunk really quick. Real, real crunk. On the top side, okay, it does not look like there's that much of a peace agreement. Although Japan doesn't appear to be fighting back. Um, are they going to push back the English? The English player moving, securing the sacred site for himself, and is torching down Japanese buildings. So the barracks are going to be paying the price here. I wonder about Onobugeisha in the late game. I feel like just using Samurai is objectively better in the late game. And Red's villagers are forced back, so the Order of the Dragon has been kind of banished from this realm. They do have a couple um, towers going up, but... Overall, Japan's arrow emplacements probably will snipe those villagers before they can get that tower finished. And looking at the uh, relics, they are being dropped. So, yeah, we have a, yeah these have relics in them now. So Japan is going to be getting insanely good passive gold. Um, a, a thousand a minute, which is comparable to like an HRE player with like three or four relics. You know, And it takes a while to get going too, so I can see that. All right, so Elite Mounted Samurai going to be cruising. And uh, looking for maybe a, a hole in the wall. England is still torching down buildings. Maybe this was part of the deal. I don't know if there was some actual politics going down. But, like, England uh, is actually... I mean, oh my god. Yeah, these rams. Do you know how much devastation those rams could do to this Japanese base? If they just moved in and attacked? Mounted Samurai appear to be looking in Red's base. And there is going to be some infrastructure getting dropped. Oh, wow. Japan? Are they going to team up against Red? They might. Red needs to come out here right now and just steamroll this force. It looks like there's villagers being pulled and samurai moving across the map. So I think it's just part of the agreement. Is that he could clear out this infrastructure or something. There, there must be something weird. So Red is like, I'm not going to have any of this shit. And he moves out with his just Chad gilded army. And yeah, he's going to just wreck these samurai. Yeah, so they move in. And the samurai are going to be forced back. And those villagers are going to get smashed, dude. Brutal, brutal force as the Gilded Army just shows no mercy. Where's he going? No fight! Where are you going? No! He's just letting so much free damage happen. What is he doing? Oh, he's going for the Bombards. Okay, that's fair. But he should still fight with some of these guys. He is just so much so much damage being taken. So Red's going to be riding these down. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a battle. A duel of fates of sorts. Many of the Bombards start to fall. So one, two. That is a lot of gold being lost by Wang. But he's got plenty to plenty to go for, for sure. More Gilded Knights are on their way out, and he's going to turn and attack, and here, you can just attack move. You don't need to individually target. They're going to get it done. Yeah, so the Gilded Knights um, get in there, and they just wreck that Japanese artillery corps. They also do take down some of their Revolkins as well. 
And this is kind of showing you what the Order of the Dragon can do late game. Like, they can definitely get these disgusting Death Stars. I mean, yes, it costs a lot, but if they have the money, they can they can steamroll your army as well. Um, are the Rams going to backstab? What are the Rams doing? Um, the Rams are just chilling here in, like, a, a goat pen. And the Japanese army is down. Blue told Orange he can keep... He can keep, put keep on sacred. Okay. So blue is trying to win with politics now. Uh, even though blue is stronger than red, arguably, um, financially. I mean, red is... Uh, he's pretty good too, actually. But he doesn't have as much infinite gold. Red might want to just slap down a wonder right now, honestly, and just go for it. Um, considering they're already 2v1ing him in a way, uh, you might as well just pull the trigger. You know, the gold is not great, though. He's, he's, he's going through it very quickly. All right, gold member is on. Here they go. Chopping through these bad boys. Villagers going down. Hell of a lot of damage. And uh, yeah, the Japanese uh, pressure is going to be offline. While Red's at it, he might as well kill all this. Because this gives Orange a really good foundation with which to push him. So he could come down there and, and torch those guys and definitely do well for himself. All right, so England has the Sacred Site. Is he buying stone? It doesn't look like it. So no stone is being bought by Japan. Rather, Japan is re-securing their borders. So all the walls that have kind of fallen earlier are um, are down. How are the Byzantines? Byzantines are good. They're complex to play, but they're very fun. They're very fun. They don't have any infinite source of gold, so you know you got to take note of that. But they also don't need gold necessarily uh, to make good late game armies. They can build um, artillery from other uh, factions, and also can uh, can use olive oil to produce mercenaries like longbows and streltsy and all that sort of great stuff, which is really fun. Yeah, he's corralling his rams to create passive income. I, I would love to see them get used. He's got 26 rams. I mean, Red is going to be surprised that those rams are ready when he goes for the inevitable wonder. Um, so he's got his villagers, 21. Uh, does he have the farm villagers? He does. Is Red going to go for the wonder? Wouldn't be a terrible idea. Cutting off this trade would be nice. It's only 30 a pop, I guess. So maybe it's not worth doing. Um, Japan is just saving up for Wonder themselves, just becoming a powerhouse again. We see the Ozutsu coming out, which means he's like back online. You know, he's got the money. 19,000 gold. He's getting 1,000 passive per minute. Uh, England, on the other hand, currently looking at Siberius. He's getting about 1,000 a minute. So they're all, they all have passive gold. About the same amount for each of them. And Siberius. Whoa! S the orange Wonder? What? Are you see He must be getting tired. He's probably just like, end me, bro. Yeah, look at this. This is not gonna not gonna go super well, probably. But he does. He did kill all the Japanese infrastructure on the front. So Japan, oh, well, they still have a lot though. And all those cannons and Ozutsu and everything. And the order of the oh, they're racing. Okay, sixteen hundred HP, dude. <clears throat> How bad does that feel for the order of the dragon? They've literally been wonder raced twice, like two times in this game. They have been beaten on the wonder game. That's brutal, and um, he's gonna have to cancel that, the Order of the Dragon. Yeah, I suspect he cancels it. He could build it out, but I, I wouldn't. Um, or maybe he does and just, you know, if it, on that same note, if he does build the Wonder and he can kill the English Wonder somehow, then he wins the game. I don't hate that play, and look at that. They, there's already conflict here between the Japanese. Yeah, this puts Blue in a really bad spot. Blue could go for a Sacred play, but the Sacred Sites are controlled. Yeah, so see, there's a sacred site here controlled by the English. But there are Shinto priests in the army. The Shinto priests can grab the sacreds. Which is going to be the counterplay. So I suspect that he's going to go for it. But the question is, can he get down to that bottom sacred site quick enough? So unfortunately for England, they didn't do a good enough job securing this. Although, oh yeah, dude, the Duhast. <clears throat> Let the Rams feast. All right, so how are you going to get through these walls? Here they come. Japan's going to go for sacreds. Uh, Bombard's going to knock down these walls. Um, and yeah, Order of the Dragon, I just say screw it, man. Put a fork in him. Put a fork in him. So the Rams are moving in, but the Samurai are creating a blockade to make sure the Rams can't feast, which is really funny. Um, the English army is uh, moving south. No, they're not. Order of the Dragon's coming for blood, and the sacred sites are going to be on the table, for sure. Japan's probably just going to make a valiant defense. They have walls around this one, too. Somebody would have to go for like a ninja. The Order of the Dragon could easily decap that. So they're charging Barkshire Palace with torches. That's how Chad they are. And the Barkshire Palace is going to go down pretty quickly to the Bombard Pressure as well as the uh, Gilded Knights. Also the Elite Spearmen of the Dragon Order, or the Order of the Dragon, they do AoE damage with their torches. See how they're hitting things nearby? It's pretty damn cool. But yeah, this is not going to go well. Um, Japan going for the Sacred Counter. The Rams trying to get through, which is my favorite part of the game. And uh, somebody's going to have to decap a Sacred. 
This is a this is interesting. Japan could win on that. Um, red might need to go down with like some units and, and try and get this. Do you have any villagers down there? Japan's pretty well defended there, and Japan's just gonna chill out. Look at that. Look at the blockade. Oh man, no bannermen are really good. People just forget to make them. It, it, it's it's easy to forget. Bannermen are amazing. 15% damage buff to all melee units or, or range units is crazy good. So sacred victories on the table. And order of the dragons going for landmark kills. Okay, hold up. But the White Tower is pretty safe. It's far away here, so I don't know how well that's going to go. But then Order of the Dragon is not going to have that much time to go down and neutralize the Sacred Sites. Uh, the Sacred Sites need to be neutralized. Or else Japan is just going to win on those. Yeah, look at that. So Torching Markets going to be heading north. And uh, just trying to, trying to finish them off, which shouldn't be too hard. The Order of the Dragon basically just steamrolled the English. And those late-game Order of the Dragon armies, dude, this Knight army is just so... So beast mode. It is so thick. There is so much HP in this concentrated core of units. And now they're just going straight for the landmarks. And look at this English army, dude. Oh my god, it's so pitiful compared to the Order's army. But how are they going to get these landmarks down is the question. England actually going to decap the sacred site. Okay. I was wondering why their army was so small in their base. But the Order of the Dragon is going for landmarks. Uh, and also for some of these. But they might as well fight here. Yeah, just do battle. Uh, Order of the Dragon hand cannoneers are also very good. They have a lot of HP, so they're tough to bring down. On this side, the English force engaging the samurai, having a good trade. Wow, the hand cannoneers, 35 of them. Those last samurai, they truly uh, got Tom Cruise right there. Although Tom Cruise survives in the end, spoiler alert. But um, of course he does. I feel like that movie would have been better if it was like, nah, well, I guess, yeah. Who knows? The last samurai was a great movie. I did enjoy it. But yeah, he's coming to try and shut down the sacred site, but it is walled in. And the order- Oh my god, the Wololos! Is that an Order of the Dragon prelate? Oh, he stole all those English troopers! Oh, that's so- that's so flavorful. So Bombard's moving in, gonna knock this down, and then the Order of the Dragon is gonna go and have to deal with the Sacred Sites. I have to say, man, I'm really impressed with this, uh, this play here from Sir Arthur in the late game. He's unleashing all, every, all the lessons he's learned in this battle. England is basically in the can. Um, they're- they're just toast. I mean, they- their military is still pretty big, though, but... I think a lot of it is down here, um, trying to take down the sacred site, which I think Japan's going to be able to hold, more than likely. Um, this Trev is not shooting the right target, and uh, are the samurai going to charge out? They are. They're going to charge with their doom, though. It's going to be rough for them. All right, so the gatehouse is almost down. The bombard, one more shot, and that wonder is cooked. That is going to be a lot of big, scary knights moving in as the prelates do grab the relics. And another relic being grabbed. Oh, dude, they're just, they're just giving the Jesus all over the, the English base here. English just wanted it to end? Yeah, probably. I, I get that. Respect that, for sure. But can the Order of the Dragon stop the Sacred? I, all they need to do is, um, is decap it, you know? One of them and they win, basically. There's no way that the Japanese could deal with the Order of the Dragon's armies and get into the base. So that's going to be the end of England. Relics, of course, out there, and that's their last landmark, so they have fallen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there are two. Can the Order of the Dragon find a way in? To get to this, uh, to get, oh, this opening is big. All right, here comes order. They're going to need some proper siege equipment. Dude, this game is good. This is a good game. Turned, turned, it's, it's had slow times, it's had fast times, but it's going. And then there were two. So Japan going to be making its hold. The samurai looking awesome. Preparing for the uh, inevitable siege from the west. Siberia says, oh, sweet relief of death. Oh, that's so funny, Siberius. That was a grindy game, dude. That was a grindy game. All right, so where are they going to go? So the Order of the Dragon is going to be heading south. And uh, does he have any villas down here to build anything? Nope. But he is just going to head down there and realize there's walls and then run out of time, probably. He has to expect walls, though, right? You got it. You got to do that. A couple relics to be taken. Classic red versus blue, I know. He just needs to decap one of these, which is easier said than done. This is obviously the one you would want to do. If you could just build some siege equipment down here and you know take down this and decap it, boom, you're 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 good. GG Siberius. GG. So where's he gonna go? Is he just gonna go push the Japanese at home? We do have this gatehouse uh which is burning, being repaired, but oh the, the dead trebuchet is still shooting it. Oh, that's funny. That's gonna give the order of the dragon a potential way into the base, but they're gonna need more units. They can't just uh, rely on this. Here they come, baby. Here they come. I think Japan has the advantage. They have the home field advantage, and uh, the uh, Order of the Dragon has to extend pretty deep into enemy lands here. The walls are brutal, and he's going to realize this very quickly that, um, you know, he needs siege works. 
So looking at production here for Sir Arthur, um, what is he making? Do you have siege workshops? Okay, he's got rams coming. I don't know when the sacred is going to be triggering. I believe it was around the same time as the other wonder. So I think there's about six and a half minutes. Yeah, give or take. Six and a half minutes on that. Um, they're going to ride around, look for an opening. I'm not going to find one. So just got to consolidate your forces, get the rams in and push. The rams knocking this down. I mean, the order of the dragon army could, could theoretically win this fight, but there is a castle here and eight bombard cannons, which is very nasty. Palisade walls being set up, which is going to make it very difficult to get in. I love it. Very, very annoying tactics. Keep doing what you do, man. Hey, Robert, all day, every day, man. You're haunted, Trevite. I know. It's haunted. He's going south now. Okay, I don't hate that. The Japanese army is a little bit static here. It has a lot of bombards, so it's going to take some effort to uh, move down to the south side. Okay, and a, a, a wild siege workshop being built here, and he's not reacting to it. These Japanese villagers could prison shank that villager. Oh, it got taken out by the arrow tower. Very fortunate. Very nice. All right, so here comes the Ramstein. And it looks like the Japanese army is going to be moving south. Gilded Horseman does spot the army moving. This is this is the time of Sir Arthur. This is his legend. This is where he becomes the king of his own destiny. All right, so Rams, just move down here. Let's get, let's get going. Time's short. Don't have a lot of time to mess around. Gilded Men-at-Arms with their golden cuirasses standing at the ready. Kind of funny that like the gold is like you know because gold technically is a pretty soft metal right so inefficient for armor but looks cool i'm sure having it like embossed or like you know kind of on your trim of your armor i suppose maybe uh, sends a message the trebuchet of the dead that's what it is yeah so bombard cannon's not going to make it down there samurai army heading in from the south we do see some infrastructure being built here and yeah you got to just ram through these walls man no more games Look how entrenched Japan is here, though. They've, they've been buying stone like crazy. Um, Wang is, yeah, he's poor now. Because he's been buying stone like a madman. A little bit of a horseman raid, but we do see the elite Gilded Knights able to handle them. And their upgrade is Dragon Warhorse. So they take minus 25% damage when charging. Oh, that's so badass. So when their like, lances are couched and they're advancing into like gunfire, they take less damage. That's really cool. All right. So, Japanese army moving. I assume reinforcement's going to be spammed across. He's going to want to spam uh, spears. Japanese spears are extremely good. They have 20% more damage against cav and longer range. So, very good. All right. So, here they go. It is time, baby. Ram's getting close. All they need to do is break down through a couple of walls here, and they're going to be in. A lot of it's going to come down to the mar uh, micro of Sir Arthur, how effective he is at um, you know chopping through these bad boys. He's currently being a little bit relaxed with the time. I think he needs to get his rams working on these walls here. Although I suppose he's not really terribly familiar with where it is, the landscape. Um, you know, he's coming from pretty far away here. I do like that he's setting up siege, but he's going to need other infrastructure too. That's another thing about Order of the Dragon and FFA is you don't really need to have a ton of forward infrastructure since you have less units. So something cool to take note of. All right, so trying to do battle here. And they are going to start karate chopping these spears. The rest of the troopers are going to engage the Japanese army here. Rams heading in. A lot of Japanese troops have arrived from the north. And uh, how is this army going to go? Yeah, he gives the proper attack order. The Gilded Knights fighting hard. Bombards are coming in too. All right, not bad at all. And he does get through one layer of walls. The other keep is in a little bit of danger as well. Gilded Knights fighting hard. Bombards going to be intercepted though. That's going to feel pretty bad. Um, and he's going to need more good units. His army is very small, very elite. And it looks like Japan probably going to find a way to hold here. The samurai valiantly defect, uh, defending their, um, their shogun here. As the castle is getting worked on by the rams, slowly but surely. And the old gilded knights being dragged down just by insurmountable numbers of Japanese troopers. Is there a diversion? Is there a play on the north? It doesn't look like it. <laughs> that would have been a good thing to do. Build some siege workshops here. You know, press both sides with your elite units. Might be hard for the Japanese to deal with them. Who knows? But overall, that's probably going to be GG. Um, we see the Gilded Knights move again, but I, I think Sir Arthur is going to struggle to muster a army of that size quickly enough. Honestly, Men at Arms might be better because there's a lot of Yari Yashigaru in here now. The Spears, walls are being rebuilt, which is great. And um, one minute till Sacred Victory, yeah. It's pretty rough. So he's got one minute to get there. Which we have a little bit of time. We could actually fast forward up here. Okay. So stables producing knights. Um, Japan has a very solid army here now. The spearmen, do they have the Yari Yashigaru upgrade? Yeah, they do. 34 damage against cavalry is pretty insane for how cheap they are. Yeah, very, very, very good. And rams coming with bombards. Good good pressure, good siege. 
Uh, it, I think it's actually physically impossible for him now. The amount of time it would take for him to get through the walls is going to be it. Oh, we've done it. The journey, the saga has been concluded. The great duel. We've had some great games today, guys. How many do we have? Is this three? Yeah, I had the Byzantine game. I had the 2v2 with Pwn. And then we had this one. GG, well played. The Shogun has claimed victory. He was on death's bed too. That's really impressive. Like the Wang is now fully erect. And he was, he was to the point of like going down, dude. Like hardcore. Yeah, great comeback by Wang. He had five villagers at one point, but they let him live. But if they didn't let him live, they would have lost the game to Ventus. So that was a crazy, like crazy weird game. Yeah, he deserved it for sure. Look at the, look at the spike in power. When he got wiped out, he was like in the pits of hell, dude. Amazing. All right, guys, I appreciate you all. I'm gonna go take a break, rest my voice, hang out with the smoking hot wife. That is it for tonight. Really fun times. And uh, yeah, that was fun. Man, great game by Wang. That was really fun. Loved it. Everything was great today. That was so good. And looking forward to our new website, tournaments. Uh, we're going to be going pretty hard in the Peyton Age. It's going to be good. All right, guys. Take care of yourselves. See you next time. And uh, thank you all for uh, the donations today to our new channel members. Welcome. And please do drop a like on the way out. Helps keep the old age going. All right, guys. See you next time. Take care of yourselves. And that is it for today.